Kia ora and welcome to the AUT North Campus. We're here for the 2022 National Tertiary Basketball Championships. My name's T.Y. Wilson, I'm from UTSNZ. I'm here today with Keith. Uh, he'll be in the booth all day bringing you all the action live from Court 1. Keith, what are you looking forward to today? Uh, tēnā tātou katoa. Looking forward to a lot today. We've got two third and fourth playoff games as well as the finals today. So we've got uh, Otago, Otago girls versus the Waikato girls in the third and fourth. And just on this court here, we've got the AUT boys taking on Lincoln. In the finals, we've got both Victoria teams, Victoria women's taking on AUT and Auckland boys taking on Victoria boys. Should be a good day. Heaps of fun games. Let's get into it. Awesome. Let's get straight into the action. Tēnā tātou katoa, nau mai hoki mai ki te rangi tuarua o tēnei pā o hotanga. We're here at AUT North Shore, Tāmaki Makauro, here for the National Tertiary Championships, the last day of the tournament. We're going to crack straight into it. We've got Lincoln up against AUT in the third and fourth playoff game as Ryan Lomatia starts us off with a three-pointer. We have Paith Momoisea bringing the ball up. Finds Burnett for three, tries to respond, cannot do so. We'll stay down this way. No, we won't. We're heading back AUT way. Josh Coyman will bring the ball up. The court, one of the shining stars for AUT yesterday, obviously having an absolute class, absolutely class first quarter yesterday for them. Unlucky to get the job done, but he'll be looking to keep that hot form right now as we see him getting up a shot. Rebound goes way of Phoenix Sorensen. Bring it up the court. Finds Burnett again. Will he pull it again? Who knows? Swings it to Paif Momoisea in the corner. Someone left the window open again. I think it stayed open overnight. We're coming back. Ryan Lomatia on the left wing. Looks to get through in the middle. Gets fouled by number 15, Paif Momoisea. These are two good teams. Unfortunate to go down yesterday. Uh, obviously, the better teams won yesterday. Um, but this makes to be a good matchup. Lots of shooters, lots of points to be scored. Speaking of shooters, Adam Singer, unlucky on that one. Great rebound from number 19, Murilo Gonzalez. Adam Singer gets it back, tries to go down the lane. Hands everywhere, Phoenix Sorensen in the lane. And a ref's going to call a travel. Going to move it on. Lincoln's ball. Side out. Dara Burnett. The one to bring it up for Lincoln. Let's talk a bit about Jared Burnett to start our morning off. The alumni from Middleton, Green, Middleton Grange High School. Uh, he is currently studying commerce and marketing in his third year. His career goal post-university is to play basketball full-time actually and to be a marketer so two great career paths for Jared Burnett <laughs> and a uh, fun fact about him he has the flatmate of Paith Momoisia and Corbin Mason so got the full team in the flat full team in the fuddy should be a good time down there down in Lincoln not sure what's going on here I think we're just sorting out some clock stuff getting it all sorted out before we carry on with this game as Jared Burnett brings it up the court for Lincoln. Riley Bonar on him. Paif Momoisia getting it inside, flicking it out. Phoenix Sorensen. Bang. Lots of threes early today. There's only been two actually, that's a lie, but two first scoring plays of the game, both threes. We might have another one there from Josh Coyman. Not to be. Colbert Mason pulled down the rebound. Ball up to Paif Momoisia. Gets it back to Colbert Mason. Looks to drive. AUT clogging the lanes well though. Sorensen from up top. No good. Riley Bonner looks to get it up quick to Ryan Low Matia. Will we see another three? Of course we will. Of course we will. These teams love shooting threes. No go on that one though. Pay for Moisia. Pushing the pace. Finds Derek Burnett. Gets it back to Pay for Moisia. Phoenix Sorensen. Also one of the better players for Lincoln yesterday. Number 10 for Lincoln on the drive. I believe that is Peter Pitts Brown. I believe so. 
because he appears to be the only one on my team list without a number. So if it is Peter Pitts Brown, he's the alumni of Hamilton Boys High School, studying a BCom, agribusiness and accounting in his third year. And here's a nice uh, career goal post university. He wants to own his own farm. That's tough, mate. That's 4 a.m. wake ups, milking cows, keeping everything tidy. It's good. As low Matia just misses from just in front of the free throw line, but we've got a call from the ref. We're staying down here. AUT Paul. Staying down here. Let's see what happens. Low Matia will inbound the ball. Riley Bolna shooting out the corner. Go back to the safety. Josh Coyman from well deep. Adam Singer able to get the board. But referee will send it back up that away. Adam Singer into the starting lineup today. Was not yesterday. Good to see him getting a start. Um, should be a good showing up for him. Phoenix Sorensen on the wing. Matched up with Riley Bonna, Ryan Lomatia on the help defense. Burnett swings it out to Peter Pitts Brown, unable to make it count. Lots of threes early on, lots of misses early on also. Um, it's all right though. Keep shooting them. Shoot it, shoot, as we were saying yesterday. Don't get deterred by the score, people. Just shoot the damn ball. This is what you do. Coyman fouled on the three-point line. And what was Tom Allen saying yesterday, people? Don't foul jump shooters. Why? Because stuff like this happens. He's got three freebies at the line for him. All he's got to do is make them. They're called free throws for a reason. But he's not going to convert on the first one. Unfortunate for Josh Coyman. But we move on. As he makes the second, shaking his head, doesn't like the f first miss, Burnett, looked like he was going to shoot it, Corbin Mason swings it out, Peter Pitts Brown, unlucky, Coleman bringing the ball up, not a lot of early mo momentum from these teams so far, four minutes in, only got eight points total in the game, Coleman fading away off one leg, shakes his head again. So am I, brother. So am I. <laughs> Corbin Mason. Down on a drive. Lil Hooker. Unable to get it go. But is fouled by Ryan Lomatia. So it will be Corbin Mason at the Rarangi. Shout out to Tom Allen. He'll be here soon. Needs to work on his uh, Te Reo Māori. But we'll get there. It's a process. But... Uh, you know, Rome wasn't built in the day, people. Cobb Mason to the Rarangi. Puts it up. First one. Easy money for Corbin. He was actually very, very impressive yesterday. Um, lots of rebounds. Lots of just hustle plays. Dirty stuff that people don't want to do. I mean, he's just everywhere. And that's what you need out of big guys like him. Big long fellas like him can get out and affect the game in several other ways rather than just scoring the ball which he is also very good at unlucky on the second one but we get going again Jesse Manuel subs in for AUT number five bringing the ball up on the left wing finds Hayden Nixon on the wing puts it up for three rattles in and out Jared Burnett calling the shots for Lincoln right now Phoenix Sorensen bringing it up Hands off to Peter Pitts Brown, almost a travel there. He gets it back, kicks it out to Pitta, Maxwell Torpia. Jesse Manuel steals it. And we're going AUT's way again. You see Manuel surveying his options. Phoenix Aronson on him, finds Hayden Nixon down low. He's looking for a post up. We got Etoru Nga here corner. Three seconds in the key. Got to watch out for that, people. Don't get caught in the key. Don't get caught in the key. It will not end up well. You'll usually get a three-second call. As we carry on here, Pitta, Maxwell Torpia, finds Corbin Mason. Down. Low. 
and one. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. As easy as you like it. We'll take another look at it. Here we go. Nice feed. Nice big to big action. Short corner to the elbow. One triple. Pound. Cobble Mason takes it in. For the and one. Carrying on. Cobble Mason at the line to make it three. And he does so smoothly. Jesse Manuel bringing the ball up the court now. He is guarded. Lincoln in a 2-3. Looks like a little 2-3 zone to me. Playing very well. Just what they wanted to skip pass across, try to get in the passing lanes. Way to close the gap on Hayden Nixon, but they get called for a foul, unfortunately. Four minutes left in this first period. Very slow game. Very, very not the same to the games we saw yesterday, especially for AUT. Got out to a hot, hot start. Lots of points. As Murillo Gonzalez butchered it. Got to the rim. Unlucky on that one. But we play on. Nice little drop step. Corbin Mason, as I was saying, everywhere. He's everywhere. He's doing all the stuff that people don't like doing. Getting out boards. Being a pest. Annoying the uh, offenders. Jesse Manuel. Nice hook by Fakamudi. Unfortunate again, that window. It <laughs> just seems to stay open 24-7. Almost a back court there. Darren Burnett saved it though, lucky. Look, short corner. I'm loving the big movement. The big movement from Flynn McGuinness to Corbin Mason. Work it to the short corner. Big stays on the elbow and dives to the hoop. Easy pass for Flynn McGuinness to Corbin Mason. And an easy finish for Corbin Mason. Singer on the wing, lets it fly. Not afraid to shoot the free Adam Singer. That's him, he loves a three-pointer. The alumni of Westlake, Westlake Boys High School. Doing the comms degree, communications. Third year, his dream, his career goal, post, post university, is to start his own brand. So we've got a little business mogul, and Adam Singer. Hopefully those dreams come true, my brother. As he'll go to the line. To the Rarangi. For two. First one. Let's see it. No go for Adam Singer. We've got one more shot, though. Will he make a count? Find out in about 10 seconds. He should make a count. I've just given them the commentator's curse, guys. I'm so sorry, Adam. I'm so sorry to everyone who I've given the commentator's curse over the last couple of days. It's been terrible. And there he is again. We might be looking at an early MVP candidate here, people. Corbin Mason, he is everywhere. He's on the boards. We'll take another look at it. Nice drive. Corbin Mason, just there to tidy up the dirtiness, the dirty work. Puts it in, puts it away. Coyman looking for the swing pass. Finds Adam Singer. Adam Singer. Going behind the back. Tahai by Jared Burnett. Gets it out, but Murillo Gonzalez. Murillo Gonzalez with the Arai. Big time to start our warning off. I'm hoping we get another look at that. Let's get another look at that. Lincoln brings it up. Murillo Gonzalez says, Carl, get out. Big time. Big time momentum swinger. Hopefully that opens this game up for AUT. Four points. Not much doing right now, but um, you know, we stay optimistic, make that five now. They should go out on a run here, hopefully. That is the goal, that is the goal. Jesse Manuel makes it two. Very easy work for him from the line. As if Lincoln pushing the pace up the court. On the wing, Pitta Maxwell Torpia finds Corbin Mason, who else down low? But a good follow-up by number 11, Connor O2 from Waimea College. Carry on, Jesse Manuel finds Josh Coyman at the elbow. Similar story down this end, big man diving to the hoop from the elbow. Josh Coyman finds Murilo Gonzalez. He has been an absolute... He's, he's also in the starting lineup today, and I think he's doing it justice. I think he has been performing great tonight so far. Jared Burnett. I mean, we talked about his form yesterday. Silky smooth stuff, able to knock down a free from the left wing. We'll take another look at it here. Bang, butter. Now the game's starting to open up a bit. Lincoln out to an early nine point lead. 
I'll be interested to see how this long this lead hangs around for them. I'll be very interested actually. Josh Coyman going to the line. As some like to call him the koi fish. He puts it up. He makes the first. And I'll repeat it again. He is a, unfortunately a fan of the worst rugby league team in the world, the New Zealand Warriors, the Aotearoa Warriors. So bad luck, brother. But not bad luck on your free throws. Knocks down both with ease, as he should. Pita Maxwell Topia on the right wing. Gets it low to Mr. O'Toole. Honga O'Toole, that is. The second year Bachelor of Commerce students in agriculture, sorry. Should have had that. Should have had that. Hayden Nixon on the wing finds Josh Coyman. I'm liking Josh Coyman floating around this elbow, high post area. Um, it's where he should work. He's really good from the mid range. He's, I know he's good at threes, but it's good to see him mixing it up as the man of the hour, it seems like. Connor Road Tool and Corba Mason doing it all for Lincoln at the moment. Who's going to stop him? I don't know. Are they going to stop him? I don't know. But. AET will hope that they are able to stop him as we have Conor O'Toole going to the line. 4 2. To the what? To the Rarangi. Shout out to Tom Allen. Make sure you're working on that and you're ready for the finals, my brother, as he knocks down number one. Jesse Manuel was going to bring the ball up, but there is a sub in. Number 30 for Lincoln, Bradley Murray McGregor. Played a bunch of three on three against Bradley Murray McGregor. He's grown. He's tall now. He's lengthy, good defender, and he can knock down a free ball when he wants. Nice 2 3 zone. AUT looking to shift the zone. Hayden Nixon brings it down. Able to find an open Adam Singer, but he swings it out to Koyman, the hot man. And he does it again. He's back. He's back. Guess who's back? Josh Koyman. Lincoln looking to respond early. Back out to Bradley off the who of Ryan Lomatia. There's a new Kupu Māori for you. Who? Shoes is the translation. So we're going to have Lincoln side out ball. Paith Momoisia looking for his teammates able to find O'Toole. Connor O'Toole looking to go to work again. Gets it up rarely. Great ball movement from Lincoln early. Loving the inside outside looks. Unable to convert there. But Jesse Manuel will take it up the court. Pull things out. Fast break was it on. Lincoln got back well in transition. Swinging it out. Coyman. Big looping pass out to Singer. Can he knock it down? Yes, sir. Cha -ching. Scoring's open up. We'll take another look at this. Coyman. Beautiful swing pass. Adam. No hesitation, brother. Bing. Cash money. Brad McGregor up to a pave. Josh Coyman playing defense? Wow. Got a hand in there. Up to Jesse Manuel. Easy bucket. And just like that, ladies and gents, it's a far piro care move. Four point game. Adam Singer playing. Adam Singer playing defense as well. What is this? Coleman up fake. See, that's a good way to play basketball, people. Don't overcomplicate it sometimes. People want to block you these days. We'll take another look at it. Look, he wanted to go up and block. All he needed to do was up fake. Coleman, easy finish. Coming into the latter stages of this period, Conor O'Toole. Can he do it again? No, he can't. But we will stay down Lincoln. I believe it is off Hayden Nixon. So we're going to stay down here. Who will inbound it? Paith Momoisia. Let's see what Lincoln's going to run here. We got a sub coming in for AT men. Tahir Snyder's coming in for the man, the myth, the legend, Josh Coyman. Put the Max Topia up top. Almost. Almost. Bradley, what the? Rebound. Can he get it to go? Oh, very close. 0.9 seconds left in this game. Can we get up a full quarter? What do you reckon? In or out? I'm going to say that's out. Oh, almost went in off the bounce. That'll do us for the first period, for, for the first ho far today. Exciting game now. Lincoln went out to an early lead. AUT able to bring it out via the hands of Josh Coyman and Adam Singer reigning in a couple frees couple of easy fast breaks good to see the boys playing defense it's exciting exciting start to the day um, 
Bit of a player spotlight here. Paif Momo Isia. The alumni of Manudewa College. Been playing since he was five in his mini ball team. So shout out to all the mini ball players. I was once a mini ball player, it was really fun. Um, he thinks his on court strength is finding his teammates. I'd agree. He's been having a lot of fang eyes today and yesterday. Um, if you're unsure of what a fang eye is, it is an assist. Um, he's a third year Bachelor of Science, in particular food science. And his career post Goldman University undecided, which is completely fine. You know, you don't make decisions too early in life, just go with the flow. I've just been instructed to move my mic closer to my face. <laughs> Thank you, Ash. Just making sure we sound all good for you fellas back home. Down here at AU Tiantiraki Pai Whenua, Kitamaki Makoto for the National Tertiary Championship. Te whakatai tai o ngā whare wānanga o Aotearoa. It's been great so far. We've got, a th uh, I believe, a sixth and fifth playoff game on the opposite court. I believe that is Te Whare Wānanga o Tamaki versus Te Whare Wānanga o Canterbury. Close game there, 20-17. As we start to begin to get underway. Back to this third and fourth playoff. Te Whare Wānanga o Lincoln taking on Te Whare Wānanga o AUT. Close one, very close. 2022, as we see Phoenix Sorensen bringing the ball up. The young fella, he's only 18, people. He's only 18. He's got a couple more years in this competition. And I'm sure he'll make a good name for himself in the basketball world. As Bradley finds himself open for free. Unable to convert. Ryan Lomatia with the rebound finds JC Manuel. He'll bring it up the court. Josh Coyman not going to go to work. We're going to find Ryan Lomatia, actually. Couple of bangs from Ryan, Ryan Lomatia. Adam Singh unable to convert. Got hot a little bit in the first quarter. Great to see Tahir Snyder's getting the board, but once again, unlucky on the layup. Phoenix Sorensen flicks it up to Paif Momoisia. Phoenix Sorensen directing traffic for Lingen. Swings it out, Bradley. Bad luck. Jesse Manuel on the fast break. Looks to finish with the right, can't get it to go. Cannot get it to go. Couple of opportunities missed here for AUT. Cobber Mason kicks it out to Bradley. This is his third three of the night, unable to go though. As AUT brings the ball up the court, Josh Coyman. He looked to pull the early, nice cut though. Nice cut from him, good to see him changing it up. Ryan Lomatia looking to go to work. He is one of the most proficient mid-range scorers, as you can see right there in the competition from what I've seen. He loves it around just above the elbow, just above the rarangi. It's good. He's good. He's been good. Phoenix Sorensen looking at Aza back with a triple. Close but no cigar. Jesse Manuel bringing it up. Koyman. Would have been cool if it counted. But guess what, people? It doesn't count. Also, we have the UTSNZ Shield here today. So if you're not sure on what UTSNZ is about, it is the University and Tertiary Sport New Zealand. Their goal is to facilitate quality competitive inter-tertiary sporting competitions and develop pathways to international opportunities. Great initiative from these fellas. So basically how this runs is they have these national tertiary championships for a bunch of different sports such as volleyball, 3x3 basketball, badminton, ultimate frisbee, futsal and many other sports. If you win those, if you win those competitions or wherever you place, you receive points for that. And there's a leaderboard of the standings. So currently, Te Whare Wānanga o Canterbury is leading 41. Te Whare Wānanga o Tamaki Makaurau on 38 in second place. So, not only are these fellas playing for the championship of this, but they are playing for the overall championship of the UTSNZ for the UTSNZ Shield. So, shout out to them. We need that now, here in Aotearoa, we need more competitions like this. Exactly how they said it, to provide, hopefully provide, international opportunities. As we get back to the action, Jesse Manuel finds Tahir Snyder. 
Pay for more East Sao though, able to get the Tahoe. Phoenix Harrison. Oh. He'll be kicking himself after that one. Adam Singer gets it out. Ryan Lomatia. Ryan Lomatia's had a much better start to this game. He was great last game, but good to see him getting going earlier. Jesse Manuel from the corner. Bang, bang, bang. Three pointer. As we get to keep going. Phoenix Sorensen driving through. Finds pay for more ECR. Unable to get a go. We move though. Jesse Manuel able to find Coyman on the catch. What's he going to do here? Finds Ryan Lomatia. And Coyman, of course, from the three. Unfortunately, not a very good shot. Shout out to Josh. Phoenix Aronson on the ball now. Feeds it out. Cobber Mason down low. I love that action. They feed the short corner and someone dives on the opposite elbow. It's worked a treat, but AUT able to read it there. Seen it a couple times, actually, from several teams. It's a good, it's one of the most underrated uh, basketball strategies to have those two bigs, or uh, not even bigs, can have a guard in there. Moving the ball, cutting in that short key area in the box. Josh Coyman on the rebound from the miss by Peter Pitts Brown. Low Matia for three. Unfortunate there. Phoenix Aronson brings down the rebound, finds Pafe. One more East Sao. Pafe up the top. You'd think he'd shoot that. Might get back to him and he might shoot it. Look at this. Good movement. Corbin Mason looking to go to work. Good defense. Way to be physical by Adam Singer there. Jesse Manuel bringing the ball up the court. Ryan Laumatia surveying the options. Looking to see what's going to happen. He's going to pull it. He's going to pull it. I don't blame him. A little heat check. Hit one in the corner just earlier. As Burnett back in the game for Lincoln. One of their best players. Peter Pitts Brown looks inside. Great movement, great ball movement from this Lincoln squad. Look at this. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Looks for the bank. I like how he used the bank though. Even though it didn't go on, I like how he used the bank. Josh Coyman out on the break. Easy as a like. Right hander. No problems. No problems for Josh Coyman. Pay for more easy up. Bringing it up. We have a kick ball from Ryan Lomatia. Going to keep things going. I believe Lincoln has called a timeout. AUT boys loving it as much as they can. I know it is a third or fourth playoff boys, but stay energized. They're up now, 27-24. A little bit of an early lead as you see Jaden Peltzer sitting there on the bench and Connor Mills, two boys who went down with injury in the semi-final yesterday, unfortunate. Two good followers for their defensive rotations, keep them intact. Really, really good at playing defense, especially Jaden Belcher. Unfortunate to lose him. I feel like the game could have been much different against Victoria yesterday. But uh, sometimes that's just how the cookie crumbles. And you can't do anything about it. So, boys, keep carrying on. As we look over here to the Lincoln bench, boys all locked in. Boys all locked in. They want to get that third spot. Never mind the fourth spot, is what they're saying. Coach Troy, I believe. I could be wrong. Coach Troy, though, talking to his boys. Getting them ready to start the second period. I don't think they've got to change much. I think AUT have just clicked into gear now. They weren't really clicked in in the first quarter until the very end. But um, I'm loving the play by Lincoln. I'm loving the elbow to short corner play. The bigs looking for cutters out of the post. The ball movement is looking really, really good. For AUT, we've had a couple of hot hands. Coyman made a couple of threes. Jesse Manuel made a three. Adam Singer's made a three. I think that's what's brought them back. Peter Pitts Brown from deep. Unable to go. Ryan Lomatia gets the board. Finds Coyman. Coyman looking to go to work on Jared Burnett. And he'll pull it. Of course he will. Of course he will. Bang. Bang, bang. Josh Coyman. Can he get high? That's his second three of the night. Phoenix Aronson. Talk about hustle and mana. That boy's got it. Not sure on the call here, people. I'll let you know when I find out, though. I think they're just sorting some stuff out. Go back to action. 
Back in there. Jab Burnett finds Phoenix Sorensen. Coleman on the move. Oof. Got a little chip up there from Marilo Gonzalez. Taif Moisia kicks it out. Jared Burnett. You'd think he'd let it fly. Great feet inside, but Morillo Gonzalez. His second big block of the game. Wow. Let's take another look at that. Lincoln worked the ball around, work it inside. Morillo Gonzalez says, nah uh. Get out of here, brother. Get out. Great defense. And it ends up being AUT ball. Must have came off the body of a Lincoln player. Murilo Gonzalez finds Josh Coyman. Skips through, float game. Very, very smooth. I think that is one of the best assets of Josh Coyman's game. We'll take another look at it. His float game is very underrated. Skips through the gap, soft touch, rattles him. Very good. Back on Lincoln, Jared Burnett swings it around. Peter puts Brown on the ball. Skip pass out to Pay for Moisia. That is great ball movement. Peter puts Brown. Reaps the rewards of the beautiful ball movement by Lincoln. Lincoln boys loving it. Trying to keep their cool. Still down by five. But great, great way to change momentum for them. Great way, really good way. As we crack back into the action here, Ryan Lowe, Matia. On the inbound to Josh Coyman. Joshua Coyman. He gets it here. Let's see. Little full court semi trap. Lo Matia gets a stolen. Pay for more easier. On the drive. Almost a tough finish. But he will go to the line. Go to the Rarangi. For two. Pay for more easier. Remember playing him in Manu Devil College? Very tough player back then. Very tough player. In the NBL now, I believe. Representing the Manawatu Jets. Got a bit of time this season. I remember watching him. Very good player. Great to see he's developed into a professional basketball player. Well deservedly so. Ryan Lai Matia. A little bit of a uh, half court trap there from Lincoln. No real pressure though for AUT. Easy enough to break it. Finds Lai Matia in the spot. Kicks it out to Tahir Snyder. Unable to get a go, but Morillo Gonzalez off his head. Off his head, but we'll stay down here for AUT. Love seeing, uh, that's a, in rugby league, they call that a falcon. Comes off the top of your dome. Always oh, good to see a little falcon. Murilo Gonzalez, though, has been outstanding. Let's, do a, let's, let's get a little bit of a player spotlight on Murilo Gonzalez. He, there's not much, but he's a finance, he's studying finance and management, and he is in his third year. That's a little bit about Murilo Gonzalez. I hope I'm saying the name right, my brother. My apologies if I'm not. Josh Coyman finds Lo Matia in his preferred spot, and he gets to it, and he banks it, and, and one. This is what I'm saying. This, is, this, this guy has been one of the most proficient mid-range scorers. This whole tournament, from what I've seen, he loves that top of the key range, either just inside or just outside. He's been really good from um, that area in both games that I've watched as he looks to convert his N1 play and does so with ease we'll go back the other way Lincoln Jared Burnley on the ball what's he gonna do AUT sink back into a 2-3 great rebound from number 12 for Lincoln out of bounds we're staying down here for Lincoln they'll have the baseline ball number 12 for Lincoln with a great rebound from McGuinness bought a lot of energy for them yesterday is also very good for them. As who else on the outside? Jared Burnett. Unable to get it to drop there. Ryan Lo Matia. Bringing it up. Screed by Borillo Gonzalez. One legger from the from his spot. I don't blame him. He's, he's getting he's starting to heat up. He's trying to find his looks. Pay for Moisia surveying. Gets doubled by Josh and Riley finds Phoenix Johnson down low. Unable to get it to go. But Lots of feisty play down low, fighting for the rebounds. And they force a turnover. Lincoln brothers are getting hyped, they love it. They want that third place spot. I would too. 
Third is better than fourth. I'm telling you, people. Third place is better than fourth place. Phoenix Aronson to inbound the ball to Jared Burnett. Phoenix Aronson gets it back. Sorry, people, for the yawn. My apologies. <laughs> Bit tired. But we're good. We move. Pitta, top, uh, Maxwell Topia. Throws it out. Unlucky. We carry on. We have Tahir Snyder to inbound the ball to Josh Coyman. Little smile on the face of Josh Coyman. Might have been a couple of words from Pitta, Maxwell Topia. As they were both, they were not Rosmany boys. Josh was a Westlake boy. Uh, Pitta was a Rosmany boy. But they've had some matchups. And actually, I believe he is talking to his mate to here, coaching him. As he does, because he is a coach at Hoop 33, if you did not know. Shout out to Hoop 33. Derek Burnett bringing the ball up the court, looking into the latter stages of this. How far, how far for you people at home? It's a kupu hau for you in te reo Māori, it means quarter. Great rebound, Murilo Gonzalez almost got the block. Great rebound, great finish from number 21 for Lincoln, Ethan O'Toole. If I'm not mistaken, there is two O'Toole boys, my, my apologies, in this team. Assuming they are brothers, could be wrong once again, but assuming they are. Koima from the corner, unable to get a shot to here, Snyder. Same story there, unable to get it to go. Phoenix Sorensen bringing the ball up for Lincoln. Drives down middle, looks to go out left. Unable to do so, but gets the foul. Hope everyone's uh, Ra Tapu is going well. Ra Tapu, Māori word for Sunday. Hope everyone's had a good morning so far. Should be a good day of basketball down here. Excited for the finals, excited for the next 3rd and 4th game as a timeout is called, I believe, by a UT. Well needed timeout. Almost to the end of this first haurua. Haurua. That's a new word for you. New kapu. Kapu ho. Haurua. If you can work out what a ho fire is, a quarter. What do you think a haurua is? What's rua in Māori? Two. It is a half. Getting closer to the end of this Haurua. 35-31 lead to AUT. Held their own this game. Both teams very competitive. Um, heat sh shooting started to heat up for both teams, which is good to see. Really good to see. Lincoln will be looking to close this lead down before the half. You know, want to go into that second Haurua. Spirits high. Feeling good. Hopefully. Hopefully for them they can get it going. Boys hyped up. Getting ready to go. And we're checking back in. AUT taking on Lincoln. If you've just joined us, no my hockey my kite rangi tuarua o te nei pao hotanga. We are here. At Teraki Pai Finua Tamaki Makaurau. Where else but AUT? for the National Tertiary Basketball Championships. I am your host for now, Keith Scruchins. Tom Allen will be joining me shortly, later in the broadcast. But uh, it's been an eventful two days so far. Lots of games, lots of basketball. Hope everyone's been enjoying the broadcast as AUT are bringing the ball back up the court. Lincoln able to get the steal. Big time play from Phoenix Sorensen. Massive work. Ryan Leimatia looks to get a low, finds Josh Coyman. Josh Coyman finds Riley Bonner. Riley Bonner with Pitta Topia Maxwell on him. 2 3 zone for Lincoln. Coyman looks to get up a three, looks to stay hot, unable to do so. Phoenix Sorensen will look to take the last shot here. Rotko here, Kona Toyana, 20 seconds left. Jared Burnett on the ball. Looking to get busy. What do you reckon? Pitta, Maxwell Topia for the last shot. Nice! Beautiful pocket pass by Pitta, Maxwell Topia. That's one underrated asset of his game. Riley Bonna to beat the buzzer, unable to do so. And that'll do it for the first Hodu of the game. We'll get another look at this pocket pass. Wow. No looker to Phoenix Sorensen. Easy layup. 
That'll do us for the Hauru Tuatahi. I'm going to take a short break and I'll be right back with you. Hey, Akuani. Not just. in the city is just so friendly. It's a big city, it's a big student city. I love that you can walk everywhere and that everything's accessible. The campus is just pretty much in the heart of the city as well. What the students offer to the city is something that you don't get too many other places. That's the great thing about this university, you will find your people. It feels like a university with a city attached to it. It's exceeded my expectations in every way, it's unbelievable. No mai hoki mai ki te haurua tuarua o tēnei kemu. Welcome back to the second half of this game. We are at AUT. Shout out to the refs real quick. We got Melanie O'Connor, O'Keen Reed, and Terry Chung. Like we've been saying every single game, be nice to your referees people. They're doing their job. Referees make mistakes. Remember, they're people too. So be nice. Be nice. Looking to get back into this one. 35-36. It's bound to be a close finish. I'm excited. Like we said as well, we're neutral. We didn't go to any of these uh, universities. All we want to see is close finishes around here. No bias around here. We're just looking for that grandstand finish. Buzzer beater type stuff. 
as the refs prep the boys to get back into it. Josh Coyman on the inbound. Looking to get it in to Riley Bonner. Let's get back into the action straight away. Riley Bonner at the top. Finds Manuel. Looking for the early shot. Nice little zone defense from Lincoln. Able to get the tar high there. Swings it out. Derek Burnett back up to Phoenix Sorensen. Like I've said many times in the broadcast, Phoenix Sorensen is only 18 people. <laughs> He's got a bright future ahead of him. He's got a bright future ahead of him. Get an early three-pointer. Up from number six. Cobbett Mason. Good to see him stretching the floor. Riley Bonner. From behind the Rarangi Toru Piro. Bang, bang, bang. Bang, bang, bang. Big time shot there from Riley Bonner. Burnett swings it up top to Sorensen. Sorensen kicks it out to Pita Maxwell Topia. Bang, bang, bang. Response. If this is anything to look at what the rest of the Haurua Tuarua will look like, I'm excited. Two threes from both teams already. And another Tahai from who else? But Colbert Mason, the garbage man we like to call him. That's my new nickname for him. Does all the garbage work that no one else wants to do. In there getting steals, putting his hands in. Getting offensive rebounds and making it look pretty as well. Shout out to Corbin Mason. As we have number 12, Flynn McGuinness for Lincoln and running the ball, looking for Pitta Maxwell Torpia, the recent three point shooter. Got caught in the air but able to find Flynn McGuinness. Flynn McGuinness not able to find Corbin Mason. Riley Bonner with the steal. Works it up on the left wing. Finds Ryan Lomatia. Out to Josh Coyman. Josh Coyman, up fake from Jesse Manuel. Looks for it. He likes his three pointers, Jesse Manuel. Do he does. Riley Bonner in the post. It's a rare sight. Marilo Gonzalez. Bit of a wild shot there, but Coyman able to get it back. He loves that little fade around that short corner area. That was just above the short corner. Phoenix Johnson, though. Bringing it back up. He's looking for the early three as well. I'm liking the way this Hodua Tuarua is turning out. Second half is turning out. It's turning out really well. Ryan Lomatia, lots of early shots, lots of points, and that's his spot. That's his spot, people. I've been saying it. I've been saying it this broadcast. The most proficient mid-range scorer I've been seeing this tournament so far. Really good. Him and, um, who was it yesterday? I think it was Max Patterson. As Pitta Maxwell Topia. He's come out firing. Shout out to the brother. Pitta Maxwell Topia. Also one of the better players for Lincoln in recent times. Good impact off the bench. Riley Bonner, good ball movement from AUT so far. But stagnant there. Get him moving. Ryan Lomatia, another Hawkeye Fakamuri. Step back. That's Jesse Manuel. Easy drive. Finishes with the right hand on the left hand side of the hoop. Or the uhanga. Uhanga in Māori. We have another look at this. Jesse Manuel, up fake. Goes through. Right hand. Easy as you like. Easy as you like, brother. Put a Maxwell Torpia. They're going to get busy. And who else? Garbage man down low. Looking to get the easy finish. Jared Burnett. Unable to get the three to go. And by the way, when I say Colbert Mason, nickname for a garbage man, it's a compliment. It is a compliment. Because no one else wants to do, this, to do that work. Ryan Lomatia looks to get it going from his favourite spots again. Unable to do so, though. But we carry on. Jared Burnett able to find Phoenix Sorensen down low. Is he still hot? Unable to get it to go on that one. Put up Maxwell Torpia. AUT working down the court. By way of Jesse Manuel. Steps back. Hawkeye Fakamuri. Looks for the free. Almost loses the ball. The ref call it a travel. Travel in Maori. Here's another kupu ho, Makoto. We call it the rere. The ready is the travel. Seen a bunch of readies here. It's been a common thing. And like we said, work on your footwork, people. Simple skill. Doesn't waste too much energy to work on it. As we have Lincoln working it up. Adam Singer able to get the tar high, gets his hands in there. In and around the ball. As we work out through Ryan Low Matia. Oi, off the off the shoulder. Off. Dave Momo is here. Dodged the bullet there, didn't he, Ryan Lombatia? Is he Josh Middle? 
didn't dodge the bullet there though, unfortunately. Lee can able to get the tar high by way of Pitta Max Autopia. Behind the back to Jared Burnett. Soft touch around the rim. Also, we'll take another look at it. Pitta Max Autopia drives right behind the back. Easy little floater for Jared Burnett. And I touched on it yesterday, but those shots, that shot that Jared Burnett made just then, it's not as easy as you think, people. I know it's right in front of the room, but it is really not as easy as you think. As we have paved Momo Isia on the drive, float, tries to float it up. AT able to bring down the rebound. Riley Bonner brings it up for them. Swings it out left to Koyman. Joshua Koyman, that is. Who swings it out to Ryan Lomatia. Riley Bonner able to get the O board. And he will get the foul. Where will he go, people? To the Rarangi. Riley Bonner. Let's talk about this one again. Sport and Rec is his degree. Then his second year. Coach, uh, his uh, career goal post university is to coach Basel full time. And his fun fact. I'm just that guy, according to Riley Bonner. So, let's see if he's that guy on his second shot. Got that right. He is that guy, people. He is that guy. Pay for more, he's out, bringing it up. Finds Corbin Mason, who finds Peter Maxwell. Gets quickly swung out to Jared Burnett. The scorer, the shooter. Now he find, the ball finds its way back to Josh Coyman, who, what else would he shoot, really, people? You don't put a hand up on him early, he's going to shoot every time. There's Riley Bonner taking this trip to the line, to the Rarangi again. So he'll go back there, try to get easy free two points. Tight game here, people. 44-44. On the other court, fifth and sixth playoff over there. We got Tafari Wananga or Tamaki Makoto taking on Tafari Wananga or Canterbury. 42-41. Not sure to who. Unfortunately, I can't provide that information, but it also looks like it's shaping up to be a close one as Riley Bonner makes the second one as well. AUT up by two, 46-44. Pay for Momo Isia, bringing the ball up for Lincoln, finds Corbin Mason, high post, swings it around, great ball movement. Pay for looking to get going. Cannot do so, Corbin, what the board though? Like I said, garbage man, people. No boards. People look at it as an undervalued job. It is not. It's highly valued. And who else? From the Rarangi Toru Piro, Jared Burnett. Cha ding! If they look at the Lincoln look to put on a semi half court trap there. To no avail though. Riley Bonner finds Ryan Lomatia. Who looks to put a skip pass, but Jared Burnett was there with the ringa ringers up. And Ryan Lomatia with the block. But. Number 12, Flynn McGuinness, sorry. Number 21, Ethan O'Toole. Oh, Ethan O'Toole is able to get the tidy up. Ryan Lomati, a great block though. Great block. Is there a timeout call, I believe, by AUT? Early timeout. Not a bad call. Not a bad call sometimes. You just need to pull the boys in and switch the switch, you know? Uh, Lincoln's on, out on a bit of a run now. They've now got the lead by three. So probably a good call by AUT's coach. Summer down the momentum. Summer it down. Regroup. Recalibrate. Lincoln. I'm sure coach will be saying, keep doing what we're doing, boys. I'm loving the ball movement by Lincoln today. The inside-outside looks have been the main reason they are able to get this lead back. Uh, flashes inside to Corbin Mason. Guys like Corbin Mason, Ethan O'Toole. High post looks, low post looks. They've got divers coming in from each angle, cutting in. And that's how they get easy buckets. Their ball movement has been astonishing today. Astonishing. Interesting word. Not sure why I used it, but it works. So we'll carry on. Boys coming back in. AUT boys. Looking to take back the lead here. 46-49. I think for them, start, keep doing what they're doing. I like the new um, changes they were had to make due to injury from AET. Guys like Murilo Gonzalez have really stepped up, especially on the defensive end. Um, 
and yeah, it's good to see the other boys getting involved. Ryan Lomatia has had a much improved game today. He's been really, really good for them from the mid-range area. As Puta Maxwell Torpia put some early pressure on Riley Bonner, who find Josh Coleman finds Ryan Lomatia, unable to make a go. Rodrigo Gonzalez, though, although his team didn't get it, those are the plays you want to see out of your teammates all the time. Who else up the top? Who else, people? Probably the silkiest stroke we've seen all tournament long. Jared Burnett makes it way. Touching. Coyman up the top. Good pressure defense. Two free zone for these blokes from Lincoln. Good ball movement though to shift the zone and find an open look for Adam Singer. Unable to get it to go. But look who it is. Murilo Gonzalez. The man I was just giving early praise to. Here we go, Lincoln. Oh, who else? Who else? People. He's arrived. He's arrived. Jared Burnett. Let's get another look at it. Play for Momo here. Just finds it back. Jared Burnett. Bang. As they get back out on the break. Pitta, Maxwell, Topia unable to hold the ball. Josh Coleman will be saying hallelujah after that one. As he's out here on the left wing. Looking to work at Pitta Maxwell Topia, one of his best assets of his game. He's just a pisk. Just a pisk on defense. Adam Singer unable to get the right hand to flow. And they look for the long pass to Cole Mason. Guys, I know he's tall, I know he's long, I know he's athletic. But he's not that long. He's not that athletic. Make your passes shorter next time to Cole Mason. Shout out to Cole Mason, people. Ryan Lomati are bringing the ball up the court. Josh Coyman, looking for it. He loves his three-pointers. Kicks it out to Adam Singer, to the guy who also loves his three-pointers. Unable to get the game. We have Mr. O'Toole on the ball. Finds Sorensen, early, early release. Unable to get it to go. Great hustle from the boys. Shout out to number 21, Lincoln University. Mr. O'Toole, Ethan O'Toole. Way to jump over the sign, brother. Those signs have been taking beatings all tournament long. Glad to see him getting protected. Joshua Coyman on the inbound, looking to pass it to Ryan Lomatia. Lincoln defense starting a bit high. Looks like a quarter, mid-quarter court trap. As we find Murilo, Murilo Gonzalez sets the pick for Coyman. Coyman kicks out the corner. Adam Singer floats it from the left side. Unable to go. Pape Moore, you see, are pushing the pace for through Jared Burnett. Can Jared Burnett stay hot? He has been letting them fly this quarter. Look at that. See, that's what I'm talking about. When I talk about this ball moving by Lincoln up, although there was a turnover, the way they're able to find these inside-outside looks is the reason guys like Jared Burnett are able to find themselves open for these three-point looks as Jared Burnett comes off, unfortunately. But yeah, been really impressed with Lincoln's ball movement so far. And they're up, and it proves. 55-46. AUT hit a bit of a plateau right now, looking to get back into things. I think it's the 2-3 zone has been stifling them a little bit. Maybe this can bring the momentum back their way. Unfortunately not. Cobber Mason, the garbage man, on the board. Pay for Momo Isia, up the top. Finds Phoenix Sorensen. Looks inside, Cobber Mason. Cobber Mason, ladies and gentlemen. Unlucky to get the finish there though, but takes it to the chest of Murilo Gonzalez. And is able to take himself to the Rarangi for two. Colbert Mason, obviously one player from Lincoln we've been highlighting a lot just because of the little things he's been doing. The O boards, the defensive boards. He's, his hands are in the lane always. And he's been doing a little bit of playmaking. High post, he's been looking for the divers. Low post, been looking for the divers again. Really impressed me this tournament has Corba Mason as AUT, bring it back up the court through Josh Coyman. Marilo Gonzalez charging. Looks for Tahir Snyder, unable to get the pass through. Corba Mason getting to the end of this third period. Finds Pafe Momoisia on the wing, unable, just in and out. Would love to see Pafe Momoisia get some shots to fall because he has been outstanding for these fellas this whole tournament. You know, one of the premier players for this Lincoln squad. Coyman up top, fakes the screen, looking for the last shot here of the period. Will he get it off? Kicks it out, Singer. 
Up fake. Bang! What a way to finish the quarter by AUT. Via three-pointer. Adam Singer. Ice cold. They needed that. They absolutely needed that. Trims it down to an eight-point lead. They love it. They love it. Boys will be excited. What a way to end the quarter by Adam Singer. Heading into the last how far of this game, people. Bound to be a good one. Eight-point lead for Lincoln. Can they balloon it out? Can AUT bring it back and make this one a barn burner? Make this one a grandstand finish? We're going to have to wait and see. We're going to have to wait and see. By the looks of things, Lincoln is looking quite well. Ball movement has been impeccable for them. Um, yeah, I look to see more of the same stuff from them. AUT, get their offense going, play some solid defense. And don't count them out, people. they got people who can get hot. Josh Coyman, Ryan Lomatia, as we've been seeing. Should be a good last how far. Lincoln, though. Boys look locked in. I've got AUT on the screen. I'm looking at Lincoln over the balcony. They look locked in. AUT, though. Looking to get back into it. Jaden Belcher, once again, massive loss for them. Massive loss. One of the defensive specialists at this tournament. Really would have helped them yesterday in that game against um, Victoria. Victoria boys were hot yesterday. They were shooting the lights out. As we carry on, we're ready to get back underway. Big minutes on Josh Coyman tonight. Big minutes also for guys like Paif. One more is here. I think the biggest minutes actually for Lincoln might be Corbin Mason or Phoenix Sorensen. But we're ready to go. We're ready to get back into things. Derek Burnett to inbound the ball to call Phoenix Sorensen, not Corbin Mason. Of course not Corbin Mason. What am I thinking? Here we go. Here we go. Derek Burnett gets us underway. Phoenix Sorensen at the top. Way to work it inside. Ethan O'Toole, unlucky there. Jared Singer, Adam Singer. Wow. Josh Coyman at the top. Screen by Morillo Gonzalez. Josh Coyman working, crossing up. I believe there was a piece to that ball. Someone got a piece in there. Number 13, Callum Jeffries, the alumni of King's College. He's a studying business and commerce, majoring in agriculture, and his career goal, great assets in the agricultural industry. Massive goal, really massive goal, good goal. That's another good thing about this, we get to know a little bit more about the players, who they are as people, as Phoenix Sorensen says, hey! Cha-ching, big time shot. Big time shot from Phoenix Sorensen. As the start of this quarter is a little bit messy so far. But it's alright, we move. Josh Coyman the inbound the ball. Adam Singer. Let's see what he can do. Let's see what AUT can do. See if they can bring this game back. 11 point lead as Ethan O'Toole. Also being another great role player for this Lincoln team. Hands everywhere, gets in the rebounds. And he's just in the position for the ball at the right times. I've seen a lot of stuff from him from the short corner. A couple of good drop steps, good drop off passes from like guys like Corbin Mason to him, and easy finishes. As we carry on here, Ryan Lowe Matia drives right, looks for the pass inside, but like I said, garbage man Corbin Mason able to get his ringer in there. Ryan Lowe Matia will inbound the ball, cut it from Murilo Gonzalez. Adam Singer looking to work. Of course he's going to pull the three. What else would he do? He loves it. And Corbin Mason brings down the rebound. Work the ball up back through Phoenix Sorensen. Looking to get busy. Jared Burnett is back in the game, people. Ethan O'Toole, like I said. Like I said, what did I say? I just was talking about this kid. Offensive rebound. Been a really, really strong asset for Lincoln throughout this whole play. Josh Coyman looking to work here. Little half court trap pays off for Lincoln. Jared Burnett gets the ball back. 
I wonder if he's still hot from the third quarter. Came out with about three minutes to go in the third. At the C, Colbert Mason. Not happy with that one. As not many would be. Tahir Snyder on the ball. Josh Coyman brings it up. Find out if Singer. What do you think he's going to do, people? If he's not passing it, he's shooting the three. Ryan Lomatia saying, get in the weight room, below. Get in the weight room. And I'll go to the other. Simple as that. Gets the foul. Couple of bumps on Phoenix Sorensen. And he'll go up, shoot two. This is what they need. Maybe slow it down, break the momentum of Lincoln. Ryan Lomatia. Looking to get a shot up. First one. Is good. Good. Ryan Lomatia. For a second one. Good. Carrying on. Colin Mason in for Jared Burnett. As we have Jared Burnett out to Phoenix Sorensen. Sorensen. Sorensen to get it back. Fakes it. Good drop off to Colin Mason. Finish on the right hand side of the ring. Metona ring on my toe. Ring on my toe for people who don't know. Is your right hand in Māori. So that's a kupu ho for you. Ring on my toe, right hand. Ring on my left hand. As Lincoln bring the ball back up the court. Look at inside for Cole Mason again. Again, Ethan Tool. I'm loving this work from the bigs. One stay short corner. Cole Mason floats around the top. And he's able to find Ethan O'Toole for an easy finish. Just underneath the rim. Coyman up the top. Ryan Lomatia calling the shots. Finds Josh Coyman. High post. Swings it out. Riley Bonner. We all know he likes a three-pointer. And he likes it right now. This is exactly what they need to bring themselves back into the game. Still a 10-point game. It's not, it's not impossible. We'll put it that way. It's not impossible. These guys can for sure bring it back. And Ethan O'Toole underneath. He loves that spot. Just underneath the rim. But we're going way of AET. Other tides changing, people. Are they changing? This is what they need. They need a couple calls to go their way. A couple points, a couple defensive stops. And they'll be all right. That is not what they need. That is not what they need. And they do not want a three-pointer from Phoenix Sorensen right now. But bad luck, that's what they're going to get. This is why you've got to stay on it at all times, people. Don't mess around. Don't mess around. I've seen it plenty of times. People. Riley Bonner, though. This kid can shoot threes. Not the most conventional jumper, but he makes it work. He knocks these threes down, people. He is the saving light for them right now. Phoenix Sorensen hits the three. Riley Bonner says, nah, I'm not allowing it. Go back to a 10-point lead. Oh, no, this is not who you want shooting a three, though. Wow. Huge play by the brother, Conor O'Toole. They've been great for the Lincoln squad, these two brothers. I assume they're brothers. They could be cousins. They both got the exact same last name. They look the same. You'd assume they're brothers. But like Tom Allen said yesterday, he never assumes. Why? Because assuming makes an ass out of you and me. That's how you spell assume. A-S-S-U-M-E. Bit of a dad joke from Tom, as he is a father. I did giggle at it yesterday. Might have been because of the tiredness, but we carry on with the action. We're going way of A-U-T. Still a 10-point game. O'Toole unable to convert on any of his three throws just there. Murillo Gonzalez back in the game for AUT. And batting the ball. Finds Ryan Lomatia. Once again, a bit of a trap from Lincoln. And it pays off. Jared Burnett to the hoop. Finds Peter Pitts-Brown who finds Phoenix Sorensen. Jared Burnett gets it low to Mr. O'Toole. Unable to convert there. They both, both the brothers love that short corner spot. I'm not mad at it. I'm really not mad at it. It's a really good look. Coyman skips through the lane. And like I say, I keep saying it, people. That shot is not easy. Front of the rim stuff, when you're getting bumped, you're skipping through the lane, it's not as easy as it looks. It's a tough school. It takes lots of practice. Phoenix Stones are looking to go to work on the smaller Riley Bonner. 
as Mr. O'Toole hasn't been having too much success in the last couple shots from there, but Riley Pona gets out on the break, looks to finish. Riley Pona really showing out this quarter. Eight points for him this quarter so far. Looking good, really. The one holding this game close. It is now a six-point game. As Phoenix Sorensen looks to get to work. He has been outstanding for them tonight. Kicks it out. Peter Pitts Brown. Knocks it down. Wow. Extending that lead for Lincoln. Trying to put a stamp on the game. AUT need a three from here. Unfortunate. Morilo Gonzalez, though. He has been outstanding for AUT today. Making it happen on both ends, defensively, offensively. Been doing it well. Phoenix Sorensen to O2. Where else would he be on the short corner? Of course, on the short corner. AUT. Huge call. Seven point game here, people. This is big time stuff here. We get into the business end of this game. Subs coming in. Mr. O'Toole is out. Paif, Momo Isia, back in the game. Feel like we haven't seen him in a while. So yes, you'd expect him to be in the game for the last three or so minutes of this game. Four, sorry. Ryan Lomatia, back to the hot hand. Ryan Lomatia. Travel, Arrere. Riley Bonner, yep. Moved his feet before. He dribbled the ball. But yeah, let's get back into it. Phoenix Owens looks for cutting Pave Moyes here, who finds, oh no, oh no, oh no. Terrence Burnett is doing me an absolute favour on the commentary. Every time he catches the ball outside the three, I say, oh no, or watch out. And he backs it up, he knocks it down. Could have been a foul there on Corbin Mason, I think there is. Wow. We'll have to look at it again if we can here. Corbin Mason. Oh yeah, just a little bit of an extended elbow there on DC Manuel. It's good. Physicality, that's what they need. 10 point lead, three minutes to go. AUT will need a bit to go right for them today. To see what happens here. Let's have a look see. Josh Coyman. Corbin Mason. Garbage man. Doing the garbage work. Pay for more here. You're not catching him out on the break. See you later, cousin. And they need a timeout. The Lincoln boys are loving it. They can smell the third place. It's on the horizon, people. They're ready. They are ready. They're revved up. They're ready to go. Lincoln looking to close out this third and fourth playoff. What a statement. Up 12 right now. About two minutes to go. Man. Lincoln, man. They look much better than the game. Uh, when they played Auckland University yesterday. But, I mean, what do you do when you've got guys like Ray Mark Cruz, Ruben Fitzgerald, Dan Powell all going off early in the game? It was very hard for them to come back. So, full credit to them. You're not going to win it every time anyway. Is what it is. But, look, they're gunning for this third spot. As they should. As they should, like I said. Third place is always better than fourth place, people. Any place higher is better than any other place higher if that makes sense. Doesn't really sound like it makes sense, does it? But it does. <laughs> As we get back into the action, Lincoln boys taking a court, AUT taking a little bit more time in the huddle, probably discussing what do we do? But yeah, they're going to need to hit some shots here because 12 point lead with three minutes down. I mean, that's not impossible. But it is quite hard, so it'll be interesting to see their approach here. Guys like Josh Coyman need to get hot. And we'll see. Lincoln, getting the stop there. Just what the doctor ordered. We continue on here. Lincoln bringing the ball up, looking to close this game out. Phoenix Aronson finds Corbin Mason. 
on the short corner. These shots are starting to turn to daggers, people. Starting to turn to daggers. And there's not much that people can do about it. It's just what happens. It's just what happens, people. I don't make the rules, I just enforce them. Phoenix Sorensen bringing the ball up, finds, oh no. Oh no, Jared Burnett. And then look who's there, even though he didn't get it, Jared Burnett. Unreal. As we carry on here, Ryan Lowe Matia will be inbounding the ball. Josh Coyman bringing the ball up for AUT. He needs to get going. He seriously needs to get going. He's not going to. Lincoln, Darren Burnett in his face, causing all kinds of problems for AUT. Ryan Lowe Matia finds Josh Coyman. Who gets it back? Adam Singer looking for high post. Good ball movement. You would have thought Riley would have shot that three. They need threes. It's two minutes left, people. Phoenix Sorensen. Lincoln looking to slow the clock up here. No point in rushing. They've got a healthy lead. They're going to keep it healthy. As we carry on. Adam Singer for three. No good. But it's good. That's the shots they need. They need to shoot threes ASAP. Otherwise, this is going to get worse. Pay for more here. They're not looking to do much here. Just hold it up. Unless your name's Jared Burnett. As we continue on with this game, Josh Coyman bringing the ball up the court. Fake. Nice little move. He does love his mid-range game. And I think it is one of the underrated assets of the young man's game. As Lincoln look to play this one out, slowing the game down. No point in rushing for them now. Finds Corbin Mason though. It's just beautiful basketball people. Give praise when it's due people. As Adam Singer finds Lo Matia. Lo Matia out to Josh Coyman. They need a three. He gets a layup. It might be too little, too late for AUT. The lead is at 14 for Lincoln. We'll take another look at this layup by Josh Coyman. Up fake. Goes in. Left hand finish. Nice and smooth off the glass. Lincoln look like they're taking this one out, people. Congrats to them. Third place in the tournament. Really good. Hey. Third place is not bad, people. I actually think, my personal opinion, third place is better than second place. Because third place, you're just sneaking into the ranking. Second place, you lost in the finals. And they needed that a bit earlier. Credit to uh, Adam Singer, though. Good shot up. Jared Burnett. This will be the last position of the game. Second to last, sorry. Bradley tries to get his name on the scorecard. And he does. Bang, bang. Lincoln boys love it. They love it. Adam Singer trying to just get it up. Lincoln should hold the ball out here. But we haven't been seeing that very often. But they will not. Mr. O'Toole looks, he wants more. AUT. It's five seconds left. Looks like they'll hold the ball out here. Congratulations to Lincoln Basketball running away with that third place position at the National Tertiary Championship here in Tamaki Makoto, Teraki Pai Whenua, AUT. Congrats to uh, AUT also taking away fourth place. Lincoln though, coming away with the win here today. Boys, go enjoy your Mad Mondays, go celebrate. Well deserved. Well deserved, both teams. Thank you to our referees, O'Keen, Melanie, and Terry. Great job from you fellas. We'll take a short break now, and we'll be moving on to our next third and fourth playoff game, which will be the Otago girls taking on the Waikato girls. Should be a good one. We'll see you guys soon. Hey, Akuani. <laughs> Here for
from the Tall Ferns. We're out here in Flaxmere Park in Hawke's Bay. We'll just open up this new uh, basketball court for Hoops and Parks. It's really cool to provide the Tamariki with somewhere to go, somewhere to be physically active, play a bit of basketball with their friends. Good asset to the community, especially for those young ones um, who want to get amongst basketball. So yeah, it's really cool to see us open this new facility in this park that is just beautiful in Hawke's Bay. Hello, Pierre Cameron here. Just want to talk a little bit about the, the Hoops in Parks and the Hoops in Schools program. Uh, it's been amazing. The return on investment is priceless. The accessibility for all the kids in the Tamariki to get in here and enjoy themselves, especially especially through these trying times, been amazing. And just to get outside, you know, it's pretty awesome walking outside and seeing this kind of ballpark available. Um, it's great, especially in these times. Uh, Paliti Oli here, Councillor for Flexime Ward, uh, Hastings District Council. I'm um, here to support the initiative today, Hoops and Parks. Very, very amazing result and it's encouraging our people to come and spend time here and especially together with the youth. I encourage other councils to jump on board. Yeah. Kia ora Baare Fiatu, really enjoyed it here at the Flexime Court. Um, and looking forward to play again. Uh, we've been waiting for the courts to open for a while now. Now that they're up, I'm glad that they're here for an activity after school. And yeah. I like that the courts are purple. What I like about the court is that it's different to many other courts in Flexby. I like these courts because they're in a good position from if you want to go to the park or come here. And I like it because it's easy to bounce the ball and take easy shots. My name's Ricky Lee. Um, shout out to everyone that made these courts happen. And yeah, me next.
Hoki mai tātou ki te kemu tua rua o te rangi nei. Welcome back to the second game of the day. We have Te Whare Wānanga o Waikato taking on Te Whare Wānanga o Otago. We'll start off with our team list of the day, starting with the University of Waikato. Number four, Abby Crane. Number eight, Aria Cowley. Straight to Otago. Back to, back to Waikato. Nine, Emily Ellison. Six, Jasmine McClearly. Uh, Eleven, Kayla Manuirirangi. Twenty-two, Lydia Baba. Twenty, Maya Watling. Five, Mayako Taingahue. Number twelve, Siobhan Nuri. Number one, Tiana Tiro. Heading over to the Otago side of things. We have... Otago. Number five, Caitlin O'Connell. Number 12, Faye Fualau, Cyril. Nine, Grace Adams. Eight, Holly McCleary. Uh, ten, Millie Simpson. Eleven, Millie Ford. Four, Olivia O'Neill. Seven, Petra Sparks. Fourteen, Sarah Joy Aruwa. Thirteen, uh, Serena Rokotakala. Six, Tyler Mitchell, the pharmacist. In for a big game here, folks. Two very, very talented teams. Obviously, with the likes of Aria Cowley. Uh, Kayla Manuirirangi, the pharmacist, and Millie Simpson. Those are some of the superstars that I've been keeping my eyes on this tournament. Been very impressive, and uh, it should be a great game as Otago win the tip. Pulling it out here. Otago at the top, number five, Caitlin. O'Donnell pulls it from mid-range. Bang. Bang, bang, bang. Early start for the Otago team. Waikato looking to hit back immediately. Mayako, Tainahue to Maya Watling. Maya Watling. Sorry, that was Rana Peterson to Maya Watling. 
Otago looking to get out on the break early. Kayla Manu Edirangi though, strong, strong rebound. She looks to go to work early, left hander, up and off the glass. She's been doing it all tournament people, one of the best out there. Sorry people, I've just got my, my good friend Adam Singer by my side, popped up here to see what we're doing. Up the mighty Waikato, he says, I agree. Lots of ballers in the Waikato side. And we got Otago versus Waikato. 2-2 two -two right now. Girls looking to get after it. Mayako Taingahue finds Abby Crane. Abby Crane drives left, spins out, finds Rwanda Patterson. Almost finishes, but to no avail. Ball goes out of bounds. We're headed back, Otago. Here we have number five for Otago on the ball. Nails it. Easy. Let's take another look at that. Big time shot. Big time shot. There it is. Step back. Hokai Fakamudi. Bang. Otago bringing the ball up the court now. Looking to get back, looking to score again. Thank you. We're good to go. Foul call on Maya Watling, I believe so. We're carrying on. We're carrying on. Sorry, people, just had to organize some stuff on my table. But we're good. We're good to go again. We got. Number eight for Otago going in the line, Holly McCleary. I might be mistaken here, but I think we might see another sibling matchup. We've got Holly McCleary and Jasmine McCleary. They both went to the same school. One's in Otago, one's in Waikato. Maybe sisters. Keep an eye out for that. Kayla Manuirirangi gets the pass up to Roana Peterson. Peterson. Mayako. Unable to make that fall. Pushing the pace now though. And who else? Who else? Welcome back to Pharmacist. If you don't remember from yesterday's broadcast people, Tyler Mitchell, second year bachelor, bachelor of Pharmacy. So me and Tom Allen dubbed her the nickname, The Pharmacist. Pretty intimidating nickname if you ask me. What do you guys think? As Manu Irirangi. As cool as a cucumber. Cool as you like it from the top. Easy two point mid range. We get going though. Number 10. Fine. One of the McCleary sisters, Holly McCleary. Carrying on here. Manu Irirangi finds Rowana Peterson. Maya Watling finds Abby Crane. Abby Crane stuck in a whole world of trouble right now. Mayako out to Manu Irirangi. Looks low for Rwanda Pet Patterson. Good look, but Millie Simpson was able to get a hand in there. Also yesterday, if you remember, these, um, there's three Millies out on the court in this game, by the way. Two Millies, sorry. That was when they played another team. There was another Millie in the other team. Manu Irirangi gets blocked. And that'll be it for the shot clock. Nice block there. It's a cut off. Manu Edirangi's scoring prowess. Gets the ball out. Millie Simpson driving kick out to Caitlin O'Connell. No good. Caitlin O'Connell has been outstanding. Her shooting has been outstanding as of recent. Um, one of the better shooters that I've seen in the female tournament thus far. Nice little hezzy from Manu Edirangi. She probably wishes she hesitated that pass as well. Out of bounds. We're going the way of Waikato now. Let's have a look. As we come up here, number four, Olivia O'Neill. Gets the screen from Faith. Faith rolling. Olivia O'Neill wants to go herself. Gets her own board. She's back up again. 
But who else is there to provide the medicine? The pharmacist gets the O board. And is the pharmacist going to provide us with three? Not today. Faye though. Faye Fuelo. Cutters on. Faye Fuelo. To Kaylin O'Connell. She's fouled. So where will we head, people? To the Rarangi. Tell Tom Allen about it. As we got subs coming in for a mighty Waikato. We got Lydia Baba coming in. We got Tiana Tiro coming in. Two great players. Lydia Baba was all over the rebounds yesterday. Tiana Tiro has her moments. Great driver. Great at shooting as well. She's good. It's what girls like Aria Cowley, Kayla Manurirangi need around them. Just to be sure. I don't think Aria Cowley is actually playing today. So that is a big loss for the Waikato side. She was one of their um, standout players this tournament. Also, not sure of the reason of why she's not playing today. Um, I don't recall an injury. I don't recall anything else. The pharmacist going from deep. But yeah, Aria Cowley, big loss for the Waikato girls. Abby Crane on the drive, goes left, goes right into the chest of Olivia O'Neill. Caitlin O'Connell. Side out ball, Otago. Close game so far. Three points the difference. As Otago bring it back up. Via Caitlin O'Connell, who finds. Olivia O'Neill. Good hands there by McCleary. Kicked out to who else? But the pharmacist. Providing the medicine for the Otago Wahine. Let's take another look at it. Great drive, Millie Simpson. Corner kick out. Easy as you like it. Cha-ching! Pharmacist. She's going crazy. She was great yesterday. She was our MVP yesterday. Lydia Barber from mid-range. Gets her board though, as I said, on the boards constantly. Abby Crane, Abby Crane says to the pharmacist, anything you can do, I can do just as well. Let's have a look at it again. Lydia Barber gets the board, finds Abby Crane on the outside, knocked down. Otago on the ball now, the pharmacist. The pharmacist. Give her six points in the first quarter already. She's out there for a reason, people. She is very... Very good at basketball. As there's subs coming in, we have Miss Arua coming in. Also, Miss Serena Rokotakala. Pharmacist knocks it down. Crucial free throws. Need all those points. Mayako Tainga, who we're bringing the ball up. Finds McClary on the wing. McClary drives base. Great defense. Great defense by Faye Fuala and Miss Arua. Sarah Joy Arua. Otago will bring the ball up the court. As O'Neill drives low and gets the foul. She will go to where? Dararangi. Back there. Tom's favourite place. Manu Irirangi back in the game. Lydia Baba is out. Ruana Peterson also. Patterson also back in the game. Unable to get the first one on the job for O'Neill, but she's there again. Cannot do so twice. I believe the ball is out of Faye Fualau. So we're going to go back to Waikato region. Manu Irirangi on the ball, bringing it up for Waikato. Looking around, Tiana Tiro to Abby Crane. Abby Crane gets it back for Kayla Manu Irirangi. She's going to go to work. Not long on the shot clock, four seconds left. Three. Ruana Patterson, unable to finish, but Pharmacist is there for the rebound. 
Fai Fualau. Says, Tiana Tiro. You're too little, but the ref says, nah, she isn't. That's a charge. We're going the other way, people. Abu Crane will bring the ball up for Waikato. Tiana Tiro on the ball now. Sarah guarding you. Sarah Arua. Manuiri Rangi, high post. She's bullying. She's got three on her, though. Referee's not happy. She calls a foul. Going side out, ball, Waikato. Manuiri Rangi to inbound it. McCleary gets it off the inbound. Finds Tiana Tiro. Tiana Tiro finds Emily Ellison. Rowana Peterson unable to convert. Faye Fualau. Easy to kick it out. McCleary finds Manuri in the short corner. DC getting away route now, I'm fading. Not today though, Sarah Joy Arua on the break. She's going all the way to the hole. Sarah Joy Arua with the finish, coast to coast. However you like it, brother. Manu Erirangi doing her usual. Hezzy crosses, McCleary. McCleary was a great shooter yesterday as well in the two games that we watched. She was outstanding. O'Neill on the ball now. Looks low. Roko Takala. Roko Takala makes it count. We have Tiana Tiro. Sorry, Emily Ellison bringing the ball up. Rowan Patterson lets it fly from three. Not afraid. As Faye Fualau gets the rebound. Finds Sarah Joy Ariwa up the court. Is it too much? Yes, it is. Only just, though. Good look, a little too strong on the pass. And we move on. McCleary, Jasmine McCleary that is. Kayla Manu, Eddie Rangi now, on the ball. O'Neill guarding her. Looking for a screen from Rowana Peterson maybe, but defers to high post. Kayla Manu, Eddie Rangi, looking to work here. Step back three, Hawkeye Fakaviri. That damn window, man. Someone's got to shut that window ASAP. It's been, it stayed open two days. It's crazy. As we go back the other way. Way off Waikato. Oh, Otago. And here we go. Sarah Joy Arua on the ball. Drives it deep. Unable. Think she was looking for Rukotakala there. Unable to get the ball through. But, so, we head back to Waikato region. Waikato. Kayla Manuerirangi feeds it low. Rwanda Peterson, what a pass. Unlucky in the finish, but guess who's there? Kayla Manuerirangi to clean up the scraps. Finds Jason McCleary. Surveying her options. Manuerirangi, great pass to Allison. Allison unable to get the roll. Tough start for Waikato. I think they are really missing Aria Cowley. Missing that other one-on-one -on -one offensive threat. Should say it like that. She's been very well. Over on the second court, by the way, guys, we do have, I believe, Massey University versus Waikato. I believe. Should be a good game out there. It's 24-23. Not sure for who, but we move on as O'Donnell, O'Connell drops her second free throw. Coming back up, Kayla Manu Irirangi. O'Connell guarding her. Finds Rowana Patterson. Manu Irirangi stumbles out of bounds, passes a bit too long, and it's okay. You're never going to get it right all the time. This is how it is. As we see O'Neill bring the ball up. Rowana Patterson guarding her. 
Let's see what Otago has here. Nice handoff. Nice up down screen. No, nice screen, sorry, my mistake. Sarah Joy Aruwa. Able to get the and one off the offensive board. Those kind of things are invaluable, people. Do not underestimate the power of offensive board. And look, she's gonna get a free three points potentially with 0.5 seconds on the clock. Always crash the board, people. Can she convert her and one attempt? And she can. And there it goes. First half wraps it up. That'll do us. That'll do us for the first period. First half bar. Otago up big 27 10. Waikato. Really missing Aria Cowley. Still not too sure why she's not playing today. But um, they can hang in there. They can hang in there. Otago. Pressure's on early. Tyler Mitchell, the pharmacist, letting it fly early. One three pointer in this first quarter. We'll have to see where we go from there. Been a good, exciting day. This is for the third and fourth, by the way. If you're just joining us, no my hoki mai. Kite nei pao hotanga. We are at AUT in Tamaki Makaro. Ki teraki pai whenua, the North Shore. Great couple days of basketball here. Into our final day. Got the quarterfinals. I've oh, got the third and fourth playoffs. And then the big time finals following this afternoon. Actually, right after this game. Should be good. Basketball New Zealand. If you need to keep up to date with our schedule and results, and everything to do with basketball in here in Aotearoa, please do not be afraid to go to bbnz.co.nz. You'll find everything there. And as you can see, here we are, AUT, in Tamaki Makaura, Ki Te Raki Pai Whenua, Auckland on the North Shore, getting ready to head back into this second quarter, second stanza of the day. Should be a good one. Should be a goodie. About to get back into the action. Girls are taking the court. Waikato doing their last hands in. If you missed it, Tom Allen will be joining me after this game with the finals. So we'll be back to two commentators for you. Getting back into things. Ruana Patterson will be inbounding the ball. Looking for Kayla Manuiri Rangi. Or Maya Kotainga Hue. Either or. She gets it into Kayla Manuiri Rangi. Who immediately looks to puncture the defense. As she finds Abby Crane. She is down. You could argue that is a foul. Not sure what they're calling here. But it is not in favour of Waikato. Good to see Abby Crane up and running. Took a bit of a fall, but she's all good. She's tough. Lots of mana wahine today, playing basketball at a very high level. Sarah Joy Aruwa finds O'Connell. O'Connell handoff back to Sarah Joy Aruwa. Says, get in the weight room, my apple. My apple goes blind. I believe that's Sarah Adams in the number nine jersey for Waikato. And for Otago, Mayako, Tangahue, finds Manu Edirangi, she lets her fly. And she makes it. Hash to ching. She breaks the scoring drop for Waikato here. First three points in a while. Sarah Joy Aruwa on the wing. Gets it up to Petra Sparks. Sarah Joy Aruwa has been doing work recently. She has been everywhere. You see Millie Simpson kick it out. Petra Sparks. She's sparking it up for the Otago Wahine from deep. Good start. 
Foot pitch just sparks. Ebby Crane looks up, finds Rowanna Peterson. Uh, Sarah Joy Aruwa. Been everywhere, defensively, offensively, as she converts her Tahai. Unreal shift from Sarah Joy Aruwa so far. Manu Erirangi, nice cross. Got Adams guarding her. Good kick out, Maya Watling. And we have a foul, I believe so. Maya Watling, full head to the Rarangi. 4 2. Maya Watling also been a very, very impressive player for Waikato this tournament. Been really nice in the short mid range area. Getting the little drop off from the likes of Kayla Manuelirangi, Aria Kauli, Maya Kotaingahue. She's been very, very proficient for the Waikato Wahine. As we continue, Sarah Joy Arua with the ball at the top. Mayako Tainahue absolutely hounding Sarah Joy Arua. She's looking to bring life to this Waikato team. Might be what they need. Bit of defensive intensity. Bring the momentum back their way. And there's a timeout. There's a timeout. Not sure called who by. But I am quite sure it is Otago. As they go to the timeout. Coach from Waikato would say, loving the intensity, Mayako, as she got in the face of Sarah Joy Ariwa. Otago coach, got to be saying to her girls, keep doing what you're doing. They're up 20 now. They're playing good. Lots of impressive defensive plays from the likes of Sarah Joy Ariwa. Lots of good finishes. Good shooting from the pharmacist, Tyler Mitchell, of course. Can't leave the pharmacist out. And good control from the two guards, Caitlin O'Connell and Olivia O'Neill. Looking really solid. Faye Fualau also impressive on the rebounds and on the defensive end. Girls are ready to get back out there now. Waikato looking to bring things back. Make it close. They just need a bit of bit of emergent um, bit of urgency bit of energy and they'll be all good when they get their looks they're on who I'm looking for to fill that void of Aria Kauli being gone is Mayako Tainahue she's been lighting up from deep speaking of lighting it up from deep bang 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 Kayla Manu Erirangi from deep we've seen that scene plenty of times looks like she is starting to heat up here that's her second three this so far so she is looking to cook early. She's going to need to with the loss of Aria Kauli. They get the ball. Maya Watling. Kayla Manu Erirangi. Looking to keep the pressure on here. Same spot. Nice hezzy. Finishes with the right. Manu Erirangi is heating up now. Let's take another look at this. Goes left. Fakes. Crosses over. Takes it to the rim. Right hand. Easy as you like it. As you come back by way of Otago. O'Connell finds Simpson. No good. But she follows her board. And Manu Erirangi secures it though. Manu Erirangi finds Mayako Tainahue. He gets blocked. Big time block by Holly McCleary. Euro step by Millie Simpson. Almost drops. Love to see the physicality between Millie Simpson and Kayla Manu Erirangi. Great stuff to see as we have the pharmacist coming in with an Olivia O'Neill coming out as Petra Sparks and Grace Adams. Kayangahue bringing the ball up the court. She finds Abby Crane. Abby Crane drives left. Spins around, but I've been a bit of trouble. Maya Watling finds Manu Erirangi. Why would you not? She's scorching hot right now. Great pass. Ooh. If only. If only. We'll take another look at it. Just slips out of the reach of Maya Watling. But great look. Hope to see more of that. Let's get Maya Watling involved. 
as Otago on the ball. And O'Connell almost gets the and one to drop. She'll go to the line for two. Where will she go? Tom's favourite place. And we're back. We're back, we're going. As you see here. O'Neill. O'Connell, sorry. Caitlin O'Connell. Clinic. Caitlin O'Connell finds O'Neill. These are the kind of errors Waikato cannot afford to have. Obviously, like I've said, with the, and it happens again. O'Connell there to tidy up the mess, but she will go to the Rarangi for two. But see, these are the little things that Waikato cannot afford to have. Like I said, with the loss of Aria Cowley, they can't afford to have these little mistakes. Once these little mistakes start to pile up, points start to pile on, like we're seeing for Otago right now. They brought it back to a 14 point game at one point, but if Caitlin O'Connell makes this, it'll be back to a 20 point game, unfortunately. So, Waikato need to limit turnovers. Otago need to keep doing exactly what they're doing. There's no problems there for um, Otago. As Manu Edirangi brings it up the court, Lydia Barber running the middle. Manu Edirangi drives in, locks out, no go. Gets the ball up. Simpson. Easy finish. Easy as you like it. Bringing the ball up. Tiana Tiro at the top. McCleary. Jasmine McCleary at top. Manu Edirangi with the pharmacist glue to her. Gets through. Floats it up. No good. But gets her own board. Great hustle from Manu Edirangi. Pulls up from mid range. Unlucky, can't get it to go. O'Neill bringing the ball up. Finds the pharmacist, but Manu Edirangi is there to interrupt the play. But we will stay down this end. Really good effort um, on both sides of the ball from Manu Edirangi this game. She's obviously had to step up in the absence of Aria Cowley. But yeah, why cut to it? Like I said, limit the mistakes and keep it moving. As we have number eight, Holly McCleary, knocking it down. Holly McCleary has been very, very, very good as well. We have Rwanda Peterson looking to go low to Lydia Baba. Can't get it through, tries to go self. Unable to. Otago out on the break. Pharmacist just misses. Just misses. Is O'Neill skips through. Easy two pointer. As easy as you like it. Go back, wake up away. And Tiana Tiro finds Lydia Barber for three. It might be the first three I've seen her shoot so far. She's back, we're back. Otago on the ball. O'Neill swings it out. Millie Simpson through the legs. Nice move. Kicks it out. O'Neill. No go. We have a foul here on the pharmacist. Pharmacist meant to be helping people. Not fouling people. Shout out to the pharmacist. Favourite nickname. And we move on. Lydia Barber looking at inbound the ball. Finds Amy Crane. Abby Crane, sorry. And we carry on. Tiana Tiro up the top on the wing. Look for a screen from McCleary. Gets it low. Great look to Tiana Tiro. Unable to convert though. They need those ones. They need those easy buckets to do Waikato. As this balloon, this lead balloons out a little bit further. Pharmacist kicks it out. 
McCleary. Easy as you like it. Holly McCleary. Just a young floater in front of the room. Here we go. Sister trying to come back and do the same. Unable to get fouled. She will go to the Rarangi for shotters. So, should be interesting to see what happens here. Will she make it? Will she miss it? She's been a good shooter all tournament long. As you can see there, makes the first. Will she convert on the second? Let's find out. Unlucky on that one. Faith Wallau gets the board. Finds her, te her teammate at Millie Ford. Millie Ford finds Millie Simpson. Lots of Millies. Finds Faye. Faye, good D from Lydia Baba. Lydia Baba able to stop the run. Tyler Mitchell, though. Who else? Who else, people? Pharmacist providing the medicine for Otago every time. She has the pharmacist for a reason, folks. Tiana Tiro finds Lydia Barber. There's still a bit of a player spotlight on Lydia Barber. The alumni of Stratford High. Her strengths are rebounds. She is studying Bachelor of Education in Primary. It is her first year. Her career goal after this study will be a primary school teacher. So awesome. Jumping into the same field as myself. The education system should be good. Should be good. It's a good profession. It's for the future. For the kids. For the Tamariki Rangatahi. Tamariki Mokopuna. Maya Watling gets, needs to get it up quick. Does do so. But it's a shot clock violation. Did not touch the rim. So we'll go again. Way back way of Otago. Millie Simpson to bring it up the court. Inbounded by the pharmacist. Tyler Mitchell. Tyler Mitchell getting the screen from Fate. Fall out. Kicks it out. Millie Ford. No good. Rwanda Patterson. Able to get the board. Finds Abby Crane. Who pushes the pace to Tiana Tiro. Tiana finds Jasmine. Stolen. Pharmacist. Tiana Tiro with the right hand on the left side. Very good finish from Tiana Tiro. These are the shots these Waikato girls need. They need to be able to make the easy shots. While well, Otago keeps pouring on the easy points, Waikato need to take the opportunities when they can to stay in this game. Rana Patterson looking to inspire this Waikato team in this time of need. As McCleary, Holly McCleary, just gets stripped by Roko Takala. And it's just a Tahai fest over here. Oi, we have a little bump there. It's just an accident though. Just a small collision. That's what happens in basketball. Sometimes you collide. And that's what it is. All good love between both players. That's why we love the game though, don't we? It's physical, but it's not meant to be a physical sport. It's good, is it not? How good is basketball, people? Very good. McCleary to the line. Jasmine McCleary, that is. I need to confirm if they're sisters. I see you'd assume so. I mean, they both went to the same school. Exactly the same last name. What else would that be? Cousins, potentially. Who knows? Tyler Mitchell there. Finds Millie Simpson. Millie Simpson. Fakes. A lot of half spin fakes today. Tyler. Mitchell. Pharmacy. The pharmacist. She goes to work on a three-point line, man. She can knock them down. Having a very good game herself. I think it's a second or third three so far. Maya Watling on the ball. Gets it to Jasmine McCleary. Who finds Tiana Tiro. She's in a world of trouble there. Double team. She's not the biggest skill, but she does have a lot of money. And that'll do it for us for the Haurua Tuatahi o tēnei ke mu. Close one here. Not very, actually. Sorry, my mistake. Otago lead 52 to Waikato's 23. We'll take a quick short break and we'll see you shortly. Hey, Akwani.
2021, New Zealand University is ranked among the top 1% of universities in the world and in the top 40 universities under 50 years of age. Auckland University of Technology, New Zealand's leading modern university. Home to world-class academics, called on for their research expertise here and all over the world, making AUT the New Zealand leader in global research impact. Connected to an extraordinary range of organisations worldwide. Focused on a rapidly changing future where creativity, curiosity and collaboration will only become more vital. We inspire, nurture and find the greatness in every single one of our students. We are AUT, New Zealand's leading modern university. No mai, hoki mai, ki te haurua, tuarua, o tēnei kemu. Welcome back to the second half of this game. We are here at AUT. Tamaki makaurau ki te raki pau whenua, Auckland's North Shore, with the National Tertiary Championship. We're here, Waikato, looking to mount a comeback here. Otago, back out though, straight into it. No mucking about, and we get a foul. Mayako Nahue. 
fouls. Number 11 for Otago. Millie Ford. Double Millie's on this Wyke, on this Otago team. Millie Simpson, Millie Ford. Let's go into a bit of a player profile. Millie Ford. The alumni of Craighead Diocesan College. She is studying a Bachelor of Commerce and she is in her second year. Here we go. O'Connell. Just short. It's that damn window, man. Been saying it every time an air ball happens. Someone's got to shut it. As you have Kayla Manuerirangi driving to her left, unable to get the finish. Flicks it up. Caitlin O'Connell on the move. Finds Sarah Joy Aruwa. Gets it out to Rokotakala. Unable to finish. Abby Crane on the rebound. Pushing it up the left wing. Looking to get busy here. Swings it around. Manuerirangi. Maite Kokona from the corner. Mayako, Taingahue, Takahuri. Oh, very close. She gets the foul though. And she will hide it. She will go to the line. For two. Let's find out if she will make these runs. Also, sorry people, was unable to have a post-game interview last game and will not be able to have one this game due to it being me only here. But they will be back, do not fear, for the both of the finals. So here we go. Olivia O'Neill pushing the pace early. Sarah Joy Aruwa in the corner finds O'Connell open for three. Cha-ching! O'Connell, one of the most impressive players in this Otago unit. She's been very good in all of her games thus far. O'Neill guarding Abby Crane. Abby Crane finds Maya Watling. Maya Watling looking for Mayako Tainahue. Gets to her. Tainahue goes for the reverse on the right side. Roko Takala finds number 11. Millie Ford. Out of bounds though. We're heading back to Waikato region. Fun facts. The Iwis of both of these areas. Waikato is Tainui area. Otago, that I believe is Kaitahu area. And there we go again. O'Neill has been relentless on those Tahai today. Doesn't matter where, up in the front court, up in the back court, she's been on. So has that lady right there, Sarah Joy Aruwa. Back in there, both sides of the ball for her as well. Defense has been immaculate. Lots of Tahais, lots of tips. Been outstanding. Maya Watling on the ball finds Mayako Taingahue, who carries on her hot shooting stroke from yesterday. One of the one of my favourite players to watch this tournament, Mayako Taingahue, been really, really impressive. As we have O'Neill doubled up by Abby Crane and Taingahue. Sarah Joy Arua potentially a travel there. Finds O'Connell for three. Can't replicate what she did earlier. Roko Takala though, working down low and she gets the reward. Serena Roko Takala, absolutely working down low. Here we have Maya Watling finding Abby Crane. She's going to let it fly, not afraid of it. Rwanda Patterson gets the rebound and three finds. Abby Crane for the easy two. Waikato scoring a bit easier now. Still down by 30, but you know what we say, people. Play to the final whistle. You never know what could happen. You know? Waikato could get hot. They could hit a couple threes. Next thing you know, it's a 20-point game. After that, had a couple more. 10-point game. After that, had a couple more. Abby Crane, speaking of three, speaking of our eyes. Holy moly. Olivia O'Neill says, Cole, oh, get out of it. To Abby Crane. This is the most impressive thing about this Otago lineup, regardless of the score line. They keep going. They are not going to give it to you easily, even if they're up by 30. Manu Erirangi, though, from long range, unable to get it to drop. O'Neill loves pushing the pace on the break, finds her partner in crime, O'Connell. Back to her other partner in crime, unable to get the roll this time. But we're going back the way of Waikato, number 12, Siobhan Nudi. 
has came in, get a bit of a player spotlight on this on this wahine. The alumni of St. Peter's College in Cambridge. She is studying a PhD in ecology and biodiversity. So shout out, very, very smart lady. And her post-career goal for university. Be a voice for iwi, whānau and hapu on kaitiakitanga at an operational and governance level. Amazing, amazing goals from Siobhan Nidhi. Very, very inspiring stuff. Fun fact about her, she loves diving. Got to bring us some muscles, some kūtai, bring us some tio, some kina, all of the above. All of the above. Speaking of, here goes Siobhan Nuri. Passes it out to Kayla Manurirangi. Looks for the cutting, Tian Matsiro. Unable to get it to her. O'Connell, on the break, gets it to Sarah Joy Arua. Finds number seven, Petra Sparks. Always bringing a spark off the bench. Let's crack on into this game. Manu Erirangi from the mid-range. Unable to get it to go. I think we might be staying down here in Waikato area. We are. But we have a timeout before anything else. Waikato will take a timeout here. Some of the girls down. Tell them. Don't focus on the score so much, ladies. We're going to go out there and have a bit of fun. Keep trying, because like I said earlier, you really do never know what could happen. Otago could go on a really cold streak and Waikato could go on a hot streak. Next thing you know, 10 point game. 10 point game is very, very comebackable. Over on the other court, 56-50, Massey versus Waikato. We'll tell you who's winning in a second. It is Massey. It is Massey who is winning currently. Good effort from the boys and Massey. As we shout out to our referees, Daniel Coog. <laughs> Couple of our referees. You know how we always say, be nice to your refs. They're people as well. They get stuff wrong. They're ready to get underway. Girls are ready to get underway. Waikato, cheering it up. Let's get back into business. We've made it to the last half of the third quarter. Five minutes left in this one. Then we move on to the Haurua Whakamitina, the last quarter of this third or fourth player. Manu Erirangi going to work. Thought she got fouled. Unable to get the call though. O'Connell back up the other end. Caitlin O'Connell. Taka Huri Huri. Unable to get the roll. As we have, Abby Crane. Getting up there, Manu Erirangi, mai te kukona. Bang! Big time shot from Kayla Manu Erirangi. Trying to close that gap, trying to get her team back into this game. O'Connell finds Sarah Joy Arua, up strong. Unable to get it to roll though. Tiana Tiro pushing the pace a little bit. Finds Abby Crane, Abby Crane back to Tiana Tiro. Tiana Tiro back in the lane, unable to get the roll though. Sarah Joy Arua. They see that leak out. They see the leak out. Surely she gets it up. Petra Sparks. Way to run out. Way to find her as well. Good outlet pass. And we move on. We keep it going. Down at Tiro to Abby Crane. Abby Crane surveying her options. Finds the rolling. McCleary. Jasmine McCleary that is unable to get it to go. Sarah Joy Arua. Once again leak out runners. And they finish it off via... Holly McCleary, the sister of Jasmine McCleary, I assume. Two teams, lots of subs. Waikato, looking a bit fatigued here. I don't blame them. Otago is playing a very, very high-paced brand of basketball, running a lot, getting out on transition. It's pretty tough. Keep in mind, this way you never been playing basketball as Tiana Tiro. Makes a bucket. These girls, these waiting net. Have been playing basketball for the last three days. As you see a three-pointer from Waikato. Potentially a foul underneath the hoop. No call there though. We're gonna keep it moving. Maybe it is. Yes, it is a foul. My mistake. We have another look. Yeah, there it is. Sarah Joy Arua. Fouling. Tiana Tiro, I believe. 
and we move it on. Mayako Tainahue bringing the ball up. Almost loses it there by the hands of Millie Simpson. Abby Crane on the ball. Looking, looking for teammates. Maya Watling looks for a great cut from Siobhan Nuri. Unable to get the layup going, but it's all right. They move. Tiana Tiro gets the tahai. She's back in the game. We're looking to wrap it up as the pharmacist, Tyler Mitchell. Big score line right now for Otago. Looking to balloon that lead out a little bit more. Waikato looking to cut it down to a more respectable number. Faith Fualau with the screen. Tyler Mitchell, who else? Who else, ladies and gentlemen? The pharmacist has been red hot from the three-point line. All tournament long. How does she do it? I don't know. She's a pharmacist. That's how. Mayako Tainahue gets it up to Tiana Tiro. Looking for Maya Watling. Maya Watling up the top. Looking around. Looks for the cutting Siobhan. That backdoor could have been on for Siobhan Nuri quite a lot recently. It's almost come off a couple of times. But uh, they're going to have to keep going. Keep that move going. They will see the fruits of it eventually. Faye Fualau thought she was getting the ball. Unfortunately not. Millie Simpson working from the top of the key. Gets it out. Pitcher Sparks going back to Millie Simpson. Finds herself in the corner. Looking for a rolling. Fualau unable to get the pass through. Good defense from the Waikato Wahine. I believe we have another time out going the way of Otago. So we'll take a little, girls will take a little break here. Coming to the closing parts of this Hofa Tuatoru. Then we have the Hofa Whakamutunga, the last quarter. Coming up after this, then we're going straight into our finals games, I believe. Sorry, my mistake. I've made a mistake on the names of the referees. So you have Brittany Young on the left there, Melanie O'Connor on the right, and Sam McFadden in the middle there. So shout out to those three doing an amazing job today on this game and all the games that they've refed so far during this tournament. Like we always say, be kind to your refs, people. They're people as well. They make mistakes. They're not going to get it right every time. You just got to suck it up and move on. So shout out to the refs. Shout out to these girls playing hard. About to get back into the action. Not too long to go. And then we arrive at our finals games. Otago with a commanding lead right now. It'll be a tough one for Waikato to, to get back into this game, but nothing is impossible. Ruana Patterson inbounding for the Waikato Wahine. Mayako Tai Ngahue. Moving up the court, intense defense by Millie Simpson. Switched on as Faye Fualau, who ball is now with Ruana Patterson. We have a foul call there on number nine of Otago, Grace Adams. Just reaching in over the top there. Bit of ill discipline, but it just shows a bit of competitiveness from this Otago side, regardless of the score. Look at how much they're up. And they're still cracking on very well. Mayako looking to carry on a hot shooting stroke. I believe that is out of bounds, people. Touch the top of the frame of the hoop. No good. No good. Otago will look to bring it up. 1 minute 35 left in this quarter here. 70 to 34. Otago taking a commanding lead over Waikato. Uh oh. The pharmacist. Wow. Number. Four for the pharmacist, Tyler Mitchell. Not afraid to shoot the three. We see it again. Pops out, left wing. Easy knockdown for the pharmacist, Tyler Mitchell. We come back down here, and she's getting a rebound. Finds Millie Simpson. Intensity by Mayako Tainahue. Looking to work here as Millie Simpson in the key, but great D. Intensity from Mayako Tainahue. She has been, like I said, one of the outstanding players for this Waikato Wahine team. Very, very good has she been. Great shooter. Good defender as you can see there. 
as we look to carry on. Ruana Patterson on the wing. Maya Watling battling down low with Faith Fualau. Abby Crane out to Maya Watling for three. Just in and out. Not being very kind, the rim is today. I will be honest. But we're back. Millie Simpson getting the screen by Faith Fualau. Fualau looking to roll. Unable. Ball falls though to Petra. Sparks. Petra Sparks from deep people. Petra Sparks also another great bench piece for this Otago side. Mayako Tainahue just short on the mid range pull up. Like I said, it just appears to be this window gets left open often. Air balls, man. No good people. However, we move on. We have Millie Simpson, top of the key, finds the pharmacist, gets it low. Five seconds, four seconds left on the clock. And they get a three second call in the key. So we're going back Waikato's way, four seconds. They will get the last shot up via Mayako Tainahue from half court. Unfortunate, and that'll do it. Kwa Oti te hau fa tuatoru. Kakokiri tonu ki te hau fa. Hau fa tua fa. Third quarter is finished. We'll carry on to the fourth quarter to finish this third and fourth. Third and, fi or third and fourth playoff game. Otago up massive 40 point, 42 point lead. My mistake over the Waikato team. Waikato really missing that spark plug in Aria Cowley. She was outstanding for them in the games we watched yesterday. So it's a big, it's a big loss. But credit to all the girls who have filled that void for them, filled the void as much as they could. Obviously, it always sucks being down a player, regardless of who it is. So they'll be looking to carry on finish out this tournament and then go enjoy yourselves go enjoy your mad mondays girls should be a good one referees taking a nice break why cuts of girls huddling up talking about what, how they're going to go into this last quarter should be good Girls, get ready. 30 seconds left. When I get it moving. Just about to get underway, people. Once again, if you've just joined us, we are here at AUT in Tamaki Makaura, Kitera Kipai Fenua in Auckland's North Shore for the National Tertiary Championship. It's been a great tournament so far, people. Has not let anyone down. Lots of exciting results. And we're back into the action. Let's carry on this broadcast, people. As Abby Crane looks to get us off to a rearing start with a triple. Abby Crane, once again, another good, valuable piece for this Waikato women's team. Been really impressive has Abby Crane. Filling in where she can, when she gets her looks, she goes, you know? And the answer is right back via Holly McCleary. Also another outstanding player this tournament for Otago. Abby Crane moves it along. Mayako Tainahue can't get it to fall. Bounces out and we're heading down south, Kite Tonga to the Otago side of things. Here we are. As we said, those signs have been getting a little big beating. Shout out to our boy from BBNZ fixing up the signs over there. As we have Millie Simpson inbounding the ball. Millie Simpson, the local on the North Shore, um, schooled at Carmel College, studying medicine, and she's in her fourth year. Shout out to you, Millie Simpson. Keep doing what you're doing. As she drives here and gets the foul, it will be baseline, staying south and staying in Otago area. 
Interested to see the set from Otago here on this out of bounds baseline play. Very interested to see what they do. We have Olivia O'Neill inbounding the ball for the for the Southern woman. As Millie Simpson cuts to the hoop. But we have Holly McCleary spinning. Takahuri Huri. Can't get it to drop. Tiana Tiro gets the rebound. Finds Abby Crane running out on the right wing. Who finds Roana Peterson? Moving well. Maya Kotai Ngahue up the top. Spinning again. Back out to Roana Peterson. Not afraid to shoot the free that one. Glad to see that she can mix it up. Go inside and shoot from the outside. O'Connell back out to the pharmacist. Tyler Mitchell. Holly McCleary. Bang, bang, bang. Bit of a friendly embrace by Tiana Tiro and Holly McCleary there. Smiles all around, that's the best thing about this tournament, people. Lots of mini minis, lots of katakatas. Just basketballers enjoying themselves. Otago, though, out to a massive lead now, just about 50 points. But we have a ready here, a travel. So we're going back up north to Waikato area, Waikato Paini. And we're here. Roana Patterson will be the inbounder, looking for Kayla Manuidi running here. Let's see how they go from here. Do Waikato. Manuidi Rangi gets it to Maya Watling, backdoor cut. Otago clogging the lane nicely though. Looks for the kick out to Roana Patterson. Roana drives middle, finds Abby Crane, but unable to hang on to the ball. So we're going to go back down south to Otago region. <laughs> Olivia O'Neill on the ball for Otago, bringing it up, up the top. Looking around, finds the pharmacist, Tyler Mitchell. Great D from Kayla Manuini down here, by the way. Olivia O'Neill driving, gets the foul, she'll be at the line for two. Olivia O'Neill, let's get a bit of a player spotlight on her, the alumni of St. Hilda's Collegiate. Um, she is studying a Bachelor of Physiotherapy in her third year. Her career goal post-university is balance work as a physiotherapist either in a hospital or private practice and basketball commitments. So she wants, you know, a good work-life balance. Obviously basketball is still a big part of your life. So she wants to enjoy it. Fun fact about her as well, multi-sport athlete here. She played touch for various NZ teams, including the Touch Blacks Nationals women's team. So yes, definitely a touch, uh, definitely a multi-sport athlete. She does move a bit like a touch player out on the field, uh, out on the court. Um, so shout out to her, representative at the highest level as well. Tall Ferns team. Not the Tall Ferns, Touch Blacks. I'm thinking too much basketball, people. Been a lot of commentary. We carry on through Abby Crane. Looks low. Hands are in there though by Holly McCleary. Caitlin O'Connell takes it all the way. Unable to get it to drop, I guess he's there, people. The pharmacist providing the medicine for her team. Tiana Tiro on the leak out. Can she get it to go? Yes, she can. Reverse. She doesn't like finishing on her last left hand, I've noticed, Tiana Tiro. Only likes going reverse with her right hand. Hey, I mean, whatever floats your boat, Tiana. If it works for you, it works for everyone. O'Connell finds Holly McCleary. Been a good shooter this game actually as well, Holly McCleary, a couple of three-pointers for her. Kayla Manuelirangi looks to get it up to Abby Crane, who goes up with her right hand. Unable to get it to fall, but she gets the foul. So she will go to the Rarangi Futsu. Good strong drive by Abby Crane there. Looking to secure some more points for her team. Trying to chop this lead down to something a bit more respectable. Full credit to Otago though, they've been outstanding today, defensively, offensively, been really well. Waikato obviously, like I've said many a times in this broadcast, missing Aria Cowley. One of the biggest pieces of that team. Um, but no, shout out to all the girls who have held their own, done well as well. 
Manu Edirangi comes down with the rebound, the offensive rebound. Looks to work here, nice little hezzy. Unable to get the roll there. Ball falls way of Grace Adams. She's pushing the pace. Sarah Joy Aruwa on her left. Tries to get it to her. Misses it. Out off Waikato though. So we're staying down south. Inbound will go via Grace Adams. Referee there. Sorting everything out. And then we'll get Kraken into this inbound play. Not sure what's happening, people. I think it is clock issues. We have a, had a couple of clock issues around this way, so apologies for that. But uh, I think we're just about ready to get into things. Just about. We'll have to see. Yeah, we're on. We're underway. Petra Sparks up top. Stolen away by Siobhan Nudi. Kayla Manuidirangi. Taking it up. She just took us to Europe, people. Euro step, easy finish on the left hand side. Roko Takala finds Petra Sparks, who finds Atahai by way of Jasmine McCleary. Jasmine McCleary to Maya Wiling. Maya Wiling finds Manu Hidangi. Crosses over to her left, pulls up, elbow jumper, no good. Almost gets her own rebound, but Grace Adams says no thanks. Coming up the court, Millie Ford finds. Petra Sparks, Petra Sparks finds Roko Takala. Roko Takala gets Tahoe by Jasmine McCleary. She's been great on the defensive end tonight, Jasmine McCleary. Surveying her options, finds Maya Watling. Maya Watling to Manu Irirangi. Looking to work here, step back. Hawkeye Fuka Moody. As smooth as you like it. One of the smoothest players all tournament long is Kayla Manu Irirangi. Obviously that college experience over there helps with her style of play, being able to pull off these fancy dribble moves, beautiful hesitations, and just very clean from in all facets of the game offensively. As you have Roko Takala, Maiterara Gitoru, unable to convert. Abby Crane secures the board. Four minutes left in this one, Ete Fano. We're gonna keep cracking on. Manu Edirangi from three, unable to do so. As we carry on here. Maya Watling to Manu Edirangi. Manu Edirangi gets it to Siobhan Nudi. Who gets through? Nice little finish by Siobhan Nudi. Right there, we'll take another look at it. Look, splits through two defenders. Up there, Ringa Maui. Left handed finish, good stuff. Right down this end, Petra Sparks. Easy hook shot for her. And we're going to keep going here. Abby Crane coming, driving right. Looks to spin back to the middle. Nice little move. Beautiful move by Abby Crane. Little Taka Hoodie Hoodie. Beautiful stuff by Abby Crane. Like I said earlier, one of the one of the shining lights for Waikato. She's been really good. As the ball comes to Sarah Joy Aruwa. And I believe that was Roko Takala who made that. As we're back down here, Kayla Manu Irirangi. Surveying her options once again, stepping back. Nice pass to Siobhan Nudi. Unable to get it to go. Abby Crane, though, is. Abby Crane is. She's really come alive this fourth quarter. Oh, although, other what? Although the score doesn't matter. Girls still having fun. 38 point game. Otago looking to run away off this one, as they should. The Scoreline is quite big. Sarah Joy Aruwa looks inside. For Millie Ford, unable to get the ball to her. As we have Jasmine McCleary pulling up, driving through, unable to get it go. Uh, Serena Rokotakala to Grace Adams, back to Serena, unable to get it go. Stolen away, Tahoe. Gayla Manuini Rangi, driving in. No looker to Jasmine McCleary. She can't finish it off. She goes back on the second time. Second time. Sorry, people, my voice just cracked. Happens to the best of us. Bye back. We're all good. We're here. We're here, people. Every crane to inbound the ball from the right hand side of the court. Finds Jasmine McCleary. Jasmine McCleary surveying. Finds Mayako. Tying. Ah, Stop it. 
been one of the best wahine shooters this tournament. Oh, yeah. Yes, easy. Number five, Mayako Ta Tainahue. One of the best performers, best shooters in this Wahine tournament. We have number 14, Sarah Joy Aruwa at the line. Makes the first. Game back for a second. Puts it up. Good to go. Two from two from Sarah Joy Aruwa, number 14. As number five, Maya Kotainga, who brings the ball up the court. Number 11, Kayla Manuerirangi. Mai Te Rarangi, Toru, bang, bang, bang. Very impressive showing out from Kayla Manuerirangi this game. Number nine, Grace Adams, up the middle. Hand in there by Jasmine McCleary, falls to Sarah Joy Aruwa. Looking to muscle her way in, unable to though. Kayla Manuerirangi, with the ball, bringing it up the court. Surveying everything, looks to go to work again. And she will get the foul. She'll go to the Larangi for two. Number 11, Kayla Manueli Rangi, as I said earlier, one of the more impressive players of this tournament. Over on the other court, people, we got 78 79 game. I believe Waikato is up now against Messi. Manueli Rangi. Number 11 converts on the first one. Going back for a second one. Let's see what she could do here. She makes it easy as you like, people. She's been doing it all tournament. One of the smoothest shots. Petra Sparks bringing it up the court. Finds Olivia O'Neill. Gets it back to Sparks. Back to Sarah Joy Ariwa. Millie Ford, number 11. Finds Olivia O'Neill, number four. Grace Adams, number nine. Unlucky. Number 11, number seven, pitcher Sparks. Lots of physicality to finish out this game. Lots of physicality. Only a minute left, people. And then we're heading straight into our finals, which should be absolutely, absolutely amazing games. Heaps of talent in both finals for the Tane and the Wahine should be really good to watch Victoria obviously they want to get it done in both competitions the Wahine and the Tane but Auckland and AUT might have a word to say about that we'll have to find out eh putting up a three years number 11 Kayla Manuerirangi once again lots of physicality down this end there's only a minute left ladies there's only a minute left Big time scoreline though, 91-60. Otago girls have put on a clinic tonight. Credit to the Waikato girls, obviously doing it without Aria, Kauli. But they move, they move on. Here we have, we're going up the end. I believe someone is heading to the Rarangi for shots. Should be an interesting end to this game. Lots of physicality. Petra Sparks can't convert her first one. Looking for a second one here is Petra Sparks. And she makes it. Jasmine McCleary, number six, inbounded to number five, Maya Kotai Nahue. Number six, Jasmine McCleary looks inside for Abby Crane. Abby Crane. She's got a nice little post move. She's got a nice little post game, Abby Crane does. Even though she's little. She got some moves down there. Nice little touch around the room. Couple spins in her. Good defense on Jasmine McCleary. Millie Ford though. Nice little spin move there. Number five. Maya Kotai Nahue out to Manu Irirangi. The up fake says, see ya. Can't convert though. Bucket. Jasmine McCleary. 28 seconds left. Coming to the business end of this game. Very close to being done, you people. Grace Adams finds Sarah Joy Aruwa. Aruwa will hold it until the end of the shot clock. I assume so. As Olivia O'Neill shoots it right with about three seconds left. Six seconds to go. Otago will hold it out here. Congratulations to the Otago women's 
team placing third at the tertiary national tertiary championship. Big Mihiatu, Ki Te Kapa or Waikato. Really good effort, ladies. Fought to the end. Fourth place. Hey, that's better than fifth, that's better than sixth. So be happy with yourself, girls. Put in a hell of an effort. Heaps of talent on show. We're going to take a break now. Just about to get into our finals for our wahine. So we'll take a break here. And we'll be right back for some more action. Hey, aku ane. One of our biggest problems we have in New Zealand is our lack of facilities, uh, the lack of ability for kids to be able to just go in and shoot hoops. With our hoops in schools, hoops in parks project it enables kids to be able to get out there and just have a go, you know, just be able to shoot hoops and, and have no boundaries, just go out there, have some fun. Um, by not being able to get inside to a lot of facilities, this solves a lot of our problems. We're seeing the hoops that we've already installed just be so well utilised every time you drive past the school that's got these hoops in it, there's always kids using them. We know it's going to increase participation in our sport, which is a great thing. Yeah, hoops in schools means to me just a lot of opportunity that uh, when I look back and reflect on my experience at home in Portland, Whangarei, and in the schools, and there wasn't a lot of hoops around, um, but there was the odd hoop, and we'd always meet there, all the uh, the locals, and um, we'd have a ball, have fun, and that was a game for all athletes that played all different sports. It's fantastic to see the ongoing growth of the Hoops and Schools program across the country uh, as we continue to go into different regions. Seeing Tamariki and, and Rangatahi continuing to have fun through better accessibility is just priceless. Uh, and the true value for us is seeing the positive impact it's having across communities here in New Zealand. It's been absolutely fantastic. Um, we've been able to put 24 hoops into 12 schools right across the province. They were installed a month or so ago and already we've seen the impact that it's had with kids getting out in there and playing them outside of school hours and the weekends, it's really had a huge impact on, on the game. It is good to get into the community today and um, see the kids just having fun and being able to, you know, have access to these amazing hoops that have been put into new communities because um, a lot of schools don't have access to these things. Now, looking at this um, initiative of putting a lot more hoops in, in, in schools is amazing. Uh, I've been to three or four schools today and just seeing the, um, the faces of this young tamariki has been awesome. And uh, you know, it makes you think about where we're headed and where we've been and you know, it brings a smile to my face too.
Nau mai, hoki mai, ki te kemu, fitting atoa, mō ngā wahine. Welcome back to the finals for the women's grade. Victoria University taking on AUT, set to be a good one. We're going to head to our, we are at AUT in Tamaki Makaurau on Te Raki Pai Whenua in Auckland North Shore. We're here, joined with myself, Key Scruchins, and my co-host, Tom Allen. Hey, 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 I'm excited to be back with you he's all. He's back, he's back. Missed out, missed out this morning with Keith taking over. I'm sure that was enjoyable for everyone there. Hey, we're really excited to be here for the finals of the women's grade. It's going to be followed by the finals of the men's grade today. As you see on court, we have Team Victoria warming up. Team Victoria, of course, composed of Emelina Motu, Freya Newton, Isabella Tate-Jones, Jacinda Beckley, Jenna Steenhouse, Katarina Tapuni, Rose McClellan, Soraya Panese, Taya Masoner, and Tiarani Tapuni. Very exciting game. They're going to be matched up with the team we are yet to see, and we're excited about AUT. We have number 20, Alicia Schuster. Number 18, Asia Anderson. Number 6, Sienna Taikato. 12, Lou Murphy, 10, Madeline Sherman, 15, Mele Latu, 17, Rachel Pike, 19, Shania Marsh, 16, Summer Jean Motu Fowa, number 4, Tabitha Layson, number 21, Trinity Paiu. That's our AUT team for today. This should be an absolute ripper of a game. What are your thoughts so far, Tom? Look, for both teams to have made it this far, they've got to be good. So we're excited for this matchup here. Last night, of course, if you had joined us, you would have seen a dominant performance from Victoria over Team Waikato in that semi-final one. So, for me, I mean, the favourites probably going into this with the big names of Beckley, etc. and Victoria probably are the favourites coming in. However, I'm excited to see AUT. AUT, obviously, the home team here. Yeah. So they're going to have big crowd support as we are on the campus of AUT here on the North Shore. We have the referees for today. Danielle Cooge, Nick Choi, and Michaela Sharp. Shout out to our referees. Always be nice to your refs. Taking a look into AUT's huddle. Girls look locked in and ready. Looking ready to go. So, Keith, predictions. It's early days. What are you thinking for this one? It's early days, but it's pretty hard to go past Jacinta Beckley and Freya Newton. My early pick. Uh, there's some ballers in AUT, but my early pick has to go with Victoria. All right. I mean, Victoria here doing well with both women's and men's teams in the final. Yeah. After this game, we will be seeing... Team Victoria in the men's grade versus Team Auckland, which is going to be an exciting matchup too. So Victoria wanting to snatch the double today. That's the goal. That's the goal for Victoria. And um, it'll be tough for the men though. Auckland had an absolute performance last night. Lots of threes. Ruben Fitzgerald, Raymar Cruz, Daniel Powell, all going crazy. Look, as we get ready for this game, Looking back at the Team Victoria, who we watched last night, some of the viewers may not have seen that game. Who are the key players to watch out for, Keith? So for our Victoria team, our women's team, obviously Jacinta Beckley, the reigning champion of the Toihi League, otherwise known as the women's equivalent to the NZNBL. Um, also with the likes of Freya Newton, a top-tier scorer, good playmaker. And they have a bunch of other players who are ready to step up when needed to be. The Tepuni sisters are great. A um, couple of others that are really, really good. All right. Also, looking at this AUT team, Keith, what do you know about these girls? I know a couple of these girls, in particular, Asia Anderson and Lou Murphy. Both ballers, both ball with them quite consistently. And they've got talent. They're... they're they're good at scoring. They're good on defense, especially Asia Anderson. She's very tough on both sides of the ball. I'll be excited to see how she goes today. She might be my player to watch out of AUT. All right, excited to see her on the court today. AUT looking like a tight unit. 
A lot of good team talk going on there. They're looking motivated as both teams come back to their benches here. Crowd's going wild right now, people. Big crowd in place today. And thank you for joining us here on this cast on Sky Sport Next YouTube. We're excited. We're going to be here all the way through to 4 p.m. when we get that prize giving. Both teams getting ready here. Soon we're going to have the national anthems coming up. As we see Team Waikato, tell us about that game this morning, Keith. Uh, it wasn't the best game, but they're missing one of their key players in Aria Cowley. They look like they're all smiles, as they should be. Probably going to go celebrate with the team. Maybe a little bit of a mad Monday tomorrow for the girls. Finishing fourth. Finishing fourth, and it's not, it's not bad. Yeah. The way I put it, fourth is better than fifth. Absolutely. As the team lists are being announced here. In the stadium, by the way, guys. by our MC down here at the AUT campus. We're on court A here. Victoria on taking court, ready to go as AUT finishes up their team huddle. AUT boys getting hyped up. We got the Victoria boys here as well on the left. Both teams greeting each other on court. Friendly faces now. It's going to all be put behind them pretty soon, Keith, I it, think. It will be, it will be. And Victoria being the physical team that they are, I expect this one to be chippy, and I want it to be. It's a final, it should be. In terms of team makeups here, Victoria do seem to be the slightly bigger team. They'll be looking to slow that pace once again, like yeah. they did yesterday. Play in the half court, look down low for Jacinta Beckley. Get the ball moving. Really good ball movement from them as well. Lots of cutters as well. They're also their half-court D, really intimidating. They move well on the pass as we are underway. AUT winning the tip. Asia Anderson up the top, swings it around. Now with Lou Murphy. Lou Murphy, back to Asia. Asia sizing up. The 21 for AUT. Asia Anderson, number 18. Almost. Good hustle on the boards from Anderson there. Unlucky not to get that one to go. AUT settling back into a 2-3 zone here. They seem content to let Victoria shoot from the outside. Cynthia Beckley though, huge offensive rebound. AUT pushing the ball down the court quickly early on in this one. Out of bounds, we're heading back to Victoria territory. 
Both teams looking a little nervous out there to start. Understandable, Keith. Yeah, got to settle in. Finals, always lots of nerves flying around, so take them a bit to settle in. Absolutely. If you're not used to finals basketball, it's not uncommon to see some bricks early on. Very true. Very true. Muscles are tight. There's a lot of pressure, but we'll soon get into the rhythm here as Beckley takes it down the paint. Looking to get going early, Beckley, but struggling a bit on the first two shots. Oh. Got that one up with two seconds on the clock. Number 13, Gina Steenhouse. And she'll go to the line for two here, Keith. Did we get an early sub, by the way? I think, oh, maybe not. I thought it was Isabella Tate Jones. Was it like that? Perhaps, maybe a little bit of confusion there. As Victoria to the line. Steenhouse was his first one. Still seeing those nerves here. Once these teams settle into their rhythm, I think we're in for an exciting back and forth game here. As you hear the crowd in the background. Loving it. Nice rebound from number 20 from AUT. Alicia Schuster. Asia Anderson at the top. Look for her to find her scoring niche. There we go. Almost a good rebound. Cleaning up that mess, Trinity Paiute. AUT. Big shot, Stenhouse. AUT playing deep in the paint there with their zone. They seem pretty happy to let Victoria bomb away early. We'll see if that pays off or not. Not a bad tactic, not trying to, trying to limit their looks inside. Depends if Victoria can get hot from beyond the arc. Absolutely, and obviously one of Victoria's big strengths is their inside presence, especially with Beckley. So we'll see if they can hit those outside shots consistently enough to stay with this AUT team. Very correct. Cuts it out. Alicia Schuster on the right wing. Finds Lou Murphy. Gets a screen going. Floats it up. No go. But the rebound is there. Great hustle. AUT really active on the offensive glass early. That's their third attempt already. We're only seven minutes 30 into this first quarter here. If they can keep offensive rebounding like that, they're going to give themselves a real chance today with those extra possessions, Keith. Exactly. They need to be more, they need to be physical. I feel like yesterday that is what Waikato were lacking. They needed a bit more physicality. Match the physicality of this Victoria team. Get in there, crash the boards, bump bodies, and you should see success from there. Yeah, as Paiu hits that second free throw, Paiu inside so far, a really strong presence for AUT. Very, very strong presence. She's Paiu, holding down. Paiu and Schuster, two strong forces out the back there. Yeah, and she's, oh, once again, 23, Soraya Panese hitting from deep. Soraya was great last night in their uh, win over Waikato as well. Soraya, of course, studying her Bachelor of Building Science in her first year at Victoria. As Beckley goes to the ground, and we've got a jump ball. I'm liking what I've seen from AT so far, matching physicality. It just depends on how long matching that physicality will last. They definitely seem to have a bit more size than the Waikato team yeah. had. Once again, just getting keep, hands. Yeah, keeping that zone tight. Yeah, it's good. Moving really well. Rotations are good. Good box out by Asia Anderson. Don't want to leave Panessa open too much, though. Yeah. Already hitting two. You do not want to leave her She's got all six points for Team Victoria here. They drop it down into the post. Inside. Jacinta Beckley. Holding up the ball, protesting the call. AUT's not going to be mad. If they can get Beckley in foul trouble early going at her. If she's sitting, it's got to be good for AUT. Well, that's the goal, really. I mean, you want to take the best player out of the game at all times. You do usually catch the center Beckley down low when they jump in the zone, when Victoria jump in the zone. If you can get her reaching in and can get fouls on her, why not? Emelina Motu into the game for Team Victoria. 
last yesterday even Keith we did see when she went off the court against that Waikato they were up 20 and that lead quickly went down to oh. 6 or 7 points so. very very quickly so they can get in early foul trouble get it to sit for a good bulk of a quarter they can mount a really good solid outing Number 20 for AUT going to the line here. That is, of course, Alicia Schuster. Really nice form from Alicia Schuster. Have a look at her on the second one. Nice stroke there. She swishes the second attempt. AUT back on defense here. Freya Newton, not, never afraid to shoot it. Freya Newton, nice looking stroke. Can't get it to go as AUT pushes down the left side of the court. Alrighty, AUT moving the ball nicely side to side piece. Yeah, very nice. Offensively. Nicely. It's looking good. Offense looks good. They've just got to stay in this game physically. Ooh. Wow, Victoria. Wow, Motu into the game from that same spot. Whoever um, shoots it from that spot. Is it going, it's going in. We'll have another look at it. Motu, number 24, bang. Is AUT going to mix up that defense? That 2-3 zone is definitely leaving some gaps out there on the wing for Victoria. I'd say next break, coach might implore a different defense. Victoria absolutely taking advantage at this stage with an early four-point lead over AUT. And AUT's not doing anything terribly. There's just been some big shots from some players in Victoria. We've got Mele Latu into the game for AUT. As AUT moving the ball around the perimeter, Latu setting the on-ball pick there. Back to Latu. AUT under 10 on the get shot clock. Good defense from Victoria. Beckley getting it up to Stenhouse. That's the spot for, for Victoria. Jacinta said, nah, that's my spot. Well off there on the three. Got to keep your eyes up. Messy play leads to a turnover. What do we call a turnover, Keys? Or a steal, should I say, a tie. Yes. He's back, people, and he's, he's, he's learned. I wasn't in this morning, mainly due to being at home studying my today at work. <laughs> so this afternoon would go smoother than yesterday. Yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> exactly, exactly. We've got Asia Anderson, number 18 on the ball. Number 12, Blue Murphy. Yeah, I'm liking this AUT offense. A little bit stagnant now, but... Mele Latu! Wow. Number 14, lighting it up. Spoke too soon. They have really moved the ball well from side to side early, making Victoria work in their man-to-man -man defense. Yeah, for sure. May it made them work, and that's the way to break teams down. You need to move the ball, shift the defense, and then you strike. Freya Newton, downtown. Oh, you better. Newton's three is good, and you that's better. the 4-3 already for Team Victoria. All their points are threes. A little bit different to what we saw yesterday, Keith, very, in the semi-final. Very different. But I mean, when your team's hitting like this, why would you not keep shooting? Mele Latu, same spot. Can she make it rain again? Obviously, AUT has watched that game yesterday. They thought, we'd, we don't want to get dominated inside. Yeah. We're going to pack the paint, let them shoot from outside, dare them to. And they're taking the challenge right now. Same spot as well. Yeah, they're getting the looks, though. Good hand in there from Asia Anderson, number 18 for AUT. Can't quite get that one to stick. And we have our first time out. Be interested to see how AUT change up, if they change up their defense so out of this time out. Three minutes to go in this quarter, Keith. Score 12-8, not as high a scoring game as we've seen previously. What do we put that down to? Finals intensity, I think. Like you said, nerves are there. Usually there's going to be some bricks early on, and also defensive intensity lifts in finals. Doesn't matter how bad of a defensive team you are, the intensity lifts, and that makes the defense better. Yeah, I'm with you. Offense wins games, yeah. defense wins championships is what they say. And the this is the championship game for the national 
tertiary championships here. For those of you just joining us, we are down at AUT on Auckland's North Shore. My name's Tom Allen. I'm here with Keith Gruchans. We're excited to be with you today. Remember, if you want more info on this tertiary championships, head over to the BBNZ website, www.nz.basketball. Also, if you haven't already, check us out on social media. Get all the up-to-date results, tournament info and photos on our Basketball New Zealand Facebook page, Instagram, or follow us on Twitter at BasketballNZ. And thank you again for joining us on Sky Sport Next on the YouTube channel. We're back with the action keys. AUT bringing the ball up. Yeah, let's get into it. Lou Murphy, number 12, goes for the handle. Asia Anderson on the wing. Still waiting to inject herself into the game. She's got the seal inside. Let's see if she can go to work here. So Asia, you talked about her game keys. Does she like to shoot? Is she a slasher? What should we be looking for? She's good at slashing. She's good at shooting as well. I think her strength might be slashing. Um, but I think another strength of hers is actually defense. If you see her get an easy left-hand layup off an out-of-bounds play. But yeah, her defense is very, very strong. Asia Anderson hailing from Hamilton Girls High School. She's studying to be a midwife, almost done in her third year. And we're going to get her some chocolate because she loves chocolate. Believe it or not. I believe it. I believe it. Who doesn't love chocolate? I love chocolate. As AUT has the ball again, Asia bringing the ball up that right side. Mele Latu, number 14 up the top. Nice little rejection of that screen. Can't get the floater to go from number 16 there from AUT. Motofoa. Keese will be bringing you some updates as we go through this game. Got some info on the AUT girls. As we get another three from Freya Newton. Freya Newton going absolutely crazy. Victoria scorching from the outside as we take another look at that. Full fake. He just left her alone. Puts it up and in. Don't do that. Good defense from Victoria there. Drew the charge. Offensive foul called. AUT just a little bit out of rhythm here, finding themselves down five. Extending their arm a little. Could have gone either yeah, way. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's a tough call. Could go either way, like I said. Newton bringing the ball up here. AUT sticking with their defense right now. They feel like Victoria are not going to keep hitting threes. We've got to jump over there. Really good hustle from Lou Murphy, giving up a bit of size, but grabbing that ball, forcing a jump, and we're going back with AUT. Lou Murphy hailing from Legacy High School in New York City. Wow. Studying sport and rec, specializing in coaching, and it is her first year. Fun fact about her, fun fact people, she is a certified bucket. A certified bucket? And actually, <laughs> I did see on Facebook, she has certified bucket tattooed on her arm. Wow. Is that a degree? Can you get a qualification in it? I think you can. <laughs> I'm not sure what the, the, the degree is called, but... Only is it at AUT. I know, only at AUT. Only at AUT, folks. And that's another three-pointer for Victoria. Oh, Great nice. rebound. Offensive blast there. Once again, 21, Trinity Paiu. Can't get it to go. Hey, for those of you who are interested in following the stats for this game, we do have live stats for the finals on our website, nz.basketball slash competitions slash tertiary slash tertiary champs. Lots so of slashes there, Tom. Check that out. I hope your slash on your keyboard's <laughs> working if you want the live stats. That's all I can say. As we get back to the half court here, Banker, no good for number 13, Jenna Stenhouse. Good little finish there by number 16, I believe. Yeah, nice transition push there. Summer, Summer Jean, Jean Motufua. 
seems like AUT does have the pace to kind of push the ball, and that has given Victoria trouble. Yeah, yeah, they, they, they really do. As Freya Newton knocks down another jumper. It is looking, though, to me like Victoria are the most skilled team in the comp. Overall? By quite a fair bit. Player to player, skill wise. It's going to take a special effort here for any team to beat Victoria. Yeah. We'll see if AUT can put that on display. Player standout so far for me, Keys, Freya Newton. Oh, She's come out firing on all cylinders here for Victoria. Following up her big semi-final performance. She's yeah. done it again. Absolutely. Emily Motu also showing some nice three early. And Soraya Panese. <laughs> it's kind of been a balanced effort, really. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Sharing the load, getting the ball going. It's been good. How How is AUT going to up their scoring here in the second quarter? I mean, 12 a quarter, it's not going to get it done here for the finals, yeah. Keys. I mean, they're good. They're doing good. They're moving the ball around. It looks good. It probably feels good to them, but I think at the end of the day, you do need to make shots, and that comes down to individuals. It does look good. I mean, Victoria here sticking with a man-to-man. -man. They're really making AUT force the action. There's not just open looks. AUT are moving the ball well, but they need individual players to get buckets, like the tattoo says, right? We need that bucket. certified bucket going down. <laughs> They're going to win this game. Hey, let's just have a quick look at some of these AUT women's players. I want to shout out Trinity Paiu, number 21. She's had some great rebounding in this first quarter. An alumni of Mount Albert Grammar studying health science and physiotherapy in her first year here at AUT. Reminder that all these players here today are in their study as we see someone running into the, the barrier there between the courts. Of course, we do have a men's game going on on the far court here. Looks like Otago and Canterbury. Yeah, I think you are right there. Otago and Canterbury. One of our lower seeding games. Five and six, I believe. As the buzzer goes here, we're going to be back for the second quarter here. What I'm interested in, is AUT going to change up their defense? Or are we going to see more of the same? Um, and already we do see a change here. It looks like they've gone three to two. a 3-2. Interesting. Looking to take away that three-point stroke that has hurt them a lot here in the first quarter. I do feel like now Victoria's just going to use that to their advantage. Already, yeah, they're right. forcing the ball into yeah. Beckley. Will it pay off or not? We'll find out soon. Yeah, we'll have to see. As number four for Victoria bringing the ball up to Puni. And that's a turnover for Victoria. Yeah, really nice transition D for Victoria. They're just giving AET nothing easy early on. They get back. They've, they've, the paint's clogged by the time AET gets down there. Really impressive stuff. They're showing that person who's bringing the ball up multiple bodies early. Yeah. Just makes it hard to get anything easy. And we have another three. Mele Latu. Latu. Big time. Big her, time her shot. Her second of the game. Nice rotation on that shot. As you see another look at it there. Crowd is going nuts down here, people. Lots of defensive chance. Boy, Asia Anderson. Asia, will Massive she go all the way? way? Wow, that is impressive defense impressive from defense. Freya Newton. Just holding her ground. Asia running into a brick wall, couldn't get that shot up. No, it's, it's really good defense, but you see there again, Victoria, like we just said, managed to get back, clog the paint, stop the ball early on the break, on transition. Really good stuff. Yeah, look, already that 3 2 zone just giving Victoria a little bit of trouble. They were swinging the ball around early around that perimeter with ease. Now, already a steal from Azur. I mean, it's going to work for them. If those, if those back two are locked in, that 3 2 will work. That is great D from Summer Dean. Beckley off to a bit of a slow start here, Keith. Similar to yesterday. Similar to yesterday, but we saw what happened yesterday. She brought it back, and she was phenomenal. Not just, not so much in the scoring department. 
as well, everywhere else though. Absolutely, look, as Beckley does rip down that rebound, there's many ways you can affect a game. Scoring's only one of them, folks. The great players we often find when the buckets are not going down, they find some other way to affect the game, whether it's rebounding, defending, or some assist, which we know as Farnais. Yes, Farnais. Māori word for assist, people. Of course, the last day of Te Reo Māori Language Week. We've got our expert here, Keith. He's been with you all morning. I'm sure he's talked a lot, taught you guys a lot, as we see a foul from Asia Anderson. Yeah, we've been talking about, as you see, the AUT boys on the screen here supporting their wahine. Both teams, physical defense, really looking to deny the ball. Oh, yeah. For sure, for sure. Like you talked about, Keith, finals defense. It's a different game. Oh, yeah, and it has to. You have to look the intensity. If you don't, you're going to lose. And it's as simple as that. As we see already, and that's going to be a foul on AUT. Just blocking off that paint. Victoria are getting nothing inside here. Yeah, that's why I said this can work for them. This can work for them. They can... This 2-3, or 3-2, uh, sorry, rather, can work. AUT coach not happy with that call. She's saying, why is it a foul? We're just boxing out, Rare. Doesn't matter, though. They got the ball back now. Almost another Tahoe. Dangerous cross-court pass. It pays off as Anderson from the baseline. Wow, two players from AUT flying in there. Couldn't control that rebound. Number six into the game here for Victoria. Rose McClellan to inbound the ball as Tapuni brings it up here. Bickley looking to operate around that high post area. Big crowd noise here, Stenhouse. chanting defense. And it's working, it's working. Stenhouse just off on a three pointer. Look, Lou Murphy. The home crowd. Is it going to be a factor here? Well, I don't know. The Victoria boys are here, but they're just not making enough noise. Asia Anderson, people. Tough shot from Anderson there. Playing through the contact. It didn't matter. There's Victoria moving the ball around here. Just a shot. Great defense. AUT, and that's going to be a foul. The second Tahoe of the game, she's looking phenomenal. Freya Newton picking up that foul there for Victoria. Victoria having a little team huddle here, seeing if they can compose themselves. Recuperate. We've got some subs in here, number 24 and number 9 coming in for Victoria. As Anderson to the line. Knocks down the first one, easy as you like. Pulling it to a two point game here. Halfway through the second quarter. And Anderson, pretty stroke there. She's come alive in the second quarter. Multiple steals off the wing as Victoria just struggling to get the ball from side to side. Give up that three and it is good for number nine. Apologies, I'm not sure who number nine from Victoria is. We'll find out for you. Victoria back on D. That's almost a certified bucket there. <laughs> Lou Murphy with a nice little crossover move. Great look inside, Trinity Pai. Man, what a feed there. Number 16 from AUT with a beautiful pass. We will Buck also... Bickley. Motufu with that pass. AUT just settling in nicely here on D. Shot clock already down to two. Good offensive board there from number six, but forcing it up. Victoria get the ball back, and Beckley from deep drains it. Tough break there from AUT, who played a solid possession. 
We're going to have a timeout from AUT as Victoria just pushing it back to a five-point lead. A little bit careless on the outlet pass there. A little bit careless, but, um, you know, it is what it is. It is what it is. Famous words from Key Screw Chance here. Yep. Look, when we talk about the outlet pass, we're talking about when a team gets a rebound and they're looking to either pass it to a teammate of the court, usually the point guard. What would we be saying if we were saying outlet in today, O'Keys? Outlet. Uh, Putting him on the spot here a little bit, folks. I'd say few fuckaputa. A few fuckaputa is not something you want to do carelessly. Yes, it is not. The reason I'd say few fuckaputa is because few is a pass and fuckaputa is to, you know, you burst out of something. Like if I was to, if I was wrapped up in <laughs> glad wrap. That's the only example I can think of, but I broke out. <laughs> I want to know what you're doing ripped up the glad wrap, Jace. <laughs> I I, I, I've never done it before. But That's a question for later. <laughs> but if you do turn over a few puck of, puck of pewter, sorry, it usually does lead to a bucket because the other team will find themselves right under their hoop with no defense at all. Very great. Team's coming back into this game. We'll see what AUT comes out with here. Their coach has not been afraid to make changes early. Yeah. And we've got confirmation here, number nine for the University of Victoria, Kahu Reina. So nice play from Kahu Reina. She is still in the game there. Gonna rock on with the accent, Mele. Nope. Summer team. There's AUT looking to move the ball here. Good screen from the high post there. Nice. Ooh, number 21, what a move from Trinity Paiu. Sets a screen, fake it, Make drive it. to the rim for the nice right hand finish. Wellington just getting out of their rhythm on defense here a little bit. Asia Anderson being fouled under the rim. They've been so disciplined all tournament, getting back after each play setting up their defense making it hard as yeah. we see they're just putting a little bit of pressure maybe frustration from the players trying to get it back all at once and it leads to a foul under the basket for AUT for sure for sure Mele Latsu was not expecting that she just got hit by an absolute bullet yeah it was open but I don't know if she was expecting it quite that hard no, I do not think she was expecting it well. as she she gets a tar high there steal from Latsu Eyes up, Anderson on the right wing. Driving base, good crossover. Finds Mele Latu. Victoria showing Anderson bodies now, multiple bodies. Bit of a wild shot there from Mele Latu, but you know, we all, make, we all take shots like that sometimes. Victoria coach corralling his bench as you see. Good rebound there again by Latu as AUT push. Oh, and we've got a nice little block there from Kahurena. There's Tapuni bringing the ball up. No one's marking her. Oh, and we've got an wow. open look in the corner. Emma Motu has been on fire. That's her third three so far. Victoria answering the call here on the threes. With that 3-2 zone, there is definitely now room more in the corner than there was in the wings. Those early threes for Victoria coming from the wings. Look to see them try to get that ball wow. to the corner. Trinity Paiu is making, a, she's making an early case for MVP. Yeah, Paiu definitely a top performer for AUT as well as Anderson. Another board, but way to get hit it out there. As Paiu rips that rebound down. Number six, Rose McClellan, not impressed by that call. And we're going to have multiple subs into the game here, please. Multiple. I don't know if I can actually keep up with them, to be honest. But Looks like Alicia Schuster coming into the game for AUT. And we'll have AUT inbounding the ball. And bring it up the court here. Two minutes left in this second quarter. This game's flying by, Keith. Oh, it's going quick. 
Melelatu. Freya Newton, though, ready to push the pace straight away for Victoria. Those Victoria players just so disciplined on that defensive end case. Keeping their hands straight up. And that is and one. The also, bucket's going to count for Stenhouse. Also very disciplined on the offensive end. They always move the ball. They get good rotation. A rare inside bucket in this game so far. Victoria has been doing the majority of their work from deep. Yeah, staying red hot from deep. But Stenhouse, a nice cut there, just hitting it. Can't follow the free throw, but we have an offensive board. McClellan. Nice ball fakes there from Victoria. And that's unlucky. Oh, it looked like it was off the foot there, but it's AUT ball. AUT looking to inbound here. As we see the replay of that, referee had a great angle. AUT bringing the ball up the court. Very Look. competitive game so far. Mele Latu. It's back and forth, isn't it, Keith? Very much so. Been a good watch. It's been a good watch. It sure has. Both teams looking to win the championship here. This is the championship game if you've just joined us. Stenhouse over for three. Did she make it rain? AUT just letting go of the rebounds here, noticing the difference with their um, classy big man. Left, Saraya, Vanessa, open. I feel like they're really missing Paiu's presence out there. They are really missing Paiu's presence. And she's only been off for a couple of minutes. Paiu, of course, AUT, middleman. She's been holding down the center. She's been rebounding well, and they're noticing it right now, giving up multiple offensive rebounds. There's this huge off offensive presence as well as well. we've seen her knock down a mid-range jumper. That sweet little right-hand scoop layup that she did earlier. She seems like she's got a little... Some may call her the glue. The glue? The glue to AUT. All right, similar to Beckley for Victoria Keys. Yeah, similar, very similar. Yep. Also came up with a new nickname while you were gone, Tom. All right. During the Lincoln game for Corbin Mason. Yeah. The garbage man. The garbage man. Because he just cleans up the garbage. He sure does. No one wants it. No one wants to get these offensive boards except Corbin Mason. I love it. I love it. As we have a look inside AUT's huddle, coach drawing up some plays. I think she's looking at the defensive end. This is the biggest lead of the game, folks. Victoria pulling out to a nine-point lead late in this second quarter. AUT need to find more ways to score. AUT taking as much time as they can with this timeout. Victoria already on the court, set up. Someone else I know that used to always take his time with the timeouts when we used to play. Well, timeouts being one minute long, you've got to get a lot of info across. I things. agree, I agree. I think it's a good thing. You know, maximize that time. And we're back. Really Looking to seal. You. We've got number 17 into the game from AUT, Rachel Pike. Great rebound, Summer Dean. Nelly Latu. Looks for the inside sealer. And it's going to be standing here. Pike, aggressive with her seals. This is her first action of the game. Rachel Pike studying a Bachelor of Health Science in her first year. And she sets a little back screen for Latu. Lou Murphy, number 12. Looking to get it up quick. She was forced into that one late in the shot clock. A minute left here, AUT really wanting to get something going before halftime. They're going to want, as you would say, Keith, to be under double digits. Yes, correct, correct. Very correct. They need to be under double digits. So they're going to stop here in a bucket. They'll be happy woman. AUT doing a great job bumping those cutters. And that's a foul. Great take to the bucket there from Emily number Namotu. 24, Emily Namotu. She has been really actually impressive this game for Victoria. Last game, she was there cleaning up all the boards, doing all the dirty work. This time, she's scoring. 
couple what? threes, couple drives. While she's still doing great. a lot of stuff, yeah. She's been great. Her and Newton, particularly for Victoria. Just pacing the scoring. Yeah. Very doing it on so. both ends, really. And as we wind down the second quarter, only 46 seconds left here. We have a 10 point game. And AUT looking to push it down. Great yeah, take. Good take, gets fouled. We'll head to the running. Lou's definitely got some moves. For sure, for sure. Lou Murphy, certified bucket going to the line here. <laughs> Both teams in the bonus here. Coaches will be asking their players not to foul to finish this quarter. Don't want to give up any easy buckets. Murphy knocking down the first. Certified bucket. She is, Lou Murphy actually saying her strength is a step back three. We all know that Toreo for step back is our Hokai Fakamuri. Yeah, bang on. I hope we see some of that today from Murphy. Yeah, I would like to see if that is a strength. Step back three. It's a tough shot. It's not easy. AUT, two second difference with the shot clock here. They don't care. They're giving it up. And they are heading number 16 from AUT, Samajin Motufua, with a pretty looking jumper. Is Victoria controller for the last shot here? Crowd once again wiping up. Two on the clock. What a steal. What a play. Victoria maybe just leaving the move a little bit too late there. Perfect finish for AUT. Finishing within six. And it's under double digits. It's Great a two position steal. game. Great steal from Schuster there. So, six point game. Half time. Wow, we've got some great action here. We are at the National Tertiary Championships down at AUT. Keith Screwchans and Tom Allen will be with you for the remainder of this game and the men's final that's going to be happening next. That will, of course, be kicking off at 2.15. We're going to step away from the mic for a couple of minutes, have a quick break, go grab a drink, a cuppa, <laughs> and we will see you back shortly. Oh, thank you. seek to ensure that future generations can grow and thrive. That means providing a world-class learning environment to grow fresh solutions to real-world problems, including using the world's resources wisely and sustainably. Come to Lincoln University, a place to grow.
Kia ora and welcome back to the Tertiary National Championship Women's Final here. We're down at AUT on Auckland's North Shore. My name's Tom Allen, my co-host is Key Screw Chans, and we've had an exciting first half here. Victoria taking the lead 35 to 29. AUT putting on a pretty good display against a very talented Victoria team here. We're about to kick off the second half here. Thank you for joining us. As play is about to start. AUT will take the ball at half court here. Standout players of the first half. AUT looking pretty strong with Azua Anderson hitting some nice shots, getting some good steals. Also number 21, Trinity Paiu, just holding down that middle, making a big difference for AUT. And she kicks us off with a mid-range jumper. Can't get it to go. But it doesn't matter. Number 16, Samajin Motufua with a follow-up fadeaway. We've seen AUT change their defense up, starting the game in a 2-3 zone. Victoria decided they were going to hit every single long ball that they took. So AUT changed it up into their 3-2. They've brought it back to a five-point game going into this third quarter. As they hit again, great shot from Motufua. She's starting hot here, and we've got a two-point game. This is the final. The winner of this game will take home the National Tertiary Championship Trophy. We'll be here with you all afternoon. This game, of course, preceding the men's final. That's going to kick off at 2.15. Also with a Victoria team in it. They're going to be playing our home team, Auckland, here. And that is going to be a charge. Great defense there. Soraya Penese coming into the game, taking that hit. And very exciting. Keith Kuchans has been with you all morning. He's our Tadeo expert here. It is Moldy Language Week. As we've got a bit of a wet spot on the court. Referee doing a fantastic job to keep these players safe. As Freya Newton carefully inspects his work there. It looks like he's she's she's checking it, and it's good. We're gonna be back. Back into the action here. Both teams doing well to make this final. It's been a tough few days of competition here at AUT. Victoria having a really strong display throughout this tournament. As we see Victoria trying to get the ball into those corners. Those seams, and we've got a block. AUT's wondering what happened there. Rachel Pike just swatting that ball. But it does not matter. Penese is going to go to the line to shoot two. As I said earlier, we are joined by my fantastic co-host, Matua Kisku Chance. Kia ora, kia ora. I'm back. Quick break. Boy back. Thanks to those of you here who have been with us for the duration of the tournament. We've been here with you since early yesterday morning. Had six amazing games. This AUT crowd just going crazy here. It doesn't matter for Pinesse as she knocks down the bucket. It's good, that's what you need. You need players who can handle the pressure. Absolutely. Fantastic tournament here, Keith. We've seen a lot of games. What stands out to you? from this tournament this weekend? Uh, the level of basketball, I was surprised. I was surprised on the level of basketball. And one for Azor Anderson. Tough bucket there for Azor. So the level higher than you were expecting. It is higher than I was expecting. I wasn't expecting, yeah, I, well, yeah, I wasn't expecting this high of a level from universities here in Aotearoa. Look, we've got a whole range of students here, first years through to fifth years. Some of these players have played representative for New Zealand. Even in this game, as we see Beckley for Victoria. Tall fan. Absolutely. So the level, as Keith said, is really high here. A lot of these players have been to college. They're coming back as AUT, very active on defense. 
crowd is just going crazy right now. Exactly. As well. Absolutely wide open under the hoop. Victoria missing her there. And the shot clock is right down to seven seconds here. Victoria going to have to get a quick one off here. Who's shooting this one, Keese? Uh, I'd like to see Fran Newton. Moving it around. They've left the wrong wow. person open. Motu again. Envy Lin on Motu. That is like a third or fourth three this game. She is going off. I don't know if AUT's got the memo yet, but get a hand up. Hand get down, man down. Hand down, man down. We're going to need Ray Allen closeouts on Emmy Lina Musu in a second. Of course, a shout out to our fellow commentator, Mark Jackson. He, of course, works in the NBA. And AUT is going to be going back to the line here. And Anderson getting to the bucket at will. At will. I mean, cheers. That is one thing I noticed about playing against Asia and playing with her is that she is quite physical. She is quite physical. She won't let people um, push her around. She's strong. And I think that's why she is able to get to the cup so easily. Looks like she's just got an all-round game. She's hit jumpers this game, but she seems to do most of her work just driving to the hoop. Really yeah. tough to stop without yeah. fouling. For sure, for sure. Fran Newton bringing the ball up the court for Victoria. Looks right to Stenhouse. Stenhouse not afraid to shoot it early. Great rebound from Kahurana. Keeping it going. Newton, great cross court pass again to Kahurana. She kicks it back out to Newton. Fade away, one legger. Oh, Shout out to Dirk. Wow. Shout out to Dirk Nowiski with that shot. Victoria, multiple opportunities here. AUT need to secure the rebound to finish their defensive possessions. Gosh, that was very close from Emily number two. I was going to say, you need to it. put a hand up. Hey, that, sure. was, that was four shots in a row there. Yeah, that's not going to win your finals game, so AUT's got to be ready to buckle up and get rebounds. Out of bounds. Hey, nice idea there from number 21, Paiu, but unfortunately, pass just not quite to the hands of the shooter in the corner. And it happens. It happens sometimes. And Beckley back into the game. Motu will take a breather, a well-earned breather. She has been on fire. Really on fire. Making a very strong case for MVP. Yeah. Fran Newton. AUT really looking to take away any post catches. Good D. Good D once again. Summer Jean. Hands in the lane. Able to get the tie. Kicks it out to the corner. Very close. Two on three, nice little transition opportunity for AUT. Fran Newton looking to get busy early, and she does. Freya with just a pretty J from the baseline there. Very cool, calm, collected. Asia, elbow, hands off to Mele Latu. Lou Murphy, right wing, step back three. That's what she says, her strength. Love to see a nice Hoka Fakamuri from the AUT player. Couldn't get that one to go. Beckley finds herself wide open in the corner and she drains it. Summer Jean bringing the ball up the court for AUT. Finds Mele Latu. Not afraid to shoot it, never afraid to shoot it. Latu, a great shooter. Already knocking down two in this game. That's her third triple. Brand Newton. Finds Stenhouse. Stenhouse. Finds Soraya, I believe. Good backdoor cut by Beckley. Beckley. Let it go strong. Lots of hands in there. She did well to pick that one up. Freya Newton, one thing I love that I'm seeing from her is just her ball fakes. You know, as a coach, when you're coaching players against the zone, you want to get that defense moving, get them ball faking. She's showing multiple ball fakes on every position. Great to see. We've got a timeout. Exactly. Yeah, Freya Newton. Exactly what you said, Tom. Ball fakes are phenomenal. Even if the cut's not on and she's going to fake a pass to the cutter, it still makes the defense bite just that little bit. Yeah, that's what's going to open up gaps in those seams of the zone. Victoria here up four points. 
44 to 40 midway through this third quarter We've got a big lead on that far court 56 38 otago versus canterbury over there as the aut coach corralling her players they're just hanging around they haven't had many yeah. leads in this game but they're certainly sticking around giving themselves a shot key sticking around like a bad smell you know just always hanging around it's hard to get away might take a couple washes if it's in your clothes bad smells don't go away easy right now aut are a bad smell for the victorian wahine well these players certainly are going to have to wash their clothes after this <laughs> tournament case we're of course at the national tertiary <laughs> basketball championship this is not just a basketball competition these tertiary games involve a lot of sports here in new zealand they've had series for 3x3 volleyball badminton ultimate and futsal also rowing netball still to come at this stage university of canterbury were leading the standings i feel like we're going to see a change in that today with wellington in both men's and women's finals Correct. auckland second in the standings coming into this tournament however they have a men's team about to play in our next game we're going to see which is going to be kicking off at 2 15. please stick with us for the afternoon we're going to be here with you for the duration next game might be game of the game of the tournament i, I can mean. tell you what keith is absolutely frothing at the mouth for this one <laughs> we need some tissues here in the commentary booth <laughs> Absolutely frothing, people. <laughs> Absolutely frothing at the mouth. And we're up to a six point lead here, Victoria, nailing those free throws as AUT settles into the half court. Summer Jean of Sissing Her Options gets into Asia Anderson in the number 18 jersey. Finds Lou Murphy, who finds Mele Latu, not afraid to shoot it ever. Paiu from the mid range. Paiu. Great form for Paiu as well. Ayu, it seems, really looks to facilitate from that high post. She's looking to be a fast pass first player, but she gets that rebound. I like when you have their, when, when teams have their pass first players in the post. I love it. Forgive me for laughing there. Paiu having a pretty decent foul on her own player, Azur Anderson there. Put her off the shot completely. <laughs> Obviously a mistake as Victoria misses that long range bomb. Lou Murphy looking to get out and run early. Certified bucket. Wow! <laughs> Certified Kai Fanai, we should say. What a fine uh, for Lou with that sweet assist. Keese is laughing at my pronunciation <laughs> here. Forgive me, team. I'm still learning with this today. Oh. Sorry, guys. Can't help myself sometimes. The main thing is we're giving it a go, right? Exactly. We're giving it a go, we're learning. That is the main thing. It's where Stenhouse taking it out on the right-hand side of the court. I mean, so far this game has definitely lived up to expectation. Oh, for sure. It's a, it's a final and these teams both look ready to play in the final. Of course, us as commentators, we're always impartial here. We want to see a close game. Yeah, no, no affiliation to either team people, so. Anderson, nice cut. Great finish. Quick seal in the post, and she's just tough to stop down there. She's tough, she's a strong, strong lady. I haven't seen anyone one-on-one -on -one stop her in this game. Is AZ got pretty. away with on there, there was a bit of Matador defense, I've heard it called in the past. Yeah, standing there, Tapuni unable to find Beckley in the corner. AUT dodging a bullet, making this a two-point game. And they're, they're looking to take this lead right now, Keese. Won't surprise me if they do either. There's Paiu facilitating from the high post. And Lou. She Ooh. wanted it. She wanted it. Almost a three-point opportunity. She'll go to the line. They've got the chance to tie the game here. Be good. I hope they do it. Wellington, Victoria University leading this game from start to now, basically, but we're seeing a pretty solid run in this third quarter by AUT. Bit of a change of tide. Thanks for joining us here today at the National Tertiary Championships. We've got quality basketball here. Our two finals games, women's and men's. As 
free throws do not go. For not Lou. what you want. Not what you want right now. There's no taking off that certified bucket tattoo. So she's got to be a certified bucket. Victoria doing well to get the ball inside a little bit more now. I love Freya Newton's calmness on the ball. Yeah. She she's, doesn't really get shaken up from anything. I think Absolutely. That, yeah, I think it's really beneficial for the Victorian woman. A real steady influence out there for the team. She doesn't seem to get flustered like you say, Keith. Yeah. She just keeps playing. Oh, nice little move there. Can't get With it to go injury. for Paiu. Oh, Paiu looks like she's rolled an ankle. She's down in back play. Someone needs to foul ASAP. Victoria looking to make the most of this five on four. They shoot a three. And we're going to have a stoppage here. Luckily, Victoria won't be happy with that. A five on four opportunity. Paiu, she's up. She's walking out of here, but she looks frustrated as she landed awkwardly, as you could just see on the replay there. That is a big big factor for AUT. If she doesn't come back in this game, someone's going to have to step up inside as we once again see the replay there. We need to get some ice. We need to get some ice for Back to the Paiu. live action. Some of Jane pull up. Nice little pull up there from mid-range. Victoria on the break. And open three from the wing. Can't get it to go. Pinesse. She has been hot early in this game. Wellington, easily the best shooting team so far. For sure, for sure. Good board by Asia Anderson. Can't oh. get the put back to go. Unlucky, and Beckley stares at the ref. Give me that foul. Referee obliges. When Beckley talks, you listen. Number 17, Rachel Pike picks up that one as we've got a close one here. One minute remaining in the third. Both teams maybe starting to feel a little bit of fatigue after a big couple of days of games here. Beckley can't get that one to go from the mid-range. Anderson bringing the ball up on the break for AUT. And she, wow. oh, she loves it. it. And makes it. She's signaling, and one, give me that. Take another look at this. Nice little move. Between two players, off the glass, that is a pretty finish. Count it. She's telling her crowd, count it, they love it. She can take the lead here. Is this AUT's first lead of the game? It will be. It will be if she makes this bucket. AUT will be so happy. The coach here making quality adjustments, and really the effort here has been great from AUT composed yeah they're locked in they're Not, seriously locked in i mean they've been down as we've talked about earlier you know it's easy to get flustered when you are down and try to get it all back in one go but they've just trusted the process i think the biggest lead for victoria was a 10 point lead victoria doing a great job to get that ball into motu in the high post miscommunication there on the wing and we've got a turnover AUT potentially looking at going into this half, sorry, fourth quarter with an even bigger lead. If they can make this happen, that's huge. It's not going to happen like that though. Amy Lena Mochi. And Victoria bringing it up. Pike with it's a great happen like that though. Great Tahoe. Almost turns it over. We've got a jump. A very quick jump ball. It's Might be world's quickest jump ball. <laughs> Referee's looking to keep control of this game. <laughs> Keith not quite believing what he's seeing here. He's only laughing because at, when we used to uh, train at Birkenhead College, I used to have a rule, no jump balls in training. No jump balls. <laughs> you keep fighting. Which led to some pretty wild plays. As we see another bucket from Anderson. By the looks of things, AET are going to finish this quarter going into the fourth for the lead. And Beckley. Straight to the hoop there. She's tough to stop with a full head of steam. She is tough to stop. Yeah, I don't know about that jump ball call, Lily. I feel like you let it play out for a little bit longer. Just a little bit, nothing too crazy. 
I'm uh, getting some feedback here on my Tereo from our main fan down in the South Island, Charles Sarong. He says I get a B minus for my Tereo. <laughs> B minus isn't bad. He says I need to go back to intermediate for lessons. <laughs> probably, probably true. <laughs> I'm willing to take that on the chin. As Victoria makes it a one point game. Got one on the clock. Can't oh, make it happen. Pike unaware of the time there. Victoria coach breathes a deep sigh of relief as his players come in. Man, I am excited for this fourth quarter, Keese. It's been a back and forth affair. Very much so. Very excited. It's close. AT's got the lead. Now can they carry this momentum to finish the game and win it? For those of you who have joined us recently, Victoria was up big early in this game, extending the lead out to around 10. However, AUT fighting back. And it looks like number 21 is back on the bench. Paiu, who went off with an ankle injury, is back with her team. Good to see for AUT. They'll be looking to get her back into the action. Victoria hitting a lot of threes throughout the game, Keys. They've been hot. A lot of massive threes from Victoria. AUT massive. just sticking around. What do you expect to see in this fourth quarter? AUT need to keep the energy high. That's when they catch Victoria off guard. When they're all going, they're running out on transition. Their defense is together. Everyone knows what they're doing and where they're going. And, man, Azure Anderson, keep it going. Azure has been absolutely the star for AUT sure. doing it all. Player of the game. Potentially. Are you saying, would, would that be your pick for AUT? Potentially, sure. yeah. I think it is, like, I don't think anyone can outperform it in one quarter. Yeah. How about for Victoria? Who's oh. your standouts there, Keith? Emilina Motu. Emilina Motu, the I chef. can't help but agree with you. The I feel chef. like her Panese and also number 20, Freya Newton. Yeah. It is between Freya Newton and Emilina Motu for me. The chef, not the baker. Absolutely the chef. Beckley, the big performer for Victoria yesterday, yet to really stamp her authority on this game. She's been solid throughout. Still performing, but yeah, not to the level that we know. She's happy to let her teammates step up. It seems like Victoria is a really balanced team. Different players stepping up depending on the circumstances. As we get underway with the fourth and final quarter of this championship game here at the National Tertiary Championships. Ayu quickly into the game, drawing a foul straight away. Are they counting it? It's a welcome sight. And the referee smiles and says, no, we're going from the base. <laughs> and into Anderson on the wing. A little bit of handoff action for AUT as shot clock falls under 10. Can't get that one to go and we're heading down the other way. Newton facilitating from the top. Uh-oh, uh-oh. It's your player keys. Motu Emily can't Lina, hit. Motu, surprisingly. I would not be leaving Motu open for one second if no I was chance. in AUT. No chance. You do not want to get it going again, especially this late in the game. If she can hit at least two threes, it's... Oh. And Paiu can't get it to go from the elbow. Look, I'm impressed with AUT's offense. It's a nice free-flowing offense. They get a lot of facilitation from that high post area yes. with cutters, handoff action at the top as well as pushing it on the break. And that's what's been keeping them around in this game. The high post facilitation is massive. I think it's one of the most slept on way to run, ways to run your offense. Yep, it used to be a staple as we see a more perimeter based game these days. By you, massive rebound. Wow. By you, calmly. Collects the board, gets it to go, gets AUT the lead again. How many lead changes are we going to see? I can imagine quite a lot. We hope so anyway, and we hope for oh you no. as the viewer. 
We've got a good game. Newton goes through her legs. She says, my bad on that one. The energy just shifting here in the building. We are, of course, at AUT here on Auckland's North Shore. AUT has a home crowd, home court advantage for this final. And they're looking to make the most of it as we get to the business end of this game. They're loud. AUT boys are loud. Oh. Look at low. Paiu. Good seal. And one referee calling out on that one. However, the other top referee calling a foul. She'll be going to the line. Paiu for two. Good strike. She should make these. Tell us a little bit about Paiu Keish. I will do so. Emmeline. Oh. Have I thrown you a bit of a hospital pass? Trinity here, Paiu. Sorry. Trinity not, Paiu. Not Emmeline Paiu. <laughs> Name confusion there, guys. She is an alumni of Mount Albert Grammar School. She is studying health science, physiotherapy in particular, and she is in her first year. All right, superstar. Been one of the definite standouts here for AUT. Nice little drive from Panessa, and she gets it to go up and under with the left. Fundamentals we're seeing from some of these players really stands out, Keith. For real. AUT just looking to work the ball inside again and Mele again. Latu. I mean, we would have probably said that Victoria was a stronger interior presence. Yet what we're seeing offensively here, Keith, AUT taking advantage inside. They're just working the ball in there. And Paiu just standing solid on D. Panese running into a brick wall there. It's like they're not, they don't get deterred by the height of Victoria and the size of Victoria. They're just going in there and doing work. Even it seems like whoever Beckley's marking, they're kind of pulling her out to the perimeter. Yeah. And then that's leaving the paint wide open. As we see Beckley just a little bit slow to get back on D once again. Paiu, Trinity Paiu. They're just feasting inside. She is also making a good case for MVP. It's lunchtime and these girls are hungry for rebounds. <laughs> <laughs> Beckley. As Beckley takes a tough fall, she's going to be going to the line for two here. Bit of an update on the foul situation. Victoria find themselves on two team fouls. And that's going to be AUT's first foul of this period. We've got a timeout. And we've got a five-point lead to AUT. Easily their biggest lead of this game. Our five is huge in, in finals. It's huge. The energy from their AUT bench. They seem very happy right now. As they should be. As they find themselves in the box seat here. A little bit of urgency in that Victoria huddle. Coach, giving orders, giving instructions. What do you think he'll be saying, Keith, to his players down there? They're going to muscle up, you know? Trinity Paiu down low, dominating in the paint. And they've just got to be up to the challenge. It seems like the momentum competitively has shifted to AUT. They seem like they're here to play. It looks like Victoria is dropping off a bit. Absolutely. It almost seemed like AUT didn't quite know if they believed they could yeah, win the game early exactly. on. Exactly. But they certainly do now. Victoria, maybe some doubts creeping in. They definitely need to step up inside, like you say, Keith. Just giving up too much. Yeah, way too much. A way too much. Offensive boards, you know, making it easy. They need to get back on D, pack that paint, make life hard. Get back to what they're doing. First quarter, second quarter. We see a little bit of lineup change, AUT. Paiu taking a quick breather. They're going to need her for the stretch run. It'll be interesting if they can hold down the paint without her here as Beckley knocks down the first free throw. And can't convert the second. Pike, great hustle for the rebound there. And AUT getting into their half-court offense. Pike loves the seal inside. She picked the wrong defender, though. Beckley just taking that away. Beckley for three. She's finally hit one. Wow. That, 
I mean, that was early in the shot clock. She's not afraid to take those big shots. Victoria Coach just pleading with his girls to get fired up here. They need to, and they need to now. Five minutes left in the game. And number 16 from AUT finds herself open at the top. Motufua can't hit, but we've got a foul down low. That's the third team foul on Victoria. Getting into the bonus in this fourth quarter of the championship game could be critical. Nice little Lele kick Latu. out there. Latu's got a nice stroke. She's hit a few threes yeah, this game. She's hit a couple threes. A couple threes. Lou Murphy doing a good job facilitating for AUT. Victoria moving the ball around the outside. Oh, nice look inside for number wow. six. Bickley. Wow. McClellan gave up a wide open layout there. A wise move, clearly, as Beckley knocks Very down her second three in a matter of minutes. Shows why she is a champion of the Tohi League and a Tofu. Just for those of you watching on TV, the coach of the Victoria team is standing on his sideline in his defensive stance. He's ready. I think they want to sub him in. He's ready to play defense with his girls, amping them on. But it's not enough as AUT gets a bucket. Bickley, can she make it three? Oh my goodness. Third three-pointer in oh a row. Oh my goodness. Her teammates are loving it. It's just sent to Bickley. And they've taken the lead 60 to 57. An eight-point turnaround that here. That is insane. Four it's minutes to Bickley, left. ladies and gentlemen. A late case for MVP. Oh, certified bucket. Gets a ball back and puts it in. Nice move there inside. Lou Murphy following wow. her miss. Can Bickley knock down another three? Is she? She's open. This is a serious heat check. Oh. As a hey, coach, sure. you don't mind that shot going up. You really don't. It's time for execution now. One As we enter the, the final four minutes here. The team that executes here will win this game. Azure! Oh, Azure. Freya just finding herself out of position on defense. And that's going to put Victoria in the bonus. It could be a factor here with AUT only on one team foul. That's actually the fourth personal foul on Freya Newton. A key cog in this Wellington machine. For sure, for sure. And she takes a breather. Coming Coach for Soraya. Coach not wanting to risk her fouling out before the last couple minutes. Bring her back. One minute left. One and a half minutes left. Two minutes left, even. Soraya Pinese, no slouch though. She's had a great game too as she enters. Asia. Asia Anderson. Take the lead here. We're standing in the commentator's booth. We've got members of the crowd standing. It's exciting stuff. Sister Beckley has been absolutely immense. Yeah, hey. Lou Murphy doing a great job just denying her all the way out to halfway. Wow. It does not matter. Jenna Stenhouse. Stenhouse. In Huge. for the right hand leg. Take another look at it here. Nice and easy. Easy as you like it. AUT struggling to get into anything here. We've got an on ball at the top. Clock down to three. Two. Down to two. One. Close, but no cigar. Good defensive position for Victoria as Beckley content to walk the ball up the court here as we enter the final three minutes of play. Exciting action if you're just joining us now. You picked the right moment. Very that much was, so, you've picked the right moment. That was tipped by an AUT player. We're going to stay down here. One point game here, folks. Only eight on the clock. Victoria needs to make something happen quickly. And it's Panese to the hoop. Wow. And one. Wow. That might, wow. A lot of time still left, but this, oh, man, I don't know what to say. 
Lead changes here just everywhere as number 24 coming back into the game, Emelina Motu, the star shooter. Now, Keith, we need to start thinking about our MVP of this game. Who are we going to interview for these teams? I think maybe. Damn, it's AUT. Tough. I feel like Azua Anderson. Yeah, Asia Anderson, for sure. Or maybe Trinity Paiu. Yeah, both of them have been great. I mean. It's tough. It's Bickley. Bickley. Just muscles up inside. Bickley's making the case out here. All right. As we enter this final two minutes of play, this is intense. Trinity Paiu down low, fading away. Wow. Massive shot. Massive shot. I'm going to hand you over to the capable hands of Key Screw Chance as I head down for some post-game interviews. Let's go, team. We're here. Victoria working it around by way of Emelina Mutu. Finds Beckley down low. Stays down here. No shots, though. Stays down here. Beckley to inbound. Three-point game. Let's see what they can do here. AUT don't want a bucket at all from them here. Wow, massive block from Mele Latu. Azure Anderson pushing the pace. Nice move from Azure Anderson. Really stepped up this last quarter, Azure Anderson. Wow. One point game, two minutes left on the clock. This is starting to come down. Who wants it more? Who wants it more? Let's see it. And we got a timeout. One minute timeout. Two minutes left in the game. One point game. Who's going to take it? Are we going to go to overtime? Are we not? Who knows? Going to have to find out in a second. See the Victoria boys in the back. Ready to play their final coming up next against Auckland. As you can see to the left of the screen. Just in the corner there. Should be exciting. But do not go anywhere. This game still has a lot of life in it. Back underway. Two minutes left on the clock. Victoria have a one point lead heading into the fourth quarter. Victoria showed up this fourth quarter. Jacinta Bickley showed exactly why she is a champion of the Toei League, as you can see on my screen right now. Girls are ready to get back into it. Let's see it. And man in the ball is Freya Newton. Gets it into Stenhouse. AUT's crowd is going crazy right now. Defensive chance everywhere. Freya Newton in the corner. Finds Bickley. High defense on Bickley. Floats it up. Won't go. Trinity Paiu gets the ball. Finds Mele Latu. Gets it to Summer Jean. 1 minute 30 left on our clock. Back to Mele Latu. Azure's cutting back door. Asia, spin move. And it's in! Left handed spin move. Takahuri by Asia Anderson. Let's have a look again. Off the right shoulder. Up and in. Three pointer. No go! Ball goes to Asia Anderson. You'd imagine she's going to hold it here. AUT, one point lead. I want to run the clock. 13 seconds left on the shot clock. 10, 9. Getting down. 5 seconds left. Lou looking inside. Asia Anderson. And 1! 
Rachel Anderson, ladies and gentlemen. She is going crazy to put them ahead by two more, plus the foul to go. Wow, three point game. Azure can make this a two position game right now. Unreal. Azure at the line to make it four. There it is. The crowd goes crazy. It's a two position game now. AUT need to stay calm. Victoria needs points on the board. Defensive chance go up from AUT fans. Freya Newton looking around. Good pressure from the AUT girls. Finds Freya Newton for three. No. Trinity Pai with the rebound. Gets it up. Summer team. Holding the ball up, as you can imagine. 30 seconds left. Beckley fouls on purpose. Mele Latu will go to the line. Mele Latu fouled at the top by Jacinta Beckley, an intentional foul. They need the clock to Victoria. Mele Latu, first shot is good. Clutched up. Ice in her veins, as some would say. Makes it six. No hesitation. No routine. No nothing. She is going crazy. Six point game down here. Victoria needs threes. They need points ASAP. Finds Bickley. Bickley puts it up for three. Rebound AUT. They foul again. AUT fans believe they've won the game. They are up, they are rowdy. Mele Latu will head to the line. I've just noticed she does not shoot her shots with any retain. Two, one dribble, boom. It's up there. If she can make this one, it makes this game very, very hard to win. Rebound, Azure. This game is over. Ladies and gentlemen, AUT boys loving it right there, as you can see. Asia Anderson at the line. Knocks it down. Cool as you like. Asia, second shot. Knocks it down. This will be game over. Eight point lead. Asia almost steals it. Out of bounds. This game is all over. Coach wants a timeout. Victoria girls had a bit of a fall apart in the fourth quarter. And AUT stepped up and showed out. Azor Anderson. Girls ready to get back out there. 30 seconds left. As we can hear, Tom Allen kindly asking for an interview with Azor Anderson after the game. The unanimous MVP, I think, for a lot of us. We'll get through this last 13 seconds of this game. Should be a good one, folks. Then straight after this, we're carrying on and we're going straight on through to the men's final.
Victoria Mins taking on Auckland Mins should be a goodie. AUT to inbound, Victoria not going to go out without a fight, but this is very hard to win. Wow, we have a no call there. Very interesting. And that'll do it, folks. That'll do it. Your 2022 National Tertiary Championship winners. AUT take it 74-66. In the dying moments of the game, celebrations are going wild. What a performance. What a tournament by Victoria as well. And what an absolute performance by AUT this game. Way to shut out the team to beat. Jacinta Beckley, unreal performance in quarter four. Really amazing stuff. I think we're going to shoot down to Tom Allen for an interview soon. But as you can see here, girls celebrating, loving it. Gonna go give their handshakes out. All of the above. End of the day, it's all happiness. It's all men and men, there's all katakatas. Everyone's loving everyone. At the end of the day, basketball is the real winner. <laughs> but seriously, congrats to AUT. Massive effort from the girls. Well-deserved win, really well-deserved win. Thanking the refs, as always. Be kind to your refs, people. AUT dancing around on the court. Mad Mondays is going to be a good one for these girls. Get in. Crank it out. Boys are starting to warm up. Auckland side. AUT girls still hugging it out. Excited. Very excited. Walking over, thanking the refs now. Prepping up for our interviews of our MVP of the night, Asia Anderson. But first, we're going to talk to Freya Newton, so we'll send it down to Tom just shortly now. I'm courtside here with Freya Newton. Freya, not the result you wanted. Talk us through that game. Um, I mean, I think we came out hard. Uh, we, are, we are a bunch of old girls, so we, we knew we had to just empty the tank, but... Um, yeah, came out, we played hard, I, I, don't, I mean, can't ask for anything more than that. Yeah, we had, we had enough shots at the end to, to kind of come back into it and just unfortunately couldn't hit. Yeah, look, your team played so well throughout the tournament. You actually found yourself with a 10-point lead there. What did AUT do to take that game away? Um, I think they were playing sort of a sagging zone, um, which was working for us in the first half because we were hitting threes. Unfortunately, we couldn't make those shots in the second half. A uh, couple of bad decisions on my part, and, and, you know, unfortunately, we just couldn't come away with the win. Yeah, hey, once again, bad luck. Thanks for your time, Asia. I hope, sorry, not Asia. <laughs> I hope you have a great trip back to Wellington, all right? Thanks, Freya. Awesome. Great to hear from Freya Newton. We're now going to hear from Asia. Great to hear from Freya Newton. Prepping to hear from Asia Anderson. We'll send it right back down to Tom right now. Cool. Hey, I'm courtside here with Asia. What a game. Talk us through. How did you get back from that 10-point deficit? Um, I think it was just defensive effort. I mean, at the start, we were a bit slow, and they got a lot of threes on us. Like, Jacinta was amazing. Got really good shots up. So we had to change our defense from a 2-3 to a 3-2 to, to, to kind of stop those shooters. But, yeah, I think we did really well. Yeah, look, that defensive change really worked for you. <laughs> hey, big game. What, what do you want to say to your girls after that win? Uh, I mean, just shout out to the girls. They're amazing. I mean, we've had a, such a good tournament. It's my first time playing with them. And Darcy, our coach, she's just lovely. She's just so good with us, bringing us together. So, yeah, just a shout out to her. Awesome. Shout out to Coach Darcy. Hey, thanks for your time, Asia. Enjoy the win. Enjoy the celebration. Thank you, team. Beautiful. Great to hear from Asia as well. The boys are starting to warm up, so we're going to take a short break before we get straight into that game. We'll see you fellas soon. Hey, Akwani.
in the city is just so friendly. It's a big city, it's a big student city. I love that you can walk everywhere and that everything's accessible. The campus is just pretty much in the heart of the city as well. What the students offer to the city is something that you don't get too many other places. That's the great thing about this university, you will find your people. It feels like a university with a city attached to it. It's exceeded my expectations in every way, it's unbelievable.
and we are back. Welcome to the National Tertiary Championship Men's Final. This is the game we've all been waiting for, folks. Jake Thanks Cuff. for joining us. Keese, talk us through this matchup. I mean, it's going to be huge. Like, the boys just got out of war just got out of singing the National Anthem, and they're already slamming. He's got the energy they're in the coming. building is real. As you watch the warm-ups here, we are seeing many, many dunks, or as we know with our Tereo uh, Kuru Topa. My name's Tom Allen. I'm here with my co-host, Key Screw Chance. Kia ora. And we are so excited. We've been with you yesterday. We've been with you today, but it all leads to this moment. We're going to crown the championship for the National Tertiary Championships. We've just had a great women's final, Keith. Amazing women's final. Really good. Give us a super quick debrief on that game. Debrief on that game. Victoria looked like they were in the driving seat up until about midway through the third. AUT took over, but they was, Victoria was still in the lead by about four. Then in the fourth quarter, it was all AUT. Asia Anderson, the MVP of the game, stepped up. And so did why she was the MVP of the game. Lots of tough fuckers down low, lots of tar highs, lots of steals, lots of great defense on her behalf. And they ran away with it in the end. Ended up being an eight point lead to win the game. What a performance. Great way to finish the women's draw. Let's take a look at the men's game now. Some of the key matchups here. We saw both of these teams play yesterday in the semifinals. Who's your players to watch for in the Auckland team, Keith? Oh, hard to go past Ruben Fitzgerald and Raymar Cruz after yesterday's performance. Posting up four threes in a row each and then hitting a couple more later on in the game. Um, hard to go past those two as the players to watch. Prolific shooters. They're going to look to get those shots off again today. On the other end of the court, of course, Victoria. A dominant display in their semi-final. Who's our key players in their team, Keys? I'm looking at the boy who just got up there and dunked it. Jacob Carr had an outstanding performance against AUT in the semi-final. Great in everywhere, offensively, defensively, all three levels, mid-range, three points, and in the paint. Also another player to look out for on the Victoria team is number eight, Ruben Natouche. Shooting the lights out yesterday and getting it done close to the rim. Those are my two to look out for, for Victoria. Great picks, Keith. Those players were certainly fantastic yesterday, especially Jacob Carr, just absolutely oh, everywhere unreal. on the court. Victoria, as a team, their defense really stood out yesterday. They're really frisky on the ball. For sure, for flaring sure. Flaring out, hedging those screens. They're going to make it tough on these Auckland guards. Oh, without so, a doubt, without a doubt. It's going to be interesting to see whether those open looks that were there yesterday are going to be here today. For sure. Now we'll go straight to the team list now. We're going to zoom in and we're going to take a look. Run us through these team list keys as we take a look in that huddle First for Victoria up, Uni. Victoria Uni, number nine, we've got Aston Inwood. Number 12, Corbin Laban Palmer. Number 11, Aiden McHale. 10, Jacob Carr. 4, Jet Hideme. 5, Jordan Lindbaum. 7, Lord Vincent Tres Montero. 8, Ruben Natouche, 18, Sam Maguire, and 6, Trent Clarsen. Strong looking team. As we move over to the other side of the court, Auckland University. Number 2, we've got Caleb Fully Sanders. Number 7, Charlie Cox. Daniel Powell, the sharpshooter. Jeremy, formerly known as Jamie McIntosh, for those <laughs> of you who were with us yesterday. Joseph Woodridge, number 3. Number 14, Matt Drury. 24, Makaidi, the smooth man, Watine. Rayma Cruz in number one. Ruben Fitzgerald, the MVP. Ruben Joyce, and also the defensive pest, Terrence Abdon. What a matchup we've got here today, Keys. Making up for an absolute ripper of a game. Both teams will be gunning for this championship. Very, very excited. To see how these teams game plan for each other, obviously we know a lot, a lot of shooters in Auckland. Not many, and I say this with respect, not many individual performers besides Jacob Carr and Ruben Natush and the Victoria team, but they play extremely well as a team together. Yeah, even in the interview we had yesterday post-game with Jacob Carr, he talked about, he said, we're all playing for the same jersey. They don't really care who gets the accolades here. You know, 
he was he was vouching for his teammates. They're a real team. They don't care who gets it done as long as they get it done. And that's the way to play basketball, really, at the end of the day. He's completely right. We're all wearing the same jersey at the end of the day. Who's going to all win at the end of the day? The team. So it's all about the team. All right. Getting ready for tip-off here. Who's your pick before this game, Keys? Don't put me under this kind of pressure this early, Tom. Um... Just for the fans at home, a bit of fun here as we finish our day in the commentary box. You know what? I'm going to go out and I'm going to take, I'm going to back my bros. I'm going to go Auckland. He's going Auckland. I'm forced to go Vic. That's what we've been doing all tournament. It is what we've been doing. And we tournament. are tipping off Victoria straight away with the tip. Natush moving that ball off the on ball. Inward. Jacob Carl are going to get going early. Great pass to Inward. Physical play. Finds Laban Palmer. Nice. Wow. Wow. Laban Palmer. What a, <laughs> what finish. a finish. That was some physical defense from Power as well. Very physical. Looks I love like it. Love it. This is the way to start a final. Jeremy. Looking to whip it across early. Not sure if that's the right decision. Jacob Carr, they're looking to get out and run. No messing about. That's two Ooh. fun eyes. That's two fun eyes for Jacob Carr already. Let's go. Nice looking finish there. Number 18, Sammy Maguire with the glasses. Both teams. Nice flowing offense to start this game. Multiple handoffs as Powell pulls it from the top. Can't get it to drop. Good rebound there from Victoria as we go back this way. Levon Palmer already just asserting himself on the boards case. It's really good. It's that, that's what they want. They want their bigs to get out and get dirty real quick. Ruben looking out the corner for Dan Powell. Gets it inside to Mikaidi. Nice little Mikaidi. He's a strong, smooth operator. Smooth operator. Love, Love that song. That song. Like, don't <laughs> stop. Keep going. <laughs> I'm stopping there. We got it basketball is, to watch. It's mid afternoon. He'll put you to sleep with those beautiful <laughs> tones. Fitzgerald R bringing the ball into the front court. Ruben giving him problems early. Natush all up in his grill. I don't think they're going to want Ruben to get any shots off. No as chance. Mikaidi yeah. to the rim. Mikaidi looking great out the break. Got all the points for Auckland so far. Both teams trading buckets early as Leban Palmer to the hoop, fouled by Fitzgerald. Of what I'm seeing early, I think Mikaide Watene may be the key for Auckland today. I think his physicality and his size, because if you look at the boys who were scoring uh, yesterday, such as Ruben Fitzgerald, such as Raymar, they're not as big as Mikaide. And this team's physical, this Victoria team's physical, and they're going to need big bodies driving to the hoop. You can see it even at the free throw line. I mean, number nine for Victoria, Aston Inwood, a powerful hustler, a big man. But Mackaydee standing next to him, even a little bit bigger. Yeah. And looking stronger. Be so interesting. The guards, you reckon, cancel each other out here? Um, not necessarily. I think they still get their shots off. But I think Mackaydee might be the key for them from what I'm seeing so far. Jeremy, nice slip to the hoop there. He is one slippery customer getting to the rim. <laughs> slippery customer. <laughs> Whoa! Dan Powell, we he's going to slam it. Kudu Topa. Bang! Kudu Topa gets the crowd going. His bench is up and they're fired up. Let's get another look at that. Here we go. Pinches it. Tahai. Up the court. Kudu Topa. Oh! And if you missed that, we had Jake Carr to the rim really aggressively getting fouled there. He'll go to the line, and we've got a three-point ball game. This is exciting. It's exciting already. Auckland up 8-5. Thanks for joining us here on Sky Sport Next on our YouTube channel. This is the grand final of the National Tertiary Championships here. We've had a good couple days of action. This is what we've all been waiting for. Jake Carr, unable to get the first one. Unable to get the second one as well. Inward though. Early, but it doesn't matter. He's a hustler. Inward, a real difference maker. He's the kind of guy you want on the court. For sure. Doing all that dirty work, cleaning the glass, defense. As we see Mikaide driving again and getting fouled. 
He never looks like he's going 100% speed. Never. Never. He's very calm. He's very slow. Deliberate in his movement. Yeah. Uh-oh. It's Gerald. That's a good sign for Victoria as that shot does not go. It was a great sign for Victoria early. Car early on ball offense here. And he's flying to the hoop. Auckland, solid defense. Yeah, there. lots of physicality early. I'm loving it. Offense clicking for Auckland as McIntosh wants the ISO on the post. May have been a bit forced there. And McIntosh is called with a foul. He's not happy with himself. We've got an early sub for Auckland, number 14, coming into the game. Matt Drury gives McIntosh a breather. Big time. Tell us about Matt Drury, Keith. Matt Drury. Matt Drury. Good old Matt Drury. The alumni of Rosemary College. He's studying at BCOM in his first year. That's all we know about the kid. As Dan Powell makes the bucket. Now, oh, nice finish here on the break. Pesky yeah, defender. Powell. No missing a bell for Dan Powell. Victoria. No missing a bell. Shaken early by this Auckland team. But that's a great take from Leighton Palmer. Leighton Palmer coming up with a great start in this game, Keith. Yeah, really, really aggressive. Taking Crashing the ball. boards, yeah. aggressively driving to the hoop. He's had a play, and as he should be, it's a semi final. Expect to see less subs this game for those of you watching. Coaches usually do shorten their rotation as we get toward the business end of this tournament. It's not uncommon to see coaches play only even up to seven players in a final where they really shorten down their roster to their top players. Yeah, not uncommon at all. They, you know, you got to trust that tight knit group that you got, your best guys. And that is what it is. It is. We'll see if fatigue plays a factor. Both teams playing a lot of games over the last couple of days. Will it matter? Yeah, well, I don't know. Yes, I think I think it obviously it has to matter. Matouche. It doesn't matter as Car Car is there to collect up the garbage. Jake Car looking great already. Abdon looking to slice and dice. Stamp Powell from deep. Powell's kind of one of the guys we never really talked about as a key player, but yesterday, I mean, he got off to a great start. Oh, he's, yeah, it's just an absolute bucket. Bit of a spark plug for this Auckland team. Yeah. Speaking of spark plugs. It's Gerald. Take another look at this. He is solid, and he's tough to stop. He's really tough to stop. That's a hell of a bucket. He's very strong. I was talking about this yesterday. He's very, very naturally strong. You might not be able to see with his skin under there, but he does have some guns. The oh, boy's been in the gym. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can see he's solid. He's a solid frame. Very athletic. Didn't showcase it well there. Levan Palmer <laughs> says, if you want to bump me, take this. Gives it right back to him. A nice little one-on-one -on -one matchup going on. And that's going to be staying down this way. See a little bit more interaction with the refs in the, in the men's game here. Yeah, a lot more. All good natured banter, a lot on the line here for these guys. Is Leban Palmer pleading his case? Nikaide looking inside for Jury, can't get it to him. Car here. Can't get the layup to go. We're going the other way, Powell. Jury, massively. Guys like Jury are massive for teams. Guys like Drew, offensive rebounds. Absolutely. At this stage of the tournament, the stars are usually going to contribute. As we see Jacob Carr, it's going to be those role players that are going to make the difference here. Who's going to step up, get a couple buckets off exactly. the bench, contribute with some assists or rebounds? Exactly. It's those subs that need to get them over the line. Powell, never afraid to try and score. Never afraid. He always, always loves to score. Powell's got one thing on his mind, and that is buckets. Let's put the ball on the rim. He does not, not, not care about anything else. 
Natouche patiently working, but Abdon all over him. Inwards. Wow. Inwards, just a solid, solid presence for this Victoria team. Oh, he's a dog. He's an absolute dog. He'll go all day. Yeah, seems like it. He's fit. He does it all. Mikaire, wow. As he contests that shot from Watine. Yeah. Abdon versus Natush, this is a fun matchup. It's a good matchup, it's a good matchup. Both short bowlers, both athletic. Abdon's pissed. Oh, it's Powell, outlets it to Drury. Car, however. Wow, how did he get that? <laughs> good catch from Abdon, great finish. Take another look at it. Well, Victoria had stopped that. Look at that. Abdon did well to finish on the left side too. Natush surveying up top. Nice screen up top there. Gets Natush a nice driving lane to the bucket. Can't finish. Sammy Maguire setting a good screen there. He's a big body too. He's a big, big body, big body. Tell us a little bit about Maguire, Keese. Uh, the alumni of Sam Maguire is from Christ College. He is a law and commerce student and is sick. Yeah. Alrighty, and as we mentioned, he actually takes a well-deserved break. Jordan Lindboom into the game, the flying dunker. As we saw yes. yesterday, if you missed the action, Lindboom came flying through for an amazing putback jam. Probably the highlight of the tournament, I would say. Probably the only dunk. Oh no, Sam Powell just had on tape, my mistake. This one was right on the head. Wow, Ruben is just... Raymar, wow, oh. picking up where he left off. Man, look, the Victoria coach is not going to be happy with that. They will have seen Raymar get hot yesterday. Look at this. So far out. They'll be taking it back. As we watch that repaint, Natush just dribbles down and pulls up and drains one. Answering right back for Victoria is Powell to the hoop. We've got a blocking call. Auckland already in the bonus here. Yeah. This kid Raymar is very, very shifty. Wellington picks up their third team foul. We've got two to go in this first quarter. What are we going to see on this out of bounds play from Auckland University? Let's find out. Powell to inbound. Raymar and Ruben. Looking to get an early shot off here. Ruben shares down low. And Natush pulled for a foul. He wants the chicken wing. Ruben just too strong in that guard matchup. Yeah. He's a man out there. He's doing it again. He's, he's got more facial hair than any of these boys. <laughs> and he takes Natush down low and milks the foul that'll put victoria in the bonus now as natush picks up another foul could be costly for victoria as he's going to head to the bench number four coming in jet hirimi jet hirimi was great yesterday as well lots of timely threes really impressive his performance yesterday Look, Natush will be frustrated with himself there. Just ill discipline, picking up a second. Yeah, for sure. However, we'll see him back in the second quarter. There's Victoria bringing the ball up. Nice little behind the back pass from Carr. Moving the ball well. Can't get the corner three to go. Lindboom. Also, number six into the game, Trent Clarkson for Victoria. Jet hit him in. Not afraid to let it fly. Not the prettiest shot there, but just trying to find his feet. Oh, Raymar. Wow. Changed his mind in midair. Couldn't get the layup to go. Raymi with a very close double dribble there. Very, Not very seen close. by the referees. Raymar. There you go, showtime. Yero. And why? A blocking foul. He's loving it. As he should. Wellington here forced into some subs. They seem to be a little bit out of their rhythm here. 
Auckland Which, look amazing right now. I mean, R Rayma, bring him off the bench for Auckland. He could be a starter on any of these teams. Oh, 110%. He's really good at basketball. Six man of the year. When he comes in, he's looking to score. Your Jordan Clarkson type role. He's looking to get buckets. Hey, hey, let's not let's not describe the six man role as Jordan Clarkson for me. Come on. Who you, who would you say, Keith? Come on. Are we serious? Talk to me. Six man like Lou Will. Oh, Lou Will, of course. Keith, an uh, avid Clippers fan. Lou Will, obviously an old retired man now. No, I'm just kidding, hey, Keith. He's still in. <laughs> he's still in the league. He is, he is. Nah, he is a certified bucket. Greatest six man of all time, people. Auckland just stretching out their defense. Victoria really having to space out to get the ball around the perimeter. Is McGuire physical with Carr inside. Harimi from the top. Can't get it to go. Can't get it to go. We're going to head back this way. We've got one shot left in this quarter. Three second difference with the shot clock. Auckland will look to slow this down. Look for a pick here. Ruben. Ruben wants the last shot. ISO. Pulling it up. No go. Jacob Carr has time for one more shot. Carr. Oh. Decent look from Carr. Do we just see Ruben stomp the ball? That was. We might get another look at it there. Show us some more. I thought you oh. said he was a cricket player, not a football player, Keith. Uh, but it surprised me if he played top level football as well. It would not surprise me at all. <laughs> These guys are multi talented athletes that we're watching today. Welcome. If you've just joined us, we're down here at AUT on the north shore of Auckland. We're at the National Tertiary Championship men's final. This is the final game for us. It's a little bit sad, to be honest, Keith. It is a little bit sad. It's been a fun time commentating. Um, sorry, I just I gotta point out the fact that how weird is this remix right now? We've got some music in the background. We have a DJ here. It's finals day. AUT's got the music pumping. Keys not vibing to the beat. Oh, we've got Pony by Genuine mixed with Toxic by Britney Spears. <laughs> Look, it is a strange mix. I'm not going to lie. I don't know who the DJ is, but he's, he's working it. First quarter, we see Auckland take an eight-point lead against Victoria. Keith obviously came into this game picking Auckland. He's going to be happy. I'll be happy. We thought the shooters, Ruben Fitzgerald and Raymar Cruz, were the dangers here. Ruben, I think each player hitting one shot apiece. But yeah, there's been, three. It's been a team effort for Auckland. Yeah, everyone's scoring buckets. Dan Powell, early yeah. scoring as well. He's been strong in that first quarter. A little bit of foul trouble for Wellington. Natouche picking up two quick fouls on yeah. Fitzgerald. How's that going to play out for him? I mean, he's just got to be cautious when he gets in. I mean, there's, no, there's really nothing to it. You've just got to be cautious. Like, I'm, I'm sure they won't play him as much to, until the end of the game. But when he's in there, he's just got to be cautious. That's literally it. Let's Try not to foul him. as much. Auckland may be looking to go at him when he does return this yeah. quarter. Is Abdon getting ready to inbound this ball? Rema Cruz staying in the game here, and Fitzgerald taking a break for this Auckland team. First time we see for Auckland, number three coming into this game, Keese's ex teammate, Wuthrich. Tell us Joey, a little Joey, bit about Joey. his game for those of the viewers just joining us now, Keith. So he had a player comp. Player comp about him yesterday. Reminds us a lot of Slow Mo, aka Kyle Anderson of the Minnesota Timberwolves. Really awkward style of play. Re does everything really slow, but it randomly works. I'm sure he's going to appreciate your comments when he watches this game back. Hey, it's, it's, it's a compliment. <laughs> Kyle Anderson is a hooper. Don't get it twisted. This is a compliment. Do not get it twisted. Is Lindbergh picking up the ball from half court? This Wellington team with their pressure man-to-man -man defense. They're looking to switch everything at this stage. Yeah. Powell looking to get his hands in there. Jake Carr, not afraid of the contact. Abdon, down with the board. Looking to go. Finds Ray. Ray to Matt. Nice early seal there. He's got quite a skinny frame, Matt Drew. He is skinny, but he's he I mean, he's it. got length, doesn't he? Yeah, he uses it well. 
I can't help but think back to yesterday. In the semi-final, Victoria found themselves in a pretty similar spot yesterday. They were battling early against AUT, who was red hot. Yes, correct. Victoria, just such a consistent team. They stuck with their game plan. If we see that today, don't be surprised if they get back into this game. I think Tom's just trying to make himself feel better about his pick right now, guys. Look, for those <laughs> of you who didn't hear the start of the game, I went with Wellington. It's no fun if we both pick the same team, guys. Good point. Good Let's point. be honest. We need the banter here for the viewers. There's nice driving kicks from Victoria. Stolen by Maguire, who heads down the other way quickly. DP, Dan Powell. Dan Powell, not known for his far nice. He's getting buckets. <laughs> He's getting buckets. Trent Clarkson looking to get a bucket here, can't get that to go. Abdon hitting the other way. Raymar finds himself open on the break. Unlucky roll there. Abdon for three. Bang! Just feels like Auckland's controlling the tempo of this game, Keith. Really, really well. They're happy now sitting back in their zone defense. They're all locked in. Got another turnover. Lots of great defense from Auckland early. They need a timeout. Victoria forced to call a timeout. Talk about these two guards, Raymar and Terence Abdon. I mean, just Raymar, not too much known for his defense. Although he is pesky and he can move fast, but Terence, wow. He's in your face all the time. He's athletic, he's fast, changes direction well, busy hands, and you can see it. I feel like I'm watching an old Rosmini team. Those two used to yes. be the guards, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Causing chaos for the other team, stealing the ball at the top of that zone. And we see the same thing here today. Yeah. As Auckland extends that lead to 14. It's, it's ballooned early. It happened very quickly. I think Wellington going to be looking to insert Natouche back into this game quickly. He is in foul trouble. This is always the dilemma for a coach. Do you yeah. put your guy in the bench, stop the fouls. However, if you're not going to win without him, sometimes you got to roll the dice. Uh, yeah, I mean, they're going to have to roll the dice eventually. And I think you got to put some trust into Ruben, not the foul. Yep, you're not wrong there, Keith. We haven't seen it yet. Number six, Trent Clarkson, and number four, Jet Harimi, staying in the game for Wellington. They've brought back their big man, Big Sammy Maguire, who set some fearsome screens. Yeah, yeah, big time screen. Wellington moving the ball around here. Auckland active in their zone. Auckland boys are up for it. They are loving this. Wellington just out of rhythm as they bring the touche back in. I just feel like they've been missing him. He brings a really calming presence to the offense. Yeah, for as sure. The main facilitator case. And look, Ruben's right back to trying to seal and bully. He's Ruben. going at him. Smart move from Auckland. They want him to pick up that third foul. It's Ruben on Ruben crime these days. It's Wellington looking to get something on the break. And they get it. They get it. Maguire, great finish inside. Jeremy McIntosh. This has been the story all day long for this Auckland team. Even when they're getting scored on, they're so quick in transition. Yeah, they just get out and go. If they can keep this pace up, it's going to be hard for Wellington to get back into this game. Oh, it'll be very hard. Very hard. Wellington's not doing well for the pace right now. Um, Early days, however. Yeah. Even in that last game, Keeps, we saw the AUT women's team down 11 points in a similar situation, coming back all the way to win by six, so. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it is early days, but sometimes you gotta look at the early signs. Early signs, you think it's a trend? Only time will tell. <laughs> yeah. We'll have to see, yeah, we'll have to see. It's, a, it's shaping up to be a good game, though. Well, really good defense. Two free zones from Auckland. Really great defense out the back. Leban Palmer cleaning it up. 
unfortunate there. To be honest, you're right, Keys. I can't help but think this is the defense I expected from Wellington. Yes, what we're same. seeing from Auckland. Yeah, exactly the same. We talked about it yesterday on the broadcast. Wellington, of course, known for their defense. Pesky getting right out on the ball. Being physical, yeah. Wow. Wow. Seen that same wow. energy. It's Abdon taking the Tusha's ankles. Ruben saved by the foul there. He got absolutely swatted. You see happy. the replay of that beautiful Hokai Fakamuri from Terence Abdon. Could it get the shot to go? It would be more beautiful if he made it. But unfortunately, he can't make every shot in basketball. So, Keys, we're at the line at the Rarangi. Of course, this week being Te Reo Māori Language Week. Finishing the week off, Keys is our in-house Te Reo expert. Yep. Of course, training to be a teacher. He will be teaching the next generation of our rangatahi in Te Reo. He's the goal. teaching us a little bit of that as we finish off this tournament here today. I'll try to come up with some words for you guys later in the book. There's Rayma and Abdon. Get him in, just off. Ruben. Can't get the floater to go. That's a fun matchup. Who wins an armor showcase? This is a big question for you. Here we go. <laughs> Jacob Carr. Wow. Ruben Fitzgerald. Wow. Arm wrestling. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Let me let me take a look at Jacob Carr for a second. Don't look at the size of the arm. Look I'm at the size <laughs> of the heart, case. Sheesh. Sheesh. It's a tough one. <laughs> We've put him on the spot here, and he is clearly... <laughs> I think I'm going to go with Ruben. Puzzled. Ruben! I think the shorter arm makes for a better arm Keith, wrestling you arm. You clearly didn't pay attention in my 12 PE class when we talked about levers. Longer lever creates more force. <laughs> <laughs> However... But does, is, that, is that actually true for arm wrestling? It's actually true. A longer lever has the potential to create more force. Think about... You know, if you're using a lever to lift a rock, you don't want a short little stick, do you? Yeah, good point. As Natush pulls it for three, and that is going to be a foul on Jeremy what McIntosh. Are, what, are we, what do we say, Tom? What do we always say? We say, don't foul the jump shooter. Don't foul the damn jump shooter. If you're new to basketball, excuse us. <laughs> but <laughs> it's rule number one on defense here. Yeah. You know... Let the shooter shoot, contest the shot, get a hand up, but don't send them to the line. It's three freebies, and usually if they're a shooter, they're going to knock them all down. Natush, of course, getting the commentator's curse from Keith, <laughs> who's supporting Auckland here. We're halfway through the second period already. Score 27-40. It's quite a big lead already early. Wellington also finding themselves with 14 fouls midway through this quarter whether or not that it will affect the game time will tell <laughs> Natush two out of three from the line is McKaidi looking at inbound to Fitzgerald a little bit of full court pressure it's got I like it change the momentum of the game just going back to the arm wrestling I'm picking Jacob Carr okay I hey. mean you reckon I'd like to see it to be honest you know who I'm picking out of over both of them Inward. Inward. I think he's a dog. Okay. I think he rips a guy's arm off. <laughs> All right. And what do we oh, say? Another one. Abdon. The Auckland coach shaking his head, just saying, "Put your hand up, guys. Just put your damn put hand, your hand up. up. No need to foul." Wellington, not really hitting. Have they hit a three in this game? No, I don't think so. Forgive me if they have, but I don't remember any threes. We'll have a look at this again. Gets it out, Jacob Carr. Carr's Abdon. not complaining, is he? Just slaps his arm. It's sign out the back. The signs have been getting abused all weekend long. They sure have. Carr looking to make the most of these freebies. Just a little bit off his rhythm so far. Yeah, just a little bit off his rhythm, uh, scoring-wise, but defensively, and he's got a good couple of fine lines. I think it's just he needs to settle into his scoring a bit. But other than that, he's been good. The real question for me is where does Wellington get the offense from here today? Yeah, that's a good point. 
that is a good question. Where do they get the offense from? Who is going to step up and, you know, take charge of the offense? Has Abd on getting this offense going for Auckland. McKaydee setting some picks at the top. Fitzgerald looking for the ISO on Levan Palmer. Great look. Slow mo to the hoop. Wellington wanting a travel. Referee disagrees. He's going to be going to the line for two. Slow mo looking good on that drive. Referee's deliberating here. She says no, it's a foul. You're extending your forearm, no arguments from us. Withrich to shoot two. Crowd gone eerily silent in this building. I've just got to answer up the broadcast. I've just got a, a message from Scotty Telfer. Shout out Scotty Telfer. He said, Manu Ginobili, OG6 man, come on now. Scotty Telfer, I'm with you, man, to be yeah, fair. Yeah, that's, that's a fair call. There's a few out there. I mean, Jamal Crawford, there's a few legends. Yeah. But yeah, Ginobili, I mean, he could have been a starter, so he probably should get the mark. Oh, he's probably the best. He's probably the best six man, but I just think Lou will. I'm talking about, like, iconic. Keese is really fixated on his Clippers teams, um, no, Scotty. No, that's so not true. That's not true. Just take what he says with a grain of salt, mate. But he turned into six man when he was at the Raptors. Rutherich hits the three just as Wellington was starting to extend that full court pressure. That's Oosh. On the sideline. Bad luck. Just seems like nothing is going well his way right now. It isn't. They're really battling yeah. things here. Wellington coach striding up and down the sideline. He's wondering what he's going to do. Northridge. He's putting in work, but absolutely erased there from number five, Jordan <laughs> Lindbergh. Absolutely erased. I think he blocked that with his elbow. Jake Carr looking to get going. There he is. They need him too. They need they that scoring need from Carr. He's talking too. Chucked his hand up. He's out there. Mikairi. Back to Abdon. Abdon looking to go. Two quick follows, eh? Mikairi. And that is going to be a charge. Wellington loving it. Spewing. I don't have another look at this, actually. I'm not too sure. Look, pretty easy call for me there, Keith. Takes one right to the chops. Yeah, maybe I'm just not a big fan of charge calls. I feel like it's got a lot to do with momentum going backwards. I'm you're you. likely going to fall if someone touches your chest and you're running backwards. I'm with you. I you mean, know what I mean? Any extension of the arm or anything to the head area, I think they're just going to call it these days. It's Wellington. Great cut and pass there. The ball is rolling for Wellington now. Do not be surprised if there's a timeout for Auckland very shortly. Eight point game now. Wellington finding the offensive groove. Auckland with a dangerous team here. Offensively. Oh, very good hits on Ruben. Right Most there. of the starters in the game. Ah, wow, tough wow. team, but it doesn't matter. Fitzgerald hanging and hitting. He's a pro, ladies and gentlemen. He is a pro. Oh, really doubling the touche on their on-ball there. Carr wants it from deep. Don't know if it's a shot they need right now. Auckland running out on offense. Finds the Wellington coach. He's open for a reason. <laughs> Not too sure if that was the right shot selection for Jake Carr. I know it's a heat check, hits one. Tries to make sure if he's hot. But um, sure. Wellington were in a good position. I feel like if they got a, an inside shot, might have killed a bit more momentum. Yeah, good call there, Keith. Is Drury back into the game for this Auckland team? The two. Powell can't get that one to go. Wow. Leibon Palmer. Leibon She's Palmer. too small. Yeah. Abdul will not be appreciating that. <laughs> Leibon Palmer, strong, strong inside. I mean, he looks like a wiry frame, but... No, yeah, he's strong, he's tough. He showed us he's not afraid to bang down there. I want to see Mikaida insert himself in this game. Link. He tried to just then. Turns it over, isn't it? Touche. 
takes the hit and oh, makes it tough. count. It's exactly what Wellington needed right now. They make this a six point game. Could even reduce it to five here, Keith. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't count it that one. I think Ruben's a good enough shooter. I think it goes down to five here. All right. There it is. And we've got a timeout from Auckland. You pulled it, Keith. Yeah. Both teams in the bonus. Two minutes to go here in the second. And we've got a ball game. We got a ball game. Of course we do. You cannot count Victoria out too early. Just took them a, a, quite a long time to get into their groove. What's Auckland coach, what's he going to be saying to his players here? Cool it down. Get back to our basics. Yep. Get back to our defense. I feel like their defensive intensity is lacked. Uh, not clogging the pain as well as they, as, as they were doing. Just not contesting as much on defense, which you can contest without fouling, and they need to get in there and lift the intensity and contest. But Auckland, Auckland team not saying a lot in their huddle, to be honest. It looks like they're just using this chance to kind of regroup, stop this run from Wellington. Yeah. Look, they're a bunch of veterans. They play a lot of basketball together. I think they know what they need to do. They should go do it. They do. They need to just go do it. Hey, for those of you who are just joining us, welcome. We're here at AUT in the Auckland North Shore at our National Tertiary Championship. This is the championship game in the men's draw. This is the final game of the day. Hang around with us at 4 p.m. where you'll see the prize giving. Back to the live action here. Fitzgerald brings the ball into the front court. We're going to get busy here. Auckland moving the ball around. Jacob Carr with the steal. And he just goes over the top of the Auckland player and then flexes on him. Big time. It was a big time finish. Wellington looking scary right now. Dan Powell. He got up there. Brave to contest that yeah. shot. I was wondering if Carr was going to go in for the big time Kuru Topper. But he was happy with the layup. Might see one here. Lindbergh, the athlete, gets it ahead. Number five. That's a one point game, ladies and gentlemen. Inward with that layup. One point game. They've narrowed the game. It was a 14 point game. This is the secret theme of this tournament comebacks. Natush being on the court for this Wellington team. Really big. They missed him when he was out with foul trouble. Auckland potentially could look to go back at him down low. Yeah, they had a massive difference already. And he goes up through Fitzgerald. Very tough. He says, I want to arm wrestle Fitzgerald. <laughs> I don't think Ruben Natush is in the same, <laughs> same kind of yarns. He's got a few years Ruben of gym about. work ahead. Yeah, a couple, couple more. I think Ruben's just Ruben a man. Him. A grown man. <laughs> he sure is. Can't get that three to go. And we're down to 25 seconds left. Seven second difference with the shot clock here. Wellington looking to end the quarter with a good shot. As Levan Palmer setting the on ball, getting the switch. And Maguire, sorry, Powell reaches in there. Not the discipline Auckland needed. That'll yeah. send Wellington to the line for two. Just quietly, Vic's got the lead now. What happened? A drought. A drought, a scoring drought for Auckland. And not a drought for Victoria. They often needs to stick with what they're doing. Ill discipline like that could cost them at the end of this game. However, they are going to get the last shot of this quarter. 11 yeah. seconds, plenty of time for a good look. Look to see them get the ball to Fitzgerald here. Abdon looking across. Fitzgerald will want to get a bucket here to end the half, but Natush takes it away. He's going the other way. And Powell, Powell swats Great him. Time. It's a foul, they're calling it a foul. Let's they're have a little look at it. It's a foul. Powell serves I don't up know. a leather sandwich. I don't know, I really don't know. Natush says no thanks, I've had lunch. What are your thoughts? Foul or no foul? That was foul? a tough call. It was a bang bang play. That's where they pay these refs the big bucks. I think it only looked bang bang because they tripped up on each other afterwards. I think it's very deceiving. Like ah. I think the ref sees that afterwards and they're like, oh no, it looks bad. Which is fair enough, it does Rashid, look bad. Rashid Wallace would say, bull don't lie, as Natush misses the first. 
ball definite uh, that's this not a foul. Is the second. That is not a foul. Powell says that's what I'm talking about. That was clean. And we are already at half time. What a game here. Vic just storming back Massive from a 13 quarter. point deficit. 49-46. We're gonna take a short break. We'll be back with you soon for the third quarter. Go grab a drink, grab whatever you want to grab. Grab, grab, grab a, a snack. snack. Head to the Fare Paku. Up to you. Go arm wrestle someone and we'll be back <laughs> with you soon. <laughs> this is the University of Waikato, where every day people are making a positive change. Where research helps tackle global challenges and elite athletes can compete at the top of their game. A place where people are given the tools to protect their whenua for future generations. Where talent is nurtured and excellence is celebrated. It's a place where industry, innovation and education converge. And where moments are shared with loved ones. It's a place where teaching and learning has no borders. And people of all races and cultures work together as one. Our people, our future. Positive change starts here.
Kia ora, welcome back. My name's Tom Allen. I'm here with Key Screw Chance. We are at the National Tertiary Championship Men's Grand Final. After a fantastic first half where we saw a massive comeback from the University of Victoria, storming back from over 11 points down to take the lead. Keith, what are you looking forward to in the second half? Oh, I mean, I, I want to see more action. I want it to be a close finish, grandstand finish. I hope that happens. I mean, it looked like Wellington was dead and buried there going... You know, midway through that second quarter, the energy was flat. That was very flat. They yeah. were down big. You know, what, what changed for them? Uh, pushed the pace a bit more, gained some energy. Ruben Latouche was huge for them coming back in after being in foul trouble for a bit. Uh, they're just looking like Victoria again, like how we seen them yesterday against AUT. And they're out and they're going. Yeah, for those of you who didn't join us yesterday, they kind of, Victoria felt themselves in a similar position to this yesterday. They were down early. They're such a consistent team on offense, very disciplined. As we see, a last second shot there that doesn't go. Massive but Leibon Leibon Palmer. Palmer. And that's going to stay down this end. Yeah, Victoria, actually, sorry, it's going to go with Auckland. Victoria, so disciplined on offense. They stick with it. They don't get flustered no matter what is happening out there. It'll be interesting to see how Auckland respond here. Obviously, the big comeback from Victoria to take the lead out of the second quarter. That's how they're going to respond. How? I don't know what it is with the start of quarters, but their boy is hot. <laughs> he just gets out there and scores buckets. And now he's there getting a rebound. But it's stolen. But it's back. It's Fitzgerald. Pass ahead to Abdon. Who gets it back to Ruben, who takes it to the hoop. For very, a very confident drive. Easy drive. And Auckland back in the lead here. There's Natouche taking them to Europe on that one. Really, really nice move by Natouche. For those of you who are interested in live stats, we do have live stats online. Head over to nz.basketball slash competitions slash tertiary slash tertiary champs. We'll be keeping you updated here on Sky Sport Next on the YouTube channel. Thanks for joining us. It's a close one. 51 all people. That's exactly what a final supposed to be. Sure is. Of course, earlier we saw University of Victoria women's team unlucky to lose to a great AUT women's team. Yeah, very unlucky. AUT though, man. Give them, they deserve all the credit. They came out, they're versing a team with a tall fern in it and they came out and won. Yeah, never easy as Ruben Fitzgerald finds himself caught in the air. Ruben Natouche, Tommy. Ruben Natouche. Sorry, I was talking about the turnover that led to Natouche's oh, layup. Oh, yes. Always know what you're doing before you jump in the air. Power from deep. So Natouche snatches the rebound. He is such a key player for this Wellington team. You talked about him before the game, Keith. Yeah, definitely a key player. Not what, happy with the call there. What is it about Ruben that makes him so important for this Victoria side? Well, he's got all the scoring abilities in the world. We know that. We can see that he scores at all three levels. Um, but also, yeah, steady mind, and that's what they need sometimes. They need someone to calm the ship and then yeah. keep it moving. He does seem to just have... A really good control of the flow on offense. Yeah. Something that was sorely lacking when he did go off with foul trouble. Damn Powell. Powell. That was a funky finish, almost in. Loves the English. Yeah, he does love the English. He's not happy. He's slamming the court. The referees say, hey, no, don't do that. Uh, I'm not sure if that's all right to tell someone to calm down when they hit the floor. Powell giving everyone a lesson in pump fakes here. <laughs> I feel like I'm watching Kobe Bryant. <laughs> Natush in the corner. Finds Jake Carr back up top. Wellington moving the ball nicely. McIntosh just holding <laughs> Levan Palmer off with one hand. Grabbing the rebound. Coach, very vocal very for the vocal. Victoria Both team. coaches very animated this game. He wants to talk to Natush. Of course, a lot on the line here, Keys. 
This is the championship game here. The championship game. There's no prizes for second place. Lots at stake. There is, of course, a prize um, in terms of points for the overall university games, but these teams, they've come this far. They want the championship. Who doesn't? Who doesn't want the chip? Auckland here seem to be sticking with their core lineup, really only playing seven players in this game so far. I'm excited for Raymar to come back in, but of bring a bit of life to the squad. Make that eight. They've really been bringing the big men off the bench. Joseph Withrich, also Matt Drury. Yeah. We haven't seen a lot of other players as Abdon brings the ball over half court. Laban Palmer, did you see his nice finish just there again? Ruben, unforced error. Maybe a bit forced. Good defense from Ruben Latouche. Once again, Ruben on Ruben Crime. As Natouche inbounds the ball. Laban Palmer, just the glue guy for Victoria in this game. Oh, he's been everywhere for them. He's been everywhere. Here he goes again, finding Jake Carr. Unlucky on that one. Yeah, really under control of those drives, Laban Palmer. Yeah. And on a tough defender. As we've got your main man, Raymar Cruz, into the game, Keys. Excited to see what he can bring for this Auckland squad. A nice spark of energy, spark of scoring. He's hit one three. Are we going to see any more? Ah, uh, you'd be a fool to say no. I believe we are going to see more. Well, if Wellington wants <laughs> to win, they're going to have to shut him down. Yeah, for sure. Ruben's looking to go. This is McKaidi. Puts on a little spin cycle, as we know. That is Tucker Hoodie to spin in Tadeo. Perfect. Yeah. Natush. We're back and forth here, yeah, back, back and forth. jumping back into a five-point lead. It's an easy call for the ref, can't get the bucket to go. He wanted it. Lindburn just finds himself slightly out of position there. It's going to send McIntosh to the line. McIntosh has also been good this game, Keith. Oh, he's been really good. He's been really good this game. He's everywhere also. Very similar to a Laban Palmer type player, you know, gets his rebounds, finishes at the rim, and he's just a, he just goes hard all the time. He does. These guys are fit, you know, as we said, they're playing a shortened rotation. Coach doesn't care, but they're just going, they're going all day. I mean, as they should, for the last game of the tournament, leave it all out there. Look, we talked a little bit about cramp yesterday, but at the end of tournaments like this, fatigue is definitely going to be a factor in the second half. Jake as Carr. Carr. That was deep. That was really deep. We'll take another look at it here. Look, whip it right back. Money. Natouche. Off the screen, Natouche has just drawn a charge on Auckland. McIntosh shaking his head. The tides have turned, ladies and gentlemen. And although Victoria on three team fouls early, they have all the momentum right now. Already five minutes down in this third quarter. Yeah, it's it's been a miraculous comeback. I mean, you wouldn't have expected this to happen like this, in this fashion. And we're going to see a sub here for Auckland University. Number 14, Matt Drury, into the game. Good injection of height, good injection of length. For Wellington, Jake Carr, I don't think he's getting a breather until this tournament is over, Keys. Fair enough. I wouldn't take him off if I was the Victoria coach as well. Him or Ruben. Auckland into their zone defense here. Good find. Carr with a nice shot. Not bringing that ball down. Yeah. Straight into the shot pocket, letting it go. Ruben. Reminiscent of the European shooters, Sergio Rodriguez. Used That's a new that one. one. Uh, I've never seen Sergio Rodriguez. Wow, really good find by Ruben Latouche. Holy. And cars open in that far corner. Laban Palmer, though. Laban Palmer wants to take it himself. No call from the referee there. Well, throats. Out to Ruben. Looking up. Volleyball again. Wow. Ruben. So strong down there for a guard. Professional scorer. 
Have we player comped Ruben Fitzgerald, Keith? This is the final. For those of wow. you joining us, we had a few player comps yesterday comparing our players to the best players in the world. Who's a guard who likes to post up? Bully ball. That's tough. I mean, Westbrook is, yeah, is, is he, the post-up guard. He is quite reminiscent of Westbrook. Not as good a shooter as Fitzgerald, however. I think I honestly think Ruben is a better shooter than Russell Westbrook at this point. I don't think many people in, the, <laughs> in our audience are going to argue with you except for Westbrook's mum. Yeah. And we've got a timeout, folks. Score 63-56. Victoria, once again, finding themselves up by seven. Speaking of player comps, actually, give me a player comp for Jacob Carr. Jacob Carr. Wow. He's just an energizer bunny. Doing it all. Oh. I'm looking at the small forward position. I'm trying to think of a small forward. He's everywhere. He's absolutely everywhere. I feel like he's... I mean, <laughs> it's tough. It's <laughs> tough. If you're watching this... <laughs> Comment, send us in. Who is a yeah. great player comp for Jacob Carr? We'll get back to you. DJ here has got some beats pumping. <laughs> this is the final. We're at AUT on Auckland's North Shore. We've got a solid crowd in attendance. Keese is a little bit happier with the DJing right now. He was confused with the <laughs> earlier remixes. As the players get back on the court here, back into the action. Please. What are we going to look for here from Auckland to finish this third? What do they need to do to get back in this game, Keith? Uh, go back to how they were playing in the first quarter. It's their defense that's really lacking. Lots of holes in their defense now. It's just intensity. At this point, this is what I believe in finals in general. It's all about who wants it more at the end of the day. You can do as much planning and as much game planning and as Ruben Latouche just hits a three. Really starting to pile up this lead. But it's yeah, in effort. finals, yeah, it is a lot about effort and wanting to stay focused for longer. All right. Hey, look, I just want to come back to Jake Carr. I've got a player comp for okay. you. All right. This player is athletic, does a little bit of everything. Maybe not as dominant as Jacob Carr. Yeah. But Aaron Gordon is my comp. It's not a bad comp. It's really not a bad comp. Yeah, it's not a bad comp. It's Cruz for three. Maybe more more of an... And keep in mind, we're, we're, like, obviously, Aaron Gordon is much better than Jake Carr, but... A little bit undersized, you yeah. know, in terms of their position. Yeah. It does a little bit of everything, and we've got an offensive foul here. I think Jake Carr might be a little more offensively skilled than Aaron Gordon. Bear in mind, we are talking Aaron Gordon <laughs> not, of the Denver Nuggets here, folks. Not actually either like that, but I'm talking in perspective of this game. Keys, okay. I see what you're saying, you know what I, mean? I absolutely see yes, what you're I, saying. Uh, yes. Is Natouche to the hoop? Referee th waves off the basket. I think if we dropped Aaron Gordon in this game right now, in whatever team, they'd win by 50. Aaron Gordon, of course, not just a basketball player, but a movie star. Seen in Uncle Drew. <laughs> I've never watched Uncle Drew. It looks terrible. Come on, Keith. <laughs> Call yourself a basketball fan. Come watch Uncle Drew. Nice pocket pass by Natouche. I'm Space Jam Coach Carter. That's it. Maguire can't quite finish there. Space Jam Coach Carter. For our viewing audience there, of course, is many beautiful basketball movies. Love and basketball is also good. Keys, I gotta recommend White Men Can't Jump. Oh, oh yeah, true and Come absolute classic. Absolute classic. He got game. Glory Road. Blue chips. So many. Oh, blue chips is good. You've got a lot of viewing to do, man. And Maguire casually swishes that first free throw. Quietly an eleven point lead. Yeah. Look, Victoria here. Just so consistent, chipping away. Yeah. They play so well. They don't let the game get to them. They play the same way, no matter what's happening, whether they're up or down. Auckland really struggling to stay together here. Does look very um, independent type play. Yep. That might be. See, that's why. That's why Matt Jury and guys like that are good spark plugs. Even though they went the way of Victoria. He's in there, his hands are in there, and he's being aggressive. That's what they need more of. 
They definitely do. Natouche is going to the line here. The Wellington bench absolutely fired up. They're loving this. They, uh, deservingly so. They were down by 14 in the first quarter. Crowd here going quiet. Yeah. We're not... I mean, we are at AUT. Auckland still, you know, has a home crowd advantage with a lot of people here to see them. They're a little bit stunned with what's going on here as McKaidi flies for that board. Raymar Cruz, can he get something going for this Auckland team? Powell, always looking to score. Shot clock, under 10 now. Cruz, and we've got it's a, a big foul. foul. It's a big foul. Leban Palmer called for the blocking foul. Cruz going to go to the line here as we see a replay. And it did look like Leban Palmer was moving forward as he jumped there. That's going to be his fourth foul for those watching. That is a big, big loss for it's Victoria. It's a huge loss. It's a huge we, loss. Um, we might not see him again till well into the fourth, depending on what the coach thinks here. Number five is going to come into the game. Jordan Lindboon. The dunker. The dunker. Speaking, of course, of that. Amazing tip back Kurutopu that we saw yesterday when he flew in over AUT and slammed it. Do check that out on yesterday's highlights. It was very good. Very good dunk. All highlights, of course. You can go back and watch and on Sky Sport Next on our YouTube channel. As Carr to the hoop for a flowing right hand. We've got less than two minutes left in this third quarter. It's a back and forth game here. Auckland suddenly struggling to put the ball in the hoop as they find themselves on only 56 points. And that's going to be going wow. with Vic. Auckland need to find their flow on offense. Fitzgerald saying, what is going on here? That was off Victoria. Referees disagree. Inward to inbound to Natush as he brings the ball up here. Critical two minutes here in the game for Auckland. They need to find something offensively. Wow, tough call there. Number 14, Matt Drury called for a foul. He thinks he got all ball. From our angle, to be honest, it did look like all ball. It did look like all ball. But the referee is down there courtside. It's going to send Lindboom to the line. Can't convert the first one. Crowd here urging Auckland on. They want something to cheer about, anything. I mean, it is only 14 points and, and Matt this Drury. might be it. Drury going for the Kuru Topper. Doesn't get it to go. Great hustle back there from Victoria. Natouche controlling the tempo here. Maguire to the hoop. Nice kick out. Oh. Good little drop off pass there. Nice little drop off. Couldn't connect. Matt Jury. And nine on the clock here. Natouche to sit for a quick minute's break. Yeah, As they're Victoria. all good. They're, they're, they can rest their guys. Five seconds. See, Five those seconds. are the kind of plays that can turn momentum. They do. And look, we've seen that time and time again yeah. when Natouche goes to the bench for this Wellington team. He just keeps the composure going for them. Yeah. Hopefully they can hold on with this one minute to go in the third. And that's a turnover from Cruz. Puts his head down. And Carr, he's looking at his hand again. It's back. It's We're back. in trouble. It's back. We're out in trouble. Last time he looked at his hand, oh. Last time he looked at his hand, he was MVP of the game. And AUT did not want to be there. Powell stepping back. Can't get that one to go. Victoria all over this game right now as they look to control the tempo here. We've got about a 12-second difference with our shot clock and game clock. Cruz defending. Inward. He kicks it to the corner. Wow! 
Limboom. Massive three from Limboom. Holy. Extends the lead to 19. Big time shot from Limboom there. Easy shots when you're up. Raymar looking for the answer. Just off. Dan Pell. Terence Abdon able to cut the lead to just. What is it? It's going to be 17 when they update the yeah, score. We'll 17. see when that comes. Wow. Well, I mean, I mean, we're kind of in shell shock here. Yeah, I don't really know what to think. I don't know how Auckland have... I don't know what's happened. First quarter, we had a tight game, folks. If you just joined us, second quarter, Auckland up big, 11. Yeah. Looked like Victoria completely gone. Third quarter, Victoria just absolutely dominating. Auckland cannot get a bucket. Yeah, it was crazy. Well, look, I'm excited for this fourth. Hopefully, Auckland can get back into this game. Keith Scruchans is stunned because he did pick Auckland <laughs> prior to this game. He doesn't know what to say. And look, to be honest, I empathize with him. I don't know what's happening for this Auckland team. We want to take this chance just to shout out our sponsors, Basketball New Zealand, of course, putting on this event at AUT. We're here at the National Tertiary Championships. I'm your host, Tom Allen. I'm here with Keith Scruchans. We've been here since yesterday. A fantastic event here. If you want more info on this event, if you want to see any results, check out the game on Sky Sports Next on our YouTube channel. You can also get up-to-date scores on Basketball New Zealand. Don't forget, check us, check out our social media. I just and got to quickly shout out the referees. We've got Regan Ashley, Harry Apes, and Brittany Young. Shout out to them. They did a fantastic job tonight. These referees selected for the final, for their great performance over these last couple of days. Not an easy game to referee. A fast-paced affair. Competitive, but they're doing a great job today so far. 17-point lead going into the fourth. Players are out on the court already, and we've got, what, 22 seconds left in the timeout? They're keen to get this game going. Wellington, one quarter away from snatching this championship. Can they do it? Can we'll be do hoping it? that they do. The Victoria girls who unfortunately lost their final earlier, they're down courtside supporting their brothers here. The, a the Victoria men's team is Abdon gets set to inbound the ball to Fitzgerald here. Auckland's gonna need to strike first. They need something special to get back in this game. Yeah, they do need something very special. A little bit of technical difficulties here. Nice shot of Jet Hiremi. Our score bench doing a great job. They're getting the clock sorted. The shot clock. Of course, volunteers here working for the love of the game. Shout out. Tournaments just don't go ahead without people like that. Bang on. Bang on the money there, Tom. You know, we all know tournaments like this, such a memorable experience, especially when you're a young person. Got a lot of tournaments happening over the next wee while. Want to just highlight the under 13 Aeon under 13 regionals that will be happening in Auckland, Napier and Ashburton from October. That will be on October 12th to 15th. Make sure you do tune in for those. We're ready to kick off the fourth quarter here at AUT as we get underway. Fitzgerald facilitating from the top, Abdon. Auckland, good urgency on offense. And the referee calling a kick ball. McIntosh frustrated with himself there. We're going to head back the other way. I think the whole of Auckland is disappointed. Abdon looking to extend the pressure here with Fitzgerald. They're going to need to force many, many turnovers. Jake Carr. Carr. Jake Carr gets up. Back up and under. door layup is good. Get another look at it here. Back door on the right side, finished. That's pretty. Contested by McKaydee. And down the other end, McIntosh is going to go to the line. Look, not the start Auckland wanted Keys. Oh, not the start at all that they wanted, but like we say, it's not over till it's over. 
They find themselves in a position here. They can't just go trading buckets with this Victoria team. They're going to need to do it on both ends of the court. Yeah, they cannot trade buckets with this Victoria team. If they end up doing that, score's going to stay the same. McIntosh <laughs> says, not close encouraging. the window. <laughs> Shut the damn window. Keith wondered what they were doing with the windows open down there. It's breezy. We it's had a couple of air balls yesterday. We had a couple this morning as well before you came. It's our first one of the finals. As Powell defending. Switching off wow. to Ruben. Wow. Man, Lynn Bond, Bond, Bond gets such up. an athlete. Yeah, he gets up. I think it's easy to say he's the most athletic guy on the court. Yeah, for sure. He just skied there as Auckland into some motion offense. McKaydee with the left hand off the glass. Pretty finish, Very nice finish. from Watane. As the big from Victoria bringing the ball up, Sammy Maguire. And uh-oh. Uh-oh, jeepers. I almost jumped up out of my chair. Watane altered that shot. And Powell saying thank you. Thank it's you. about time. Yeah. We're going to see a replay of that one as nice push from McIntosh. Powell. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure where I saw the foul. Maybe. I think just a little bit out of position there. Salia. Enough contact to cause the miss. He's going to the line. Maguire. Sorry, Powell just frustrated. Fair enough. I mean, it's been a frustrating second half for this. Um, Auckland team. Maguire traditionally, Powell, sorry, starting quarters really well. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure where Maguire is coming from. As Victoria gets into their half court set. And Victoria's doing all this while Natush is off. It's a great point, Keith. Yeah, it's. They're ballooning the lead without Natush. It's almost at 20. It's got to be concerning for Auckland. Look at this again. As Jake Natush Carr. steps to the scorer's table. That's why you always crash the, the, crash the boards, people. Inward. Oh, Mr. Dirty Work. I think that's the difference maker there for me. Yep, Inward has been everywhere. As Carr. Carr's just taken over. I don't crazy. like the look of this for Auckland. I do not like the look of this for anyone who's picked Auckland before the game. <laughs> yeah, who Jeez, picked I'm Auckland sorry. before the game? It wasn't me. Sorry to put you on the spot <laughs> here. No, look, they look shell-shocked right now. They do look shell-shocked. There's still enough time. Anything can happen here, but things don't look They've got to get really Auckland hot. Right now. They've got to get really hot ASAP. They've got their heads down a little bit, and on the other side, Wellington just has all the energy, everything's going their way right now. Yeah. It's really hard to change the momentum once it gets rolling. I know, exactly, and man, they're rolling. They're rolling. They are rolling. We'll see if this crowd can get Auckland back in. A little bit of a home crowd here as we are on the North Shore at AUT Stadium. Referees about to call these teams back in. If Auckland has any chance here, they need to make it happen soon. Oh, it needs to be a statement, statement first half of this fourth quarter. If they can't narrow it down, they need to narrow it down to 10 by five minutes. Look to see some changes in defense, maybe even some full court from Auckland, as they just need to pick up some quick, easy buckets yeah, here. Yeah, for sure. Nice patience on offense as McIntosh. Mikaida has really come alive. Great tip back. Yeah, in recent times. And they're going to need a lot more of that. And they need stops. Honestly, it stops. They can score. I'm worried about defense. There's Maguire setting a pick for Carr here. Carr showing everything with a floater. Can't get that to go. Need that. Fitzgerald just struggling with that long ball. He hit one early. Yeah, in the first. But since then. Wow. Oh. 
Ruben Natouche, take a bow, my brother. Natouche up and under, English off the glass with the left. Ruben, Ooh. right back. Nice move from Ruben. See, good, great offense, but problem is you can't trade. We told you this earlier. When you're down by this much, you cannot afford to trade buckets. It's not going to be enough. Yeah. They need to get stops here. If they can hold Victoria to under 95, you know, 90, <laughs> they've got a shot. But, you know, scoring 65 in a final, unfortunately, it's just not going to yeah. be enough. Yeah, never be enough. Here's Natouche bringing the ball into the middle. Leban Palmer set to pick. Speaking of MVPs, I think Ruben Natouche is clear cut for me. It's going to be your interview? Probably. Looking forward to Jake some. Jake Carr has been unreal as well, but. Oh, wow. And we've got a foul call. What do you reckon, Tom, for MVP? MVP, I mean, Carr has done it all. However, we picked him yesterday. I love variety. Variety is the spice yeah. of life. Let's go with Natush. I like it. With him on the court, they've been unbelievable. Yeah, I agree. I agree. There have been contributions from all players, though. I mean, Leban Palmer, in particular, has had a strong game. Oh, strong as game, yeah. Can't look past Aston Inwood. He's been great. Even Mr. Athlete Jordan Lindboom coming in, making some big plays. For sure. You've got your pick of the interviews, I tell you that. I just think that you noticed how much they missed Ruben on the court this game. Yeah. If he wasn't on the court, they missed him a lot. When he was on the court, that's when they were on. No arguments from me, yeah. Keith, on that point. It's it is hard. Jake Carr has came alive this last quarter. He has. I feel like he's the heart and soul of this yeah. team. Almost like a dream on green for Golden State. You know, he brings a little bit of everything yeah. to this Wellington team. His Abdon, nice little floater. Good little floater. Auckland extending pressure here. Looking to get a quick turnover. Instead, they foul. That's going to be their second team foul. If you think about it, it's five threes unanswered it's pretty it's tough not that hard. <laughs> it's not that hard it's not it's not <laughs> i mean we've like seen we it seen before it. we've actually seen it before yeah. yesterday for those of you who weren't joining us yesterday almost a steal there auckland started absolutely on fire with Cruz and fitzgerald just hitting four threes in a row each oh yeah yeah four threes in a row each and we've got a flyby natouche can't make it count. They Referee stops the game. As you see, the Auckland coach not happy. He's wondering, can I suit up? Can I get on the court? <laughs> can I please jam? And we have some moisture on the court. Natouche doing just an excellent job. With the towel there. <laughs> really working that towel, Ruben. Good stuff for me. <laughs> As Victoria to inbound the ball here. In terms of Auckland, who would be your player of the game for Auckland, Keith? Or who do you want to interview, really, is the question. I don't know if I actually will interview someone from Auckland. I think we need to get both teams here. I'd love to hear what they were thinking, you know, up 10 early and then just oh. falling apart. I'm just thinking, if I was in Auckland's shoes, I would not want to interview right now. It's part of being a professional athlete, unfortunately. <laughs> Lucky they're not professional. <laughs> we'll wait and see how we go as Fitzgerald controlling the ball up top. Nice passing from Auckland. Can't get the long ball to go. And Natouche trying to go all the way. He's fouled. He's going to be going to the line. They have an absolute stranglehold on yeah. this game. Yeah. Absolutely. I feel like it is nearing to the point where we can start to say, Victoria are your champions. As Watini and Drury enter the game, Keith giving up on your team so early. Uh, oh, it's not. It's not. I'm being realistic. It is. We're late in the game. It's hard for me to see you like this, mate. <laughs> for those of you who can't see, Keith 
He looks disheartened. <laughs> also tired, people. But we move. We've been here, team, for those of you listening, since 10 a.m. yesterday. We had six games in a row, some great viewing. Five games today? Four. Four games today. So Keith was here in the morning. I've joined him at lunch. It's been a pleasure to be with you all for these games, for this National Tertiary Championship. As Natouche drains his first free throw. Knocks it down. We've seen everything. Seen We've crazy seen comebacks. Some crazy comebacks, some highlights, some player bios. Player comps. We've had comps. <laughs> Fun facts about the players. We've learned a lot about these players who are not just students or athletes. Victoria just controlling play here as we wind down almost four minutes left here in this game. Carr can't get it to go. Looking to put it to bed was Carr. Crowd here seem resigned to the fact that Wellington probably going to take the championship home here, Keith. Yeah, I mean, and as they should. It has not been an impressive outing. Their first quarter was amazing from Auckland. Dan Powell trying to will his team back into this. Gets one to go, narrowing that lead back to 15. I mean, don't count it out. <laughs> Look, if. <laughs> Auckland goes on any sort of run here. I think the coach of Victoria will be calling a very prompt timeout. I think Ruben's just he's putting his stamp on the game. Auckland just once again unable to stop Victoria on offense. Auckland certainly has come back with the offense this quarter as Abdon shooting for three. Can't get it to go inward with a big re rebound. Oh, wow. Skying, trying to dunk Lindboom. Can't get that one to go. Gap's narrowing here, people. He was looking for a poster on that one. Still 15-point deficit here for Auckland University. Victoria very wisely controlling the clock, running some time down. His shot clock down to 6-5. Oh, that was an awkward looking landing for Leban Palmer. He's all right, he's up, but that's going to be an over the back foul. We've got Auckland University ball and subs coming into the game. Big man from Victoria, Maguire. Back here. Maguire. Drury also taking a breather. Fitzgerald taking it. What I thought was a sub, but it was actually yeah, just a quick drink. I thought it was bench. a sub as well. Auckland coach opting not to play Raymar Cruz here. What's your thoughts on that, Keith? Interesting. I feel like if you need, what do you need right now? Points? And you got one of your best shooters sitting on the bench. And that, that just describes the second half. It sure does. That right there. Auckland doing a much better job of scoring the ball. Wellington not content to just lay back and take the win here. They're full court pressuring. However, it leads to an open three from Mawatane. Mikaili, it's come alive. 12 point game. Wellington bench all standing up here, willing their boys on. That's a foul. 12 point game here. 12 point game, a lot of energy I mean, here. Don't get is it too little too late? Maybe. Maybe it is. Yesterday in that women's semi-final that wasn't shown on TV, I mean, we went from a seven-point lead to a zero-point lead in about 15 seconds. Yeah, well, I mean, don't count it out, actually. Fitzgerald, long ball, great rebound from Akaidi, who spins baseline. This is, gonna be huge. this is going to be huge. This is going to be huge. Oh, if that had wow. gone down, we would have been looking. Yeah, it would have been ball game. Would have been ball game on. At game on. Wellington, just too composed this here. This burst of energy is just a little bit too late for Auckland. 
It is. I would have liked to have seen this early in the fourth quarter as Natouche flyby wow. kicks it to Carr. Can't get it to go. Powell's going to pull up from deep. He loves it. He screamed at it. That is a shooter's roll, making it a 10-point game. We've got one minute left here. Are we right person see a to foul. Out? It's a foul. Right person to foul. A little Limbong. bit of chat between the Auckland coach and the bench here. I don't Wellington. Think, have you got the points added yet? I don't believe so. I don't believe so. It should be a nine-point game, folks. This is the right person that fouled. And you're on to it, Keith. Yeah. The points are now added. 91-82. Just over a minute left. I mean, far out. Lindbergh at the line misses his first. Did I give the coach's curse to Victoria? And Lindbergh again missing his second. A little bit of pressure for Wellington for the first time this half. Powell looking for any opportunity. Fitzgerald, we know what he wants to do. And that is out of Wellington. It's good defense. Inward trying to sell it to the ref. Nine on the shot clock here. And Fitzgerald... Fouled in the corner by Carl. Holy, this is... <laughs> Auckland could not ask they can't. <laughs> for more here. Clock has stopped. Maybe a, a four-point play is the only thing they could ask for more. Exactly. That is the only <laughs> thing they could ask for more. They're looking to make this a six-point game <laughs> if Fitzgerald <laughs> can hit all three here. This is crazy. Is this going to be a crazy finish? Wellington just taking their foot off the gas here. It's now an eight-point game, ladies and gentlemen. Are we looking at this seriously concerned or not? I don't know. I hope you're still watching at <laughs> home. <laughs> Many may have turned off their TV, but it is certainly not over here at I AUT. I probably would have turned off my TV as well, if I'm being honest. And Fitzgerald, ice in his veins, drains all three. The Wellington coach That's wants to time. talk it over. Six-point Six. game here. Keith. What are we saying? I okay, mean, what are we doing if we're Auckland right now? Oh gosh! You gotta lock in and you gotta knock down shots. That's literally it. There's no other recipe to win this game. Lock in. You get open. You shoot the damn ball and you make it. Does it need to be threes? Um, yes, it does. And actually, that reminds me. I should probably go down for yep. the interview. All right. You look. You head down, Keys. We're gonna get some post-game interviews. All the best as we wind up for a very exciting finish here of what we thought was game over. Victoria University up 20. Looked like they were at cruising to victory in this quarter. Auckland also seemed resigned to that fact. But over the last three minutes, Auckland just catching fire, getting a few shots. Wellington taking their foot off the gas. They'll be kicking themselves for letting Auckland back into this. But still, a lot of work to be done if Auckland does want to win this game. We are here at the National Tertiary Championships. If you're joining us now, you're coming in late. However, thanks for joining us. The winner of this game will take home the trophy. Wellington looking to inbound the ball here. Auckland, what looks to be a full court trap of some sort they need to get some extra possessions here looking for a steal are they going to trap Powell does look to trap can they get the eight second very close Wellington lucky to get the ball over they're looking to run time off as Maguire kicking it back out to Matush Maguire setting a screen Matush nice drop off inward can't get it to go. However, he's going to go to the line. 30 seconds left. If he can make any of these shots here, it's going to make life extremely difficult for the Auckland team. And that's going to be the fifth foul on Jeremy McIntosh. He goes to the bench. Matt Drury comes in to replace him. Pretty good overall performance from Jeremy McIntosh. He'll be disappointed he's not in to finish this game. However, we have a miss from Inwood. 
Wellington team looking nervous down there on their bench as Inwood to shoot his second shot here. Another miss, Abdon flying in. Wow. What a passage of play there in that game. We may see a rebound here. It looked like Abdon flying in. Could have been called for an over the back. It's not called. And we get a foul on number five from Wellington, Lindboom, which will send Makaide Watini to the line. Only one second going off the clock here. And they are looking to reduce this lead to four. Kisku Chans down courtside here. He doesn't know who he's going to interview. It's Watini. Rainbow gets it to go. We're down to a five point game. Crowd here not believing what they're seeing. And he misses the second. Car with a huge rebound. He's fouled. Foul. Who's it going to be called on here? Referee communicating with the bench. At this stage in the game, it could mean players heading off when they reach their fifth foul. That'll only be number two as Carr to the line. Can he hit these free throws? A little bit of noise from the bleachers. It doesn't matter. Jake Carr clutch with his first. Extending that lead to six. He can't make it seven, but a big rebound from Inwood. Throws it out of bounds. It's gonna be Auckland Bull. There's plenty of time, 22 here. They need a very quick hitter. Whether it's a three or a two, they're gonna be looking for whatever shot they can get. As Fitzgerald into the front court. Time ticking off the clock here. They need to get something going. Watini to the basket with the left hand. Gets his own rebound, ball in, and Abdon fouls Natush, 9.9 on the clock. It's a four-point game. Great urgency from Auckland, every second critical at this stage. We're going to head down this end. Natush is going to have a chance to ice this game. I think if he hits two here, six is going to put this game out of reach for Auckland. Already a two-possession game, makes it five. Look, it's going to be pretty tough for Auckland to come back. Natush, clutch, clutch free throws. We have a timeout from Auckland. They're going to need something special. I don't know if there's enough time here. Wellington, University of Victoria with an amazing performance here today. If you didn't join us for the whole game, in the first quarter, Victoria found themselves down 11, even in the second, as they stayed with their game plan. Consistent offense, not being phased by the hot shooting of Auckland. Auckland's offense fell away in that second half, and Wellington stormed to a 20-point lead. In the box seat, going into the fourth, Auckland coming back very late in the game here, leaving their run to the final three minutes. Bring it back to four has been a great effort. But it could be too little too late for this University of Auckland team, the defending champs here, as we did not see a competition last year due to COVID. Auckland winning the last competition back in 2019. Are we going to see a new champion here today? We're going to find out as Abdon inbounds. Watini to the hoop looking for the quick bucket. He gets it. If Auckland foul quickly here, they do. Referee not calling the first bump, but a really disciplined effort there from Auckland. 6.3 on the clock. We've got a four point game. They need some free throw misses here. If Wellington keeps their cool, they're going to cruise home as Natush again goes to the line. I, for one, hope Key Screw Chance is going to be interviewing Natush. He's been the man of the game here. 
unlucky to miss that first one. His presence on the court has just kept Wellington calm throughout the ebbs and flows of the game. As he knocks down the second, Auckland without any more timeouts to advance the ball here. Ruben lets one last shot go. Watane rebounding, and we have a new champion of the National Tertiary Championships as the Victoria boys storm the court. Great scenes here at AUT on Auckland's North Shore. Wellington pumped. What a game and what a tournament for this University of Victoria team. The coach is happy. Jacob Carr is pumped up. Given his coach an affectionate noogie, Auckland will be disappointed. However, they should hold their heads high. Making this final has been tough. As they huddle as a team, congratulating each other on what's been a fine effort, they will be disappointed. Looking to add another championship to their bow, they don't do it today. As the players line up to shake hands here, it's been a great, great tournament. Thank you for watching on Sky Sport Next on our YouTube channel. Remember, you can go back and watch other games okay the award ceremony will be coming up we're gonna have key screw chance in a second gonna be bringing us some live interviews from courtside as the players congratulate each other please stick around for this award ceremony we're gonna be going live to center court soon what a tournament what a win victoria coming back and it looks like Kisku Chans is going to be interviewing Natush. And we go. All right, live. we're here with our MVP of the night, Ruben Natush. How did you boys do it? 14 points down, came back and won it. It is what it is. I got my brothers. I got my brothers. Hey, we just stick to the game plan, do what we needed to do, and we got the dub. We came back. That's all we're about. That's all we're about. Up Vic. Love it, boys. Any plans for celebrations tomorrow? Oh, coach is getting a mullet. Um, can I shout out the boys back home? Shout out Boo Boo. Shout out Tony. We did it, baby. Hey, hey shout out it. to my mom and dad. I'm a national oh, champion yeah. now. Yeah. Let's go. Right, let's what go they boys. Say, Enjoy yourselves, boys. Wow, great scenes courtside there. Coach getting a mullet. I'd love to see that for the Wellington team. Keith, you know, thank you for interviewing Natush. Those boys excited. Great to see Jake Carr in that interview too. For Victoria, it really has been a team effort. I think they were the best team here in this tournament. Not relying on just one or two players, but everyone looking to contribute. As we see AUT, sorry, University of Auckland just with a final team huddle there. A disappointing finish to what has been a really successful overall tournament for them. We will have the award ceremony coming up here very soon as we present the championship of these national tertiary games to a victorious Victoria University. We've been here for the last couple of days. If you've been watching, it's been some fast and furious action. Winning team in the women's grade. We just saw the final earlier where the University of Victoria unlucky to lose to a dominant AUT women's team. Home team taking that game out. And as you saw just earlier, as we see teams making the most of this photo opportunity, Team Auckland, look, they look disappointed and they have every right to be. As you see on your screen, please stick with us. We've got the award ceremony coming back. We'll be coming up soon. We're going to show you a couple of highlights just as we get prepared here. So, hey, stick with us. Enjoy these highlights. And we'll be back soon with the award ceremony.
the school bench, but we had we had tons of people floating around here helping out, including uh, photographers. Um, so if you're on social media, um, do a heaps of them. So please put your hands together for all the volunteers. Uh, Stuck this on in here, that's a Jordy, Jay, and the rest of the VNZ crew. Um, I put a piece of work behind the scenes to, to put this together, so thanks, team. Uh, one more group that I forgot about, but I can't miss. The guys, you wouldn't have heard too much of them, but our commentators up there, they've, they've had a big shift these last couple of days, so uh, please put your hands together for them. And lastly, to all of you guys, the athletes, the team managers, uh, the staff, the coaches, the assistant coaches, there's a whole lot of you. Um, thanks for supporting, promoting, uh, and making this an awesome event, so thank you. All right, I'd just like to call up the Technical Commissioner, Melanie O'Connor, to hand out the final's official medals. Um, kia ora koutou. Just on behalf of Basketball New Zealand, I will just reiterate and thank the um, referees for the weekend. Um, we've had a very demanding year this year and most of them have been turned up to all our national champs. So thanks a lot for giving up your time and volunteering. So um, just to call on the refs, we've got Marshall, then we've got the bronze medal games, um, Campbell, O'Keen and Terry for the men. All come up, thanks guys, quickly, we're not stuck around. Our bronze medal for the girls was Jilly, Katie and Sam. Then the women's final was, sorry, um, um, Danielle, Michaela and Nick. Yeah, thank thank you, you, boys. Come up, Marshall, you're up too as well. And then um, for the boys, we've got Regan, Harry and Brittany, thanks. Okay. <laughs> 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 That's why I'm not PC, I can't do it all properly. Yeah, do you want one, Mel? No, no, we'll leave it. Right, eh? <laughs> yeah, I'll call up Jason. I'll just explain these couple of awards and then call up Jason. We all just awkwardly watch. Uh, before we get into the team awards, I'd just um, like to explain a couple of a couple of awards that we have uh, from a UTSNZ perspective. Uh, the first one is this piece down here, the overall shield. Uh, there's a bit of contention around its age, but it's about 100 years old. Um, so all of these UTSNZ National Tertiary Championships contribute uh, points towards this overall shield. So. This is the third to last event for the year. We've still got rowing and netball championships next weekend. Uh, and then we'll be awarding this um, at the end of the weekend. So coming into this weekend, you see we're on top by about three points uh, in front of the University of Auckland. So I think they would have maybe claimed a couple of points on top. But two big events to go um, before we hand this, this thing out. So that's all on the line next weekend. The other one uh, which your, your team should be well aware of is the Spirit Awards. So um, at all UTSNZ events, this, we kind of stole it from the, the sport of Ultimate Frisbee. Um, it's, it's an award that recognises um, one, one team in particular uh, based on, on a range of criteria, but essentially it's uh, their sportsmanship, uh, having a positive attitude and having respect for uh, each other and the officials at all times. Um, so we'll announce that shortly. I'd just like to wel welcome up um, the New Zealand Under-15 Boys Assistant Coach, Jason Crummer, to help with medal presentations. Yeah. Uh, so the first award is, is the Spirit Award, um, and two teams from the same university actually stealing points off each other and battling it out uh, for, for these medals. Um, at this year's champions, the University of Waikato Women.
Yes, so they won it by one vote over the men's team. Right, moving on to the, the women's team awards, uh, starting with this year's bronze medalists. Congratulations to the University of Otago. Moving on now to the women's runner-up for 2022, Tehiri Nawaka of Victoria University of Wellington. <laughs> Three. Can we please have the captain to announce the players up? Um, Freya, Lena, Rose, Jenna, Izzy, Soraya, Kata, T, Taya, we got Coach Eric and Bailey. Maybe hold on to the next ones just in case we need them for the next. <coughs> and then I can hook them up. And now for your women's champions in an epic grand final, taking it out on home court, AUT. Once again, can we please get the captain up? Uh, just a big thanks to BBNZ for putting on such an awesome tournament, um, to the officials and school bench. I know a lot of work goes on behind the scenes to ensure everything runs smoothly. Um, to our supporters, thank you for getting behind us. You gave us that extra push at the end. Um, to Victoria, thank you so much for an awesome game. Um, that was a grudge match to the very end. You didn't make it easy for us. And lastly, to my team and coaching staff, uh, Darcy, Kiani, Keith and Bruce. It's been a long time coming. Uh, third time's a charm. We've been in the last two tertiary national finals and we haven't been able to come out on top, so I'm so glad we got the job done. Um, and to the girls, it's been a pleasure playing alongside you all and a privilege to captain you guys. Um, Millen, Trinity, Maddie, Alicia, Shana, Lou, Tabitha, and Asia.
Congratulations. How'd I do that? Uh, now for the National Tertiary Championship Tournament Team. If you hear your name, please come forward. Uh, from the University of Waikato, Kayla Manu Rudani. From the University of Otago, the finalist, Tyler Mitchell. From AUT, Trinity Payu. From Victoria University, Wellington, Jacinta Beckley. And finally, from AUT, Asia Anderson. By moving over to the men's tournament, uh, for the men's bronze medalist, congratulations to Lincoln University. And your runners up for 2022, University of Auckland. Big speech, bro. <laughs> I'm not conscious, bro. Oh, um, cheers, AUT, uh, UTSNZ, and BBNZ for putting on the event. Um, even though I was cramping up because of these two games a day, it was pretty good organisation, so cheers. Um, unlucky fellas, that's what it is. Well done, boys. Mean fight. Um, we knew that when we beat you in pool play, you'd come back a lot harder, and you did. So congrats. Enjoy it. Um, to our support staff, cheers, fellas. Even though the comms could be a bit better next year, um, good organisation. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, great event. Sorry, Maguire, mate. I know you only came for the glory today, but sorry we couldn't get it done. But now, well done, fellas. Uh, let's go, Caleb, Boo, <laughs> Charlie Dalton. <laughs> TJ, <laughs> Makaida, <laughs> Joe, Dan, Ray, Jetta, and Charlie. Charlie. Sean this? Huh? Oh, come on, lads. Go, Jake the Snake, Declan, and G.
now for your men's champions, flipping the script from full play to heading a locker of Victoria University of Wellington. Personally, I'd just like to thank AUT for putting on a real great tournament. Cheers to Auckland. It was a great game. Um, Coach Jay, manager Connor, the comedian. Um, we're definitely going to get you guys a bit, you know, later on tonight. But hey, um, thank you to all the supporters. My parents, I love you all. We did it. I, um, starting from the top, Jakob, Sammy Boy, Strength, Heather Marks. Corbox, Jay Limbaugh, Vinny, Arden, and Asto. So boys. And then we have our manager Connor and Coach Jay. Go to the back and move the shield. Put your hands together one last time. And finally, the men's tournament team. Could the following players please come forward? From AUT, Josh Coyman. From Victoria University of Wellington, Corbin Labour Palmer. From the University of Auckland. And finally, from Victoria University of Wellington, Ruben Matouche. Well done, boys. And that concludes our awards ceremony. Thank you all once again. Uh, travel safe, and we'll see you all next year. giving ceremony we've just witnessed we just want to say thanks for joining us for these past two days it's been a fantastic event here at the national tertiary championships once again congrats to our men's champ victoria university of wellington and also the women's champs the home team aut key screw chance why don't you take us out with some tereo to celebrate our tereo maori language week uh, Bahara mai kite nei fakatai tai kinga kai takro katoa otira kite minenga e fakarongo mai ana e ma taki mai ana ia mau wa e pau pau ana noreira tena kai tai tena kai tai mauri ora kia tato katoa.